Hello, everyone. I'd like to call this special meeting to order for November 21st at 9.01. Council, any additions or deletions to today's agenda? Seeing none, administration? None, thank you. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Councilor Magoon. I'd like to move that we adopt the special budget meeting of council agenda for November 21st, 2020. Thank you, Councilor Magoon. Council, we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor? That's passed unanimously. And over to CAO Olson. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, so we made some good progress on the agenda for yesterday and where we left off was uh, a couple pages into the capital budget to review and discussion. Before we resume conversation around that, uh, we just wanted to check in on the parking lot. There was a couple items added last night, kind of end of day. Um, and I would like to invite uh, Ms. Fox to take us through what's on the list. Thanks. Ms. Fox. Thank you, CA Olson and Mayor through to Council. One of the, or I should say the first item on the parking lot was the design percentage. I just wanted to highlight on the screen, I'll try and bring it up a little bit larger here. So uh, a couple items. The section in the capital plan on page 106 in regards to the infrastructure services projects. There is a line near the top that refers to design. So just to be clear, when I answered yesterday, I talked about in general. So if you look at 2022 to 2025, there is one number in there. That number is based on a percentage of the projects in the following year. It's a practice that we follow in order for you to see and to appropriately plan for larger projects that have a design component and we just pull that component out. If we didn't have this line in there, that percentage would be estimated as a total cost of that project and would just show up in the line item in the section below, um, increasing that project's cost. In 2021, you'll see it reflected a little bit differently. And this is for the reasons that as the years become um, closer, we can more accurately predict the numbers. So when we're able to do that, it's better to show the actual numbers than reflecting an estimate based on a percentage. So for example, Maren Bhutan has $10,000 in there because we know that's the estimated cost of the design of that project. So there's no point in doing an overall estimate guessing that number. Same goes for Bhutan Land Development and Switzer Drive. So the top line design under the subtotal for $46,000 is the remaining projects that we don't have actuals for. So it's just calculating a percentage on the remaining projects that aren't listed below in amounts that we, we would um, utilize for design funds. So I just wanted to specify the difference, how it's being reflected in 2021 and 2022 to 2025. Are there any outstanding questions in regards to that? Uh, Councillor Nelson. Yeah, I'm I'm actually struggling with it a little bit, especially looking kind of just further down the page. There's multiple things where it talks about pre-design phase two. Um, like there's other parts where design is part of the budget and then parts where it's pulled out. And I think for me, as as someone that needs to go back out to the public and, and they're asking, you know, how much does a project cost? Um, I, I would rather have the total number, including design, rather than will be this much plus than that much more for design. And, and the reason I say that is I think what could happen is, you know, you have somebody, I'll use Beaver Boardwalk as an example as a bridge. You know, if we said the bridge was going to cost 100 and design was going to cost 300 and all that was reflected in the budget when people are looking at it was 100 and all of a sudden it's a couple of years later, you find out it was 400 because of design costs. I, I just think it, it makes it difficult for us to interface with the public when it's a separate line item. And I, it could be something where I'm just not understanding quite the benefit of doing it this way um, and, it, and it just being new and uh, I'm just kind of uncertain about it. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, any other questions for administration? Uh, Ms. Fox. Mayor Michaels, I believe 
administration is amenable to just removing the design lines and including the total project cost. Sometimes as we bring on new team members, they come from different areas, have, have ideas of the way things work and we try out new things. Uh, I think it's a simple fix and if most of council's in agreement, the next version that comes back will not show those amounts separately for clarity. Okay, thank you for that, Ms. Fox. I'm gonna go to Councillor Hawes. Yeah, I, I would be in agreement of that because I mean, when I look at the other lines, I'm, I'm taking, I'm seeing $331,802 total estimated. Then I add up 21, 22, 23, 24, and it's not even near that amount. It's it's actually like $100,000 less, but so they don't add up. I guess that's where I'm at is, so and what I'm hearing is, um, some are in there and some are not and i guess that's where it's a little bit confusing because i add up the the 2021 to 2024 numbers under each year it only adds up to about 200 and uh 242,000 instead of the 331,000 so i guess that's where i'm i'm struggling with that because every other line it adds up to it so thank you so just to go back to administration with the um, the potential change that administration is offering that would be clear in the next document uh, miss fox yeah thank you mayor michaels uh so maybe i should have started out where councillor nelson had pointed out yesterday some errors in calculation um just to reassure um when when administration is aware of this we can address it and ensure that there's no worry that the numbers in the budget are inaccurate the 2021 numbers and the numbers reflected in each of the year columns are accurate. Okay. It is in the total estimated amount that it's missing picking up column 2025, uh, just in that section. So oh. that is something uh, after that was brought up yesterday, I went back to make sure because of course admin is very worried about inaccuracies coming forward in, in budget numbers. The actual budget numbers themselves are not wrong. It's the subtotal column, and that will be corrected uh, in the next version we bring forward. So sorry for that confusion. I know that that does become confusing. Thank you for that, uh, Ms. Fox. So, Council, is there any objections to uh, Councillor Nelson's request and administration uh, being okay with changing that in the next draft? And none I see, for me. I see none, so that's uh, thank you uh, uh, for that offer, administration. Uh, Council, I'll reopen the floor. Any other questions? And if not, Ms. Fox? So I think we've addressed the questions around design, so I'm gonna move on to the next, the next item. Actually, before I go there, because I think that one, there is just the request for RFD uh, requests. And once we get through all of capital, if we could come back to that item there. Uh, one of the other things was that I wanted to bring up was just in regards to the errors that were pointed out here. There was also um, attention brought forward to some civic agency funding uh, within the operating budget. And we've also looked into that and clarified that that was something that's missed, but we will bring that up specifically when we go to that section in the operating budget presentation. So I just wanted to reassure you that we're aware of that and we will bring that up at the time because that was actually a, a reflection of the numbers that was brought forward incorrectly. The Switzer Drive item on the parking lot I remember what that is. So in our discussion, when we were talking about how that project was funded, it's a, a few million dollar project. Part of that is coming from the MSP program. Uh, a comment was made yesterday that the remaining funds was coming from reserve funding, which is actually not true. Um, MSI funding is also part of the funding of that project. So I just wanted to make sure on record that that information was stated to you guys. So you're aware that part of that project is, uh, sorry, a lot of that project is funded by grant funds. Thank you. Council, any questions? And if not, I think that takes care of our parking lot. And back to Ms. Fox. I think at this point, I'll turn it back to Ms. Olson and uh, we need to continue to go through the infrastructure services capital. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. So we left off on page 106, uh, just 
Looking to Mr. Walosh and Mr. Vanna, I believe they covered off uh, all of their line items there. If there's any outstanding questions from council, we can uh, move to page 107 next, if, if uh, not. Council? Councillor Nelson. I think just to make sure it's captured, um, towards the bottom where it's water treatment upgrades and replacement design 2021 20, to 2024, um, that's another dollar amount that doesn't quite um, add up. Just making sure that's captured in the uh, updated one. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, anything further? And if not, okay, I'll hand it over to CA Olson. Thank you, Mayor Michael. So we will move on to page 107 of the uh, of 158. And I will turn things back over to Mr. Woloshin to take us through the next section. Uh, after he's highlighted his uh, areas, we'll pause for questions from council and then we'll move into the areas that Mr. Vanna uh, supports. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, just going over the 21 additions, uh, we like to continue to replace uh, old hydrants uh, about five a year if we can. So that's the 50,000 there. There's a major SCADA uh, upgrade required for our software. It's uh, almost 20 years old on the software parts, like the PLCs, and that all have to be modified and brought to new technology. So I had an estimate done, and that would be pretty close uh, to the number. It should be actually a little bit less, but the next one would be the continuation of uh, replacing uh, life cycle manholes. We get one or two a year that have to be dug up and replaced. Laterals, sewer laterals, the services from the uh, property line to the main. Uh, in the older areas, we generally have three, four, five a year that can uh, have to be dug up. We used to try to do it through operating, but uh, the asset management portion is replacement. The life cycle's end, so it should be under capital. The uh, Reimer lift station is just a little bit of a retrofit on one of the pumps at the bottom when we did in 2013. One of the pumps runs about three times as much as the other because the flooring isn't level. The Residential garbage bins, which is a continuation to finish that project off from what we don't spend in 2020. Mm -hmm. We are putting our orders in and we just have to get some clarification in regards to the sizes, so we're holding off on that project. Uh, the replacement of the commercial bins will be the same as we go out and reach. These were all pre-budgeted numbers before, so we're just spending within those budgets. In facilities, uh, I'm just going to talk briefly on the chiller. There's a, a number put in there a couple years ago, which has been carried forward, carried forward. It's now going over to Peter's area. But some of the problems we encountered when we hired a consultant, ISL, and then it went to KFR, who was the uh, primary one. Uh, when they put their cost share in there, they identified certain issues in there. And so your current sprinkler system is not to code. So that has to be replaced. So it's not just abandoning the cross connection itself. So I emphasize we have a cross connection. We're legally bound to fix that. So I could fix that for $20,000 or less, but that's how they're fed for their HVAC system. So once you start touching that, we have to upgrade the sprinkler system. And once you upgrade the sprinkler system, you got to upgrade the electrical system and you're going to have to bring the bedrooms. Uh, they put bedrooms in the building. That is not to code. So that's why the numbers went up so high. But where this is being now directed to is Diana. She's hired or looking at a process of uh, bringing another engineering report back. And I'll let Peter talk about that one from here on in. Uh, the government tenant security gate and BMS software. One of the problems we have with the current chillers we put in here is not the chillers itself, it's the Siemens software. So it's become an issue and they uh, wanted to now upgrade their system, but Eva's looking at to replacing that with another system uh, because the air quality does not, the two are now fighting each other and they won't do their part because we had a, a 
could be almost a legal issue if I go into it. Bottom line is we need about $100,000 to get this thing rectified. So the two buildings would have to be both retrofitted with the BMS software. The uh, Hinton Center FF&E, that's uh, equipment and uh, furniture upgrades. Uh, the pool locker replacement, hot tub, et cetera, that's uh, $100,000. That's to maintain our existing uh, asset that we have in the building maintenance, but we always have to do upgrades to the uh, equipment. The pool locker room area and hot tub, that's $100,000. <coughs> The recreation center, area mechanical, boilers, uh, that is $375,000. So what happens with your existing boilers, you just can't bring in another existing boiler and put it in. You have to retrofit the uh, exhaust system and that becomes a very costly item. The scout hall is uh, decommissioning. Uh, we have to remove the asbestos prior to decommissioning that building. And I think that is about it for me. Thank you, Mr. Walash and council. Any questions? Hey, Councillor Magoon. Thank you, Your Worship. I was just wondering if I could get clarification on the greenhouse training building line item. If I could know a little bit more about that, please. Mr. Walash. You're talking the year 2223? Sorry, Mr. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, please. Uh, can I just put that on? The, I'll get back to you, okay, on that one? Sure. Uh, thank you, Councillor Magoon. Councillor Wah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I wanted to learn a little bit more about the pool locker replacement uh, and how much of that cost is into the $100,000 on that line item. I've talked to Eva about this one a couple times. Uh, the pool, all those lockers are outdated. Um, the hot tub, it's all combined and everything inside there. So if I guess lockers, maybe 20,000 to 30,000, I don't have the exact numbers. I can get that from Eva more in detail if I put that on the parkit as well. Um, I guess I have a follow-up regarding that question also. Uh, the other part of it, the hot tub drains, jets, et cetera, they've hit their life expect expectancy. Um, and obviously asking the question, if there's any appetite of council in the future regarding the rec center, I think we're going to be extra cautious with spending funds. Is this an absolute need? Can this be deferred a year or two? Uh, any comments regarding that line item? Please be aware that hot tubs, boilers, Etc. are very, very high maintenance items. And I caution council, like, sorry, use that word, but when you're in the preventive maintenance program and you don't do the preventive maintenance and you have a shutdown coming up and these things have to be looked at at those times, otherwise customers are put out that this doesn't work and it's not reliable and then it becomes a ongoing, we're always at a service. I would not defer that. And Laura may have a no, I, I think I fundamentally understand like the 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 concept of replacing things for maintenance, but it, has it hit his life cycle? Like how how what's the life cycle generally for this piece? And we've hit that that like that's what I'd want to say to the public. It, it as a ten year life cycle, we've hit ten years. Like that's like, do we know the do we know those things? I do know that I've been here a long time, and I hear that the hot tub has been an issue over the years for maintenance. So maybe I'm wording this wrong. It is a very high maintenance item that requires a lot of preventive maintenance to it. And so the plumbing, the uh, pumps are constantly corrosive from the salt, I guess, whatever they're using in there. Uh, pH levels, what they change, the uh, temperature settings back into the software. Sometimes those things are all a little fudgety. So they put in the budget what they think has to be done for that amount to fix that. So they put another as a capital item during their uh, work. It's not just labor, it's it's the parts. Okay, perfect. That's good enough for me. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So um, the Scout Hall decommissioning, that $50,000 is dedicated to the removal of the asbestos and the structure? That is for the remediation of the asbestos to remove that before you can even 
decommission and take out the, the scout hall to tear it down for us would be like a ten thousand dollar item it is the asbestos has to be removed to a certain standard you have to go in and suit up and you can't just take it and bring it to the landfill we will allow you to bring it to the landfill okay may i follow up so the fifty thousand is for the asbestos That's removal correct. will we see the entire building taken down next year that is the will of council i believe uh we have to, to board we can go inside that building do anything in there we have to get rid of the asbestos and the building itself uh if i recall it flooded about three years ago uh, they had a lot of electrical problems in there as well it's going to be a very costly item to bring it back that's another choice that we have but the direction we had back then is to decommission the building thank you thank you councillor race uh councillor haas uh, thank you. Um, actually, I, I, that was another one, but because I, I, I hear what you're saying, but a couple of clarifying <coughs> questions in regards to the, the scout hall. So next year in 2021 is a $50,000 bill. In 2022 is another $40, $45,000 bill. Um, is the asbestos going to be removed next year uh, with the $50,000 bill? And then in 2022, what is the $45,000 bill? Or is that all asbestos? I'm going to go Mostly. to uh, Ms. Fox, if thank that's you. okay. Yeah. Ms. Fox? Uh, thank you, Mayor, through to Council. Uh, I think for these two items, we do have, um, with Mr. Hawk not being here, all required capital for 2021 has uh, information sheets filled out on it. And if we're given the time to come back after the next break uh, with some more detailed information for you, um, we may give you more complete answers. Okay, thank you for that. I have another question, but if there's more in no, queue. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, uh, I have a question about the Hinton Center line, um, the F, F, and E. Could you just clarify what that acronym is for me, please, just so I'm, I'm clear and the public is clear too? And then I may have a couple questions after that. The uh, Hinton Center is for new chairs, new kitchenware, um, furniture, uh, upgrading like that. They've okay. got the big kitchen inside there, all that kind of stuff. Okay, and and so my I guess my question along the lines of that is, is it reached, uh, similar to Mario Michaels on the hot tub, is it reached its life span that it's, they're falling apart, they're, you know, and I, I mean, we're looking at $120,000 for that, and I realize it's used quite a bit, but, you know, like I understand the kitchen, but I'm just wondering, like the chairs and all, like, is it an absolute that we could be deferred for a bit or... If we could have, I could have some clarity on that. When we did the uh, the budgets and we were looking at it and putting things out, we were trying to scale them roughly, stagger them over the years, mm -hmm. not having too much of implication in one year versus the other year. Because again, you only can do so much maintenance in each year. Mm -hmm. So if you put everything and lump it in one year, then we're contracting out the whole process. Whereas we have four maintenance technicians that are going to be, you know, every year we know they're busy from September doing the pool shutdown and they're kind of locked in. But we also have regular functions of 23 facilities throughout the year, which keeps them pretty busy. So we can never, uh, we just don't want to overlap everything. So if it becomes more of a maintenance issue, then we address it to, to like when can is the best time to do it. So I will get back to Evan, confirm that question on your defer though. Well, if I may, like I'm just talking about equipment. You talked about new chairs, maybe new tables, stuff like that. Is it absolutely required that we need them in 2021 necessarily right now? Like, are they falling apart or people, you know, I, I guess I'm just looking at, I realize the maintenance and I realize the kitchen may need to be updated for various reasons. It needs to maintained. I just wondering if, if it's something that we need, like when it comes to purchasing things I, I mean i respect that the hinton center is busy they've got a lot but we've also got covid right now and not a lot is happening in those areas and is it absolutely required we need that uh th that equipment that's my question so it may be something for the parking lot again uh you know maybe it's not a, an answer you have for me right now so that's fine okay we'll put it in the parking lot and then i'll get back to you okay thank you Thank you, Councillor Haas. I have Councillor Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I actually have kind of a, a really high level um, thing I'm struggling with and that it's, when we're looking at our budget each year, and I think last year was the same, 
for any of the carry forward projects, we don't know on here how much has been spent. And I think when we're, you know, maybe asking questions about things like the pumps in Switzer booster station, that's a $400,000 project. In 2021, there's a hundred left. So it's, it's tricky knowing kind of what's new, how much, like what percent of the 2021 budget is, um, is already going towards it. You know, the pool and lockers, there was 140 grand last year. I'm assuming that we spent 40 and there's a hundred left, but I'm assuming that. So I'm just, I'm struggling with understanding where we are within each of the carry forward projects and how much of the budget this year's allocated to it, or if it's just an overall, we haven't started and the budget number has changed. So it's just, and I don't, I don't know if it's just adding a column of the total project cost, not the total 21 project cost, but uh, yeah, any feedback would be helpful. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor, through to Council. So on the back end of the capital plan is a list of carry forward projects uh, in their previous 2020 year budget amount. We tend not to focus on the 2020 projects that are carry forward because they're already approved by Council and they do not require further approval to move forward. It's a way of letting you know uh, how much is moving forward. Uh, there has not been a good way uh, to reflect these amounts in or out. We've kind of gone back and forth. As you can see with providing too many columns with numbers, and I'm sure uh, Councillor Nelson will be the first one to support my request for the $40,000 capital program so we don't have to develop this in Excel uh, and then rely on one person to make sure all the numbers are coming through accurately. Obviously not an ideal system, but the more columns we give you with the more numbers, the more risk we have in there being errors. So to try and ensure the public and council that things are being done correctly, every time we put something out there that there's risk for more error creates issues uh, to the reputation and the integrity of the financials. So we're trying to find the best balance of bringing these numbers forward to you. I know it is a bit confusing, but we have put a schedule in the capital at the end that shows the 2020 approved amount and the amount we estimate that's gonna be carried forward based on the current status report from each of the directors. Uh, it's not the best way to do it, um, but even in presentation, we request the directors to focus more on the 2021 capital because it then becomes confusing because sometimes council wants to start to deliberate on the 2020 projects that are already approved. It's my long answer. Thank you for that, Ms. Fox. Yeah, thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. And I, I think a couple of things that have, you know, talking about the uh, pool and lockers that was previously approved, but I don't know if it hasn't started yet. So then it does make sense maybe to relook at it considering our, our new realities. So, um, you know, maybe potentially something that after this budget process is done, we, we circle back. I know every year we have great intentions of like, Hey, it's May, let's start the next year's budget. But, um, I, I think there might be some things like this that, that could really simplify things, understanding that, uh, it's likely that there will be, uh, new members of council for the next budget. And, um, being elected and starting on a budget is, I would say, one of the most challenging parts of uh, being an elected official in, in my experience. So, um, yeah, and, and as far as up, updated programming and software, I still love Excel, so I'd probably say no. But, yeah, it's the more, the more you have to try to manipulate a number to split it between multiple years, I understand what that does to a formula and how it doesn't talk nicely. So uh, I, I appreciate that feedback and I'll spend some time um, on that uh, carry forward plan. So thank you. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor, through to Council. Uh, if Council desires on the, the final version of the budget document, we can peel out all the carry forward amounts and just have those in a separate schedule and bring forward uh, the capital plan that just focuses on the 2021 numbers, um, unless you're okay with with the version that's put out there now and we can work on another format for the following year. Councillor Nelson. Uh, I, I can only speak for myself, but to me, yeah, this is kind of how we've done it for a while. As long as we can find it in there, I, I wouldn't say that the average member of the public is going through line by line with the budget and yeah. to to expect administration to go back and do work that, you know, as long as we can access, I, I just, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not something that, that I need. So unless the council's passionate about it, I think we could probably not create that extra work for you. 
Thank you, Councilor Nelson. Uh, with that being said, I think we can move forward. Um, and back to Mr. Woloshin. Uh, to answer one of your questions, the Hinton Center can be deferred for a year if you like. Thank you, Mr. Woloshin. Council, any other questions? And seeing none, CAO Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, for uh, page 107, Mr. Vanna, was there any items that you wanted to touch on? Or no, they're not? Okay, thank you. So with that, we will continue on to page uh, 108, uh, looking at uh, common equipment. And Mr. Woloshin, Mul uh, please continue. Okay, so the uh, first one was a carry forward, so I don't want to, I don't think I should go on that one. <laughs> uh, we're in the process of switching over, so there's going to be, uh, it'll be very close. So it's not a new ask for $65,000, put it that way. The second one is the radio equipment on all town fleet. This was being done through the fire department if they can get a grant. So I will swing that over to Todd when he gets a chance, if he it's a grant, if it's no grant, then it's not going forward. Is that correct, Todd? Thank you. Uh, so then we just have uh, under light vehicles for parks, there's two uh, units that need to be replaced. Uh, estimated 42,000, that might be a little savings there. Could might get them a 38, who knows? Uh, the riding more is ordered the first one whether it gets here for 2021 or it's in the end of this year so that's already been budgeted for in 2020. the next one is replacement of uh that water truck has been done so that is uh let me double check that pretty sure we got that truck in here just a little while ago so it's done what happened, so I can explain that one. When we were going through the COVID, we delayed it and said it was gonna be next year. And then in about October, we moved ahead to see if we could get it, so. Riding more, a new riding more for 2021. We have five of them, so they're on a recycle. We held back a couple of years, but so that'll be another riding more for 2021. For Public Works, one of the units is going to be replaced in 2006. There is a line item for unplanned replacement. So if you have a transmission that goes in a garbage truck or tandem or something like that, it's a high priced item to repair, but it's an asset. So it's for unplanned events such as that, or say a vehicle hits the ditch and gets written off and we have to replace all sorts of little hidden things. It doesn't happen very often, but could happen. Um, there's a new ask uh, for a cargo van for the fourth maintenance operator. So this is a new ask in the common equipment. So right now they're using a, uh, a pickup truck for him, but he's more of a plumber and gas fitter and he needs more of a cargo van. Uh, we've estimated 45,000. And under, that's uh, Todd's, there is a replacement for the 2015 Ford Escape up here for driving out of town the vehicle, estimated at 50,000. There's a second line on there as a duplicate on the bottom there for unit 215. That's just a duplicate error. Please remove. And did I miss anything or that it? That's it. Uh, with that, I'll go to council for questions. Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you. And this is just a, a general question. It's been something that's been asked or mentioned to me. And when we're looking at units, um, you know, with uh, uh, light vehicles and stuff like that, 
um, we're getting the basic models, correct? Are we like, we're not like, I mean, I realize that we like to have all the bells and whistles and everything, but I mean, these prices uh, and we're looking at cost efficiency that they're, I mean, obviously reliable vehicles, but that they are the basic models uh, being purchased. Is that correct? Or is that something? The only things that we ask for is uh, air conditioning. Yep. Uh, backup cameras. Okay, that's a new thing coming in, better for risk insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes remote start and power windows. That, it comes with a package, mm -hmm. but it's a basic package, you know, cloth seats. There's no, you know, I think when you go and you ask for one item, it comes, it says there's no roll up windows, it's all automated. And the other item that we ask for is hands free, mm -hmm. so Bluetooth. Oh. That's it. And that's fair. I, I appreciate that. It's just something that people sometimes ask, making sure that, uh, but that make all those things make sense safety wise, everything like that. So if I may, or is there more in queue? I just have a question about uh, the line item on the snow blower. I know it's down the road that we're replacing it, but the snow blower, can we, can we elaborate on what is, what is that? Is it that unit that's, that is uh, uh, on the front of uh, uh yeah, with, instead of the bucket on the loader, yeah. we put the snowblower. That's correct. So if I may ask is how often is that piece of equipment used? Because I mean, when I look around and I see the snow removal, I see a lot of trucks and I see a lot of bucket usage, but I very rarely seldom see the snowblower being used. Okay, so I'll give you the history on the snowblower because we purchased that back in 2000 or 2001 and it was a piece of equipment that in the day that it was uh, wasn't quite like our snow changes from warm snow, really heavy snow, and it kept breaking the shear pins. So we had to revamp and play with it. And some operators just rather use the bucket. And over time, over safety, we started using the last three years, the snow blower more dependable as regular when we needed to use it. I will share that when we did a major upgrade to that snowblower in 2017, I believe, and it was running miraculously. It ran all last year, no issues. In July, our mechanics started taking it apart and found out they needed some parts. And if I would have known that the issue was as bad as it was gonna become, we would have moved it way up. I didn't know here until a couple of weeks ago that we're still waiting on one part to come in. So, uh, we will be coming for the snowblower moving up, but not in 2021. The time we get it, it'd be too late anyway, so we will be moving forward for 2022 to move that item up. It is a piece of equipment that only is used during the heavy snowfall. Mm -hmm. So when you clear off uh, Mountain Street, you clear off Hardesty, uh, some of the major roads, Switzer Drive is pushed off to the side of the roads, but that's when it's used for some of the residential streets, obviously, when you get the heavy snowfalls. Uh, we hope to have it up and running here just before Christmas here. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Councillor Hawes. Councillor Stashik. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. I just had a question regarding common equipment um, replacement. How is it <laughs> determined that a piece of equipment is due to be replaced? Is it simply based on year, mileage, hours? Is there a physical inspection and report done? And I guess the extension of that is if that's not how uh, replacement is assessed at this point, does the uh, asset management program cover that moving forward? Yes, 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 and yes. So basically, uh, currently, we do not replace by year. Moving forward, we're gonna be presenting a cost analysis of uh, whether three, five, seven, nine, 10, 15, in the old uh, regime, it was drive it until it fell apart. Like on pickups, I'll give you an example. You should be able to have a pickup 10 to 15 years. Uh, we are now gonna be moving more to the asset management to identify, it's not so much uh, hours, it's not so much mileage, it is the condition of the equipment, how much maintenance is required. So we have all that in data right now. We know which equipment is uh, reliable, dependable. Uh, so, we identify if it becomes a very, very high level maintenance item, we move it way up. If it's been running smoothly, we just kind of keep it in for the next year. We have a pickup that's 2005 is running fine. It's 15 years old. Condition body-wise, motor-wise, it's perfectly fine. 
the supervisor wants to keep it for another year. We have uh, in the past tried to replace our garbage trucks every seven years. Five years is the max you want to go. We might even be going three because that cost analysis on the asset management, once we put it in, it's the mechanical breakdowns, reliability, dependability, and the critical piece is, uh, for example, like your grader, snow, snow blower, loaders, those kind of things, sanding trucks, they got to be very, very dependable and reliable. They are sometimes uh, uh, the service checks we do, it's like half hour every morning on every piece of equipment before it goes out. You got to do your air brakes, everything has to work. So to answer your question, right now we do have a system in place, but it's not based on years. It's based on dependability and parts and service. Okay, can I follow up? Yeah, I'm glad to hear that there's going to be something brought into play that's more more actual condition assessment regarding replacement. That's how most ma fleet management systems in private industry are going. It's not based on years, mileage, and hours anymore. It's actual <coughs> data-driven and, and uh, uh, reporting to to assess the, the replacement for, for, for rolling units. So I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stashik. Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could you speak to why leasing is not an option? In which piece of equipment are you asking for? On um, administration pickups or um, administration trucks on pickups, small vehicles. Generally, our life expectancy on a pickup was 10 years. Uh, moving forward, as I said, in the asset management, when we will determine what the best years to go. But our, when you're leasing a vehicle, you're paying for it whether you're using it or not. If you want to have a, a piece of equipment, like say a water truck, perfect example, when you try to get it in the high season when you need it, you're mm -hmm. fighting for it. Uh, we also have the water truck used for uh, emergency supply water, potable water for the fire department if needed. Uh, we use it for sewer flushing. We use like certain things, it's just not possible. The cost analysis that we did about five years ago, it wasn't beneficial to us to do that. Okay, good. I have one more question. I'm just going to go to Miss Fox. Do you have a clarifying comment regarding that? I do. Thank you, Mayor, through to Council. Leasing comes with uh, different priorities uh, in many cases. A company like Tech, who focuses on safety and the uh, not that the town doesn't focus on safety, but the town really works to utilize their vehicles to the fullest extent. If we were on a program where at a max 120 or 140 kilometers, you trade out your vehicle, leasing makes sense with those types of vehicles. Um, we've made uh, uh, utilized vehicles and got the best bang for our buck by using them for a long period of time. Where the trick comes in is to make sure you hit that point where the maintenance costs start really increasing and costing you more than probably the replacement of the truck. So we play a bit of a game right now at times uh, to ensure that we are fully utilizing our vehicles, but not going to an extent where they're no longer safe or costing us more to repair. Uh, getting into the larger pieces of equipment. Leasing, of course, comes with payments that increase your operating budget. So uh, lease payments then hit your operating and that sometimes is not welcomed either. So you pay either out of capital or you pay out of your operating budget. Um, and sometimes one's more amenable than the others, but we too, do try to look at items uh, in that sense. But until our asset management system or plan or strategy changes to support uh, and is supported by council to replace on a more frequent basis, leasing probably isn't the top option. Are um, riding mowers, when, um, when they're taking out of service, what happens with them? Are they auctioned off? No, they're used as trade-in. I'm sorry? We trade them back in like on a price with the uh, supplier, oh, okay. we ask for a trade-in value on that. Okay, just one quick one. And our vehicles that um, you know we no longer need, we bought other ones, are they auctioned off? The uh, pickups, for example, yes. are, yes. Okay, and then is that money put into you know, a revenue? It's returned to the, to the common equipment as a revenue, I believe. Sorry? It, it's returned to common equipment as a revenue. 
Okay. All sales go to back to common equipment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Race. I have Councillor Magoon, uh, Councillor Nelson, then Councillor Astashi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess just a question, and I think it's most applicable to the administrative trucks, and I, I think I'm seeing three units right now. Are we at a point where, and I've seen this with other organizations I've worked at, you sort of have to make that decision between does it cost us less to own the vehicle or does it cost us less to perhaps um, pay out the admin staff who are using that vehicle a kilometer rate? You know, where where's your best savings? Uh, is owning these three administrative units a better cost savings for us versus how much we could offer in terms of putting in kilometers? Or are there duties required that we see happening with those vehicles that can't be achieved with potential somebody's personal truck or or car? Uh, Ms. Fox? Thank you, Mayor, through to Council. Some of the things to consider when you're asking people to travel in their own vehicles for work is then the town becomes liable and responsible for paying their insurance uh, to bring it up to work. Um, standards. So th there's a certain type of insurance you have to have in order to drive for work that costs more money. So there is some cost related to that. Um, also, we do utilize the vehicles um, more for the liability purposes uh, and longer work travel. People are encouraged to use the work vehicle rather than their own and people that have to more regularly travel for work typically have their own work vehicle. So I don't know if that exactly answered your question. We haven't done uh, recently a full cost benefit analysis on that but I can say that it has come up over the last two years <laughs> about whether the town wants to take on the cost of paying for everybody's insurance or to continue to have vehicles uh, available to them and they are well utilized. Mr. Mayor, can I follow up on that? And I, I think the companion question to that, and I'd be remiss if I didn't ask it, um, is do we feel as a municipal organization that with the fleet, and I think especially the light trucks, the light pickup units the most, do we feel that those, I don't know, what is it, approximately 15, 12-ish units, however many are listed there, that they're all being maximized, that our fleet's being utilized to its maximum potential, or that there's room for efficiencies built into the number of units that we have? With COVID-19, we are short of vehicles. Okay. We are stuck right now, one person per vehicle for safety, uh, front seats. Why do you want to complement two people in a vehicle if you don't have to. Like that's an added burden since uh, June that we had to deal with, or actually okay. March, I guess. So right now I wouldn't entertain that. The second component I can honestly answer to you that when we need the vehicles, we have different events year round. We have the kick it to the curb. We have environment week. We need those vehicles at those times. Uh, we have regular maintenance for all the crosswalks, sidewalks, traffic lights. Those have to be maintained on a weekly basis. So all our equipment is utilized. There is not a spare unit sitting there for six months Perfect. waiting to be go. Uh, parks, when they come in in the summertime, they need their staff there, so. Perfect. And could I do one more follow-up then, Mr. Mayor? Policy-wise, I guess for administration, my question is, assuming that we utilize those vehicles, if, um, if a community member is to ask me, you know, like, will one department um, sort of work in tandem with another department if there is a shortage of vehicles so that we are maximizing efficiency. Does that occur? Absolutely. We okay. uh, work with parks and uh, with the safety, for example. Uh, Angela does not have a vehicle, so we supply her a vehicle from the men whenever she needs it. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGoon. Councillor Ostashi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just I had a question about um, purchasing assets and if there's ever been any consideration or analysis to potentially purchasing late model used, especially for the higher mm -hmm. dollar, uh, lower utilization ratio pieces of equipment. I know you've mentioned in the past things like water trucks and vacuum units are hard to find in the private market when you need them, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily used on a, on a fully regular basis. I know there's other municipalities that have had fleet managers that have embraced the used equipment model and 
had some success with it and purchasing those units that have that uh, initial depreciation already <clears throat> taken off of it. If you could speak to that. Absolutely. Um, it's a good question. We do that. We have in the past and we will in the future. Our current water truck was a used water truck that we bought in 2001. I think it was 2000 or 2012. We bought the water truck. It was used. And all we did this year instead of, or last year, instead of replacing the truck because the chassis was good, we just ordered a new tank and pumps. So we modified that. Our uh, lift bucket truck was a used truck. Uh, we bought that as well. Uh, on top of my head, there's one more coming up as a, a zoom lift we're looking at. We don't want a new one. We want a used one in the industry because we use it lightly. We can expand and utilize that. So we do look at that. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stashik. Councillor Watt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I wanted to ask at the bottom of the page about corporate services, light vehicle upgrades and replacements. Uh, there's two units listed as unit 215. I'm, I'm assuming that's just a hmm. that's just a typo. Ms. Fox. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Through to Council. Yeah, as um, Mr. Veloshin pointed out just at the end of his presentation, that is a duplicate, and it just needs to be removed from there. Okay, it's just that one says 2009 and one's a 2010, and that's so it is just. Yeah, we'll, I'll let Dale comment on the two vehicles that we have. Yeah, the 215 is the Ford Escape up here right now. This, like, uh, I think it was two years ago that we came that the fire department, when they go for their training, wanted to have bigger equipment. So that will be one unit that will be fairly similar size to the one that we have right now. But it is the same unit. Sorry if it's a 2009, 2010, it just, in the numbers, it gets mixed up sometimes. All right, and then that 215 will go down and be utilized in the fleet to FCSS when it's taken out of service from here. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. I think that clarified it for me. Thank you, Councillor Watt. Councillor Haas. Just one quick question uh, to piggyback what uh, Councillor Stashik was asking about uh, used. I'm just curious too about mm -hmm. even the light pickups or, or light vehicles. I mean, lease buybacks come on the lots a lot in our, I mean, even personally, I, I would have said I'd never wanted to buy a used one and I bought a lease buyback and I'm very happy with it. Has that also been considered that we look at, you know, conversing with our local dealerships when things do come on the lot, if we need to replace potentially, that it fits all the safety requirements and things like that, that might be lower kilometers, but the depreciation of being it used, uh, you know, is that something that also has been looked at or is it always new? Traditionally, the used vehicles that come out of here that get sold uh, are the oil and gas sector and a very mm -hmm. high mileage and those trucks are worn right down. Uh, I wouldn't recommend looking at them. A lot of times the transmission's gone or whatever. Uh, but what I'm saying, if I may, Mr. Mayor, like the lease buybacks that dealerships get, they get some trucks back with low kilometers, at even sometimes 30, 40, 50,000 kilometers, they're sitting on the lot. Um, they're sometimes 10 to 15, $20,000 less than new. I'm just wondering, has that ever been looked at? If we say, for example, the unit, the, the 2000 or unit 215, um, you know, instead of going new, there might be uh, a reasonable vehicle sitting on the lot right now at, at one of our local dealerships at a lease buyback that uh, is that possible? I'm just, I just looking at other options that instead of always going new, I realize we, I mean, we always like to, but you sometimes still uh, for the, serves the purpose and, and it's still, low enough kilometers potentially and still, you know, be a reliable vehicle, even with uh, still um, uh, warranty on it as well. So I'm just curious if that's something that's looked at even for the lighter uh, asks. May not always be every replacement, but maybe considering it in some, in some cases possibly. I guess it, it's possible, absolutely. A uh, little concerning that I could get a call from a dealership saying, hey, I got this model here. It's got 40,000 kilometers on it. Steal of a deal. You're interested. Our procurement policy says that we go out to the three uh, dealers. And now I'm into a who can come up with what's similar. But saying that, if I put out a tender looking for a 
used vehicle. It'd have to be specified that it was not used for oil and gas sector for heavy usage like that. And say it's from someone's wife that just uses it in town a little bit. There's the opportunities, but from our analysis from before, if we're keeping a vehicle for 10 years, it worked out as better for us not to look at that because we had brand new tires. We had everything good to go. We're not adding any maintenance for the first five years in that vehicle, but we can look at it. Thank you. That's, uh, I appreciate that. And it just is something to, I thought I'd ask. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Uh, Councillor Nelson. Yeah, I think uh, this conversation has gone a long time asking a lot of really similar questions to me. If this is something that council actively wants administration to look at on a vehicle by vehicle basis, we need to start looking at it from a policy perspective, not waiting till budget and going line by line and saying, do we ask if, you know, can we have lease? Did we look at used? Do we, if, if we think that we need to get more creative and, and whether that's looking at used, looking at lease, looking electric, looking at our, let's, let's make a direction to bring back a discussion item or a brief report on how we currently procure vehicles and fleet and then maybe build policy out from that i you know to me budget isn't the right time to be you know having philosophical conversations about uh, potential policies that we may want and it seems like we only have this discussion at budget so uh, that's what i would suggest if we want to look at this pol as a policy let's do it otherwise um i, I think the discussion is not really going to go a whole long ways so thank you Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Ostashik. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Yep. And I agree with Councillor Nelson, but I also think it's appropriate to ask these questions at budget because that's where you, how you find out if the if a particular business model's ever been considered. And to follow up on Councillor Haas's questions, unit rate analysis for used vehicles, I've done them. And the question is just, it, has it been done? I mean, the, the comment's been made that basically the town fleet is run until the wheels fall off, more or less. So if that's the case, what's the difference if it's a 2019 or a 2020 that comes with warranty, but it's 15 or $20,000 less? So my question wouldn't be specific to, did you do it on this one? Did you do it on that one? It's more a general question. Has there ever been a unit cost analysis done on running a 2020 for 15 years or running a 2019 for 14 years? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stashik. Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have to say I do disagree with Councillor Nelson. To me, this is an excellent forum to ask questions. And if we've got to go line by line to get an answer, so I understand, so we understand, our citizens understand, I'm totally fine with it. We do it once a year. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Race, uh, but I, I do want to echo, uh, I think there's room for both. Uh, having this conversation here is good, but we can only uh, get assurances on our suggestions if we create policy or if we pull out numbers and we ask for a request for decision for a certain item, especially for the bigger ones. If we want to have any involvement with those, that's th those are really the two mechanisms that we have impact. So I think it's a good conversation to get some detail today, but we have to still remember if we want any impact or any say on it, there, there are two options, policy and pulling out the item for a decision for council to uh, to have impact on. Um, Ms. Fox? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Michaels, through to council. I think it's an excellent point. I think when administration starts to see a lot of questions in the same area about philosophies on purchasing, that it's a, a good indicator that they want to be involved in how the decision is being made across the board and not in particular on on the individual items. So I think we're seeing that. I've written up on the board uh, vehicle procurement policy update and direction. Uh, and I think if if council's comfortable, we're, we're compiling a bunch of direction and motion to summarize up at the end and bring back to council. Uh, so I have written that down and uh, we'll bring that back up for a decision of council at the end of uh, today. Thank you very much, Ms. Fox, for that. Council, anything further regarding this section? Um, actually, I have one just for um, equipment replacement unplanned. Generally, how much do we... Uh, do we have the numbers of what we spent in the last, let's say, year or two on unplanned um, costs for replacement equipment? That's on page 108. It's $120,000 per year. <clears throat> Ms. 
Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor, through to Council. What I can comment uh, just quickly is for 2020, we've used uh, just over $50,000 of that unplanned so far. What we've committed to for Council is that when those unplanned equipment items come up and they, ha they are items that are utilized, it is clearly disclo disclosed in the status update portion when the financials are brought back to Council. So, for the September financials that were brought to Council, they will be re-coming to Council uh, as they were not received for information the last time, so they're going to be received uh, hopefully for information. You will see in the capital report the status that details out uh, what's actually being charged there. Uh, with a, f a few more minutes of time, I could probably disclose what's in there. I don't know if Mr. Walosha knows quickly offhand what's in there, um, but I would have to do just a quick bit of research here to I'm, find I'm it. I'm fine for that. I, what I wanted to share with the council, I don't know exactly the direction I'll bring, I don't know, whether it's at the, the approval of the budget, but conceptually for any unplanned money, I believe, I'll use this for an example. I think having a direction that any... Uh, unplanned money over let's say $20,000 comes to council for a request for decision, right? So if we're gonna put allocate, allocate funds for things that we're not sure we're, what we're gonna spend on, why not bring that back for a council decision to say, hey, we're gonna spend $75,000 on this piece of equipment and approve it. I really feel that's the practice I'd like to take uh, for a lot of these bigger items, but also give the buffer knowing, hey, something small might come up, you might have 20,000 or 20% 20 of the budget to use without any council oversight. That's sort of the mindset. So I just wanted to you know, share that with council that that may be coming up. Uh, Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Michaels, uh, through to council. I just want to reiterate that when I first came in, uh, many times emergency situations would happen and quick decisions had to be made and time was not uh, on our side. So to support good decision making, it was something that I really supported and brought forward to council with a plea to have this amount allocated. It is something that has been brought up a number of times to me by administration, really grateful for the ability to have that and support the quick decisions sometimes that they need to make. Uh, Mr. Walashen, the one of the areas where we've had to utilize monies here are, are for things like the, <coughs> is it the water treatment plant that recently a piece of equipment that was very integral has gone. I don't want to put you on the spot. So just trying to remember the, the latest thing we were going to access the funds for. Okay, so one of our variable speed pump uh, frequency drives went and it's a very costly item. It's about $33,000 to have it custom made to retrofit back into the existing uh, they don't make the old ones anymore. The one we put in in 2011, they don't make it. So you had to do a retrofit and to make it compatible instead of just us putting all the wiring in. So let's say uh, with engineering that it's $50,000. That's what we put in for the budget. It would have been nice just, to, but when we're talking, like, I think this is called common equipment that we're in. So we're kind of in a crosshair. So I think we put it in for an application next year in the 2021 budget because that is equipment, but it's not common equipment. Water treatment plants a separate entity. Okay, thank you, Administration Council. Anything further? Uh, Council Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I hate to backtrack like this, but on page 77, it talks about our um, common, uh, darn well. it talks about common equipment mobile fleet. And that's what we're talking about on page 108. Is that correct? So it says, in 2020, we had $236,000 monies in the reserve for our fleet. 2021, we have 19000 But we're dealing with a budget that is requesting $3 million. So do we only have $19,000 in our common fleet? Ms. Fox? Thank you, Mayor, through to Council. So the schedule of common equipment, and I'm just trying to quickly get to the page that you are on. What was the page that you were on, Council? 77, Ray? it's the reserve page. Yeah. 
if you're okay with uncomfortable silence for a moment, just give me one moment here. Does anyone have a paper copy that has page 77? Clarifying question. <laughs> yeah, Councillor Nelson. Sorry, this is a clarifying question to Councillor. Are you talking about a reserve contribution or the end of year reserve balance? Because from what I gather, if it's 19,000, that's everything we've contributed plus everything that we've spent at the end of the year. If everything's budgeted, our reserve will still be at 19,000. <clears throat> Okay, so you know maybe I'm just not understanding this. In 2020, it says we had 236,000 in our uh, common fleet reserve. In 2021, we're looking at 19,000. So does that mean yes. that 210,000 was used from the 2020? I think uh, Ms. Fox has the answer now. Yeah, thank you. Sorry for the delay. Uh, yeah, Councillor Reese, the Amounts showing there are the amounts predicted for the end of the year. So in 2020, we had $236,000. In 2021, we will contribute to that reserve a certain amount of money, and we will take out of that reserve a certain amount of money. The amount at the end is predicted to be the $19,000 based on the current numbers there. And that's the case for many of our reserves. There aren't reserve parameters that say how much need to be left in there. We're struggling with trying to ensure that there's enough money going into the reserve. And with the limited uh, amount or ability of us increasing the operating budget, which would increase the transfer to reserves, we have to make do with the monies that we have in the best way that we can. And, and you know, I know we only have so much money, but it's almost tragic, eh, when you look at the size of the fleet that we have, we're looking at a three million touch this year, and we're not able in the last how many years to set money aside, you know, for um, upcoming expenditures on fleet. I, that's something we really got to take a look at. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ace. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a seven minute break, and we'll reconvene just after ten fifteen. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I'd like to reconvene this meeting at 1022. And with that, I'll hand it over to CAO Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. At this point, we'll move into protective services um, uh, equipment and into their capital budget as well, if there are no further questions from Council on the previous items. Uh, all yours, administration. Great. Okay. okay, I'll turn this over to Mr. Martins. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and through to Council, um, you will see I do have three carry forwards, um, and the only new project I have for 2021 is uh, the vehicle extrication um, tool. So this is our replacement of our jaws of life, our cutters, our rams, and the power plant that goes with uh, our new uh, fire truck. So uh, other than that, that's all I have for 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Fire Chief Martins. Council, any questions regarding this? Seeing none, um, very well done. See uh, <laughs> uh, <C>. Olson. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, we'll move into general government services at this point. I'll turn things over to Ms. Fox. Yep, Ms. Fox. Thank you, CEO Olson, uh, Mayor Michaels, and through to council. So general government services uh, has one new item. Sorry, I was thrown off by the 2020 column. Uh, we have one carry forward item that was moved from 2020 to 2022. We do have a new phone system uh, with qu the quickly changing technology. Our attempt uh, last time to upgrade was not successful in 2019. Uh, however, we do have to replace our current phone system as it's no longer supported by TELUS. 
and it's becoming quite costly to maintain. Every time we need to get numbers and office moves and restructures, uh, we do need to pay them uh, to support us in that service. So a changeover uh, should reduce some operating costs. Uh, however, at this time, with the amount of options out there and some of the limitations that we have as far as a lot of this stuff is now in the cloud on the, the web and digital, and we have to make sure that the information is kept within Canada. There's a, there's a number of different parameters that we're looking at. So the last uh, tender intake brought us a lot of different options for things that weren't exactly what we were wanting. So we're going to put that out there. Right now we are keeping the budget amount at 130, uh, sorry, um, $96,000. We do think that there isn't a chance there that we can come in a bit under that, but without knowing all the options that are currently out there because of the changing technology, we're going to stick with this amount at this time and there is the amount in the reserve to cover it. If we don't need it, we won't use it and we will make sure Council's aware of that through the status updates. We do have a small server replacement requirement at the rec center that we're targeting uh, and Council Chambers and you can see that we've done a, a little bit of upgrades here, but we would really like to focus on the sound system, the microphones, uh, the screen, updating the technology in here so it helps us better meet, especially now with COVID, the needs of having Zoom and having the microphones. One thing that would be nice uh, that we're looking at is the microphones being tied into the chair of the meeting and uh, the mayor as sometimes when we're putting our hands up, the, the person that chairs the meeting doesn't see that and we're not running as efficiently as possible. You can see in the room right now with the new spacing, we need a little bit more seating available and we need microphones available for all our staff in attendance uh, when required. So there are a few things that we'd like to focus on in here and it was, these were a couple areas that were put off before and we're bringing them back to the table now and prioritizing those. Uh, we have appropriately funded the computer equipment replacement reserve to pay for these projects at this time. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Um, I have a few questions, Councilor Magoo. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, I'm just, regarding the council room upgrades, I'm just wondering, given the, given the reality of COVID right now, I know that we have a lot of our community members who are watching meetings over Zoom and they're not able to attend. We've got social distancing issues. Um, would the upgrades here in terms of the audio, like, sorry, let me rephrase that. In terms of audio and video, uh, would there be significant upgrades also included with that $42,000 to improve the clarity of both sound and video for those people who are watching at home? Ms. Fox? Thank you, Mayor Michaels, through the council. Yeah, there is a uh, priority focus on ensuring that the customer service uh, is seamless through those mediums. So looking at a better quality for streaming services to the citizens is a main focus uh, for those upgrades. Right now, uh, I know we have had a number of people online and we've tested out the current system through the, the microphones we have and have had extremely good feedback as far as how it's coming through through the town Zoom connection. There is some delays in the YouTube connection uh, and it lags a little bit, but we will focus on uh, that within this project. Mr. Mayor, could I, one follow-up. Uh, the other piece to the council chambers that I'm also wondering about if it's included in there is I know that in the, the physical system that we have for voting, uh, slash attendance slash speaking through the mayor controlling the panel. Would that also be revamped through that upgrade as well? Ms. Fox. Yeah, thank you, Mayor, through to council. We are looking at our options for a new system that would tie everything together, uh, whether it is to keep within those costs, adding to the current system or looking at another system. And what we could do is I could uh, have our IT representative here reach out and make sure that council has a say on some of the things that they would like to see or if they think that there's problems within the current system that he could uh, specifically address for you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, if I could just make a comment to council, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I know this is going to shock people because usually we hear, you know, councillors love to, well, do we have to buy that this year? 
Um, I think the audio and video improvements going into this next year with the reality of COVID being what it is, is certainly something that I would consider advancing this project to the 2020 year if it was feasible. Uh, not so much the voting. I'm not interested too much in council comfort. Uh, I think this works for right now. I am, however, interested in the clarity of audio and video uh, and media communications as it involves this room and microphones for administration, that sort of thing. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Magoon. Councilor Nelson. I, could I provide a clarifying comment? Uh, this column has 2020 in it as well. It's the only spot, so it's, it is in the immediate budget. It just looks weird. I did the same thing a couple yeah. minutes ago. There's an additional column for the year we're in. Um, my, my question is around the server replacement. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, it's a carryover project of 133, which was approved last year. In last year's budget, there was no future uh, expenditures in the five-year plan, uh, but now for 2022, we're looking at an additional 140,000. I'm just curious uh, about that addition and what emerged that uh, basically doubled the cost of the program. Thank you. Um, Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor, through to Councillor Nelson. We had uh, worked with PC Corp who helped us review our entire IT budget and what was required for the town. The server replacement in 2022 came out of that review that we did this year. I will put that on the parking lot to give you exactly where that server is uh, without my notes on that right in front of me, which I should have. I, I don't have that answer for you on the top of my head. If I could, Mr. Mayor, I, I just wanted to make sure that it was thoughtful and it was there intentionally and if it came out of a review, um, if it comes out of next year that we want it to come forward as a request for decision, or something, I'm fine with that, but I, I'm, I'm good with where it's at. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Uh, just to clarify, unless um, I could be seeing this wrong, but it was a carry forward for 2020. So it's just an increase of 6,650 is how I interpreted it, or that 133 was previously used. Ms. Fox? Yeah, thank you. Sorry, the confusion's coming from, uh, this is the only, as Councillor Nelson pointed out, and which created me confusion at the beginning of my <laughs> talking to this, 2020 uh, isn't being reflected in any of the other schedules, so not to create confusion. So if you take 2020 out of there, um, you're absolutely correct. The 2022 budget has just identified that over those two years there's a slight cost increase due to inflation, and that the the identifying of the this need for the replacement server came from the review we did with PC Corp. Um, and that's where a lot of the items come up in here. So sorry, I think I, I probably created more confusion for Councillor Nelson. Um, we have another line item for a server replacement that is further out than 2025. And uh, I thought that's what you were talking about, but obviously it's not because you can't see it. Thank you, uh, Ms. Fox. I'm gonna go back to Councillor Nelson. Now I am confused. Um, so it's an additional 140,000. So in the 20, 2020 budget, the total project cost was 133,000 with no um, no other costs reflected in the five-year plan, so nothing in 2022? So my understanding, and, and it was never used, so it was carried forward, and we, were, yeah. we, we would have done it this year for 133, but or hypothetically, we didn't. They're doing uh, increases to inflation, whatever, for it to actually be done in 2022 instead of 2020, which would have been $6,650 cheaper. That was the explanation I understood from Ms. Fox. Ms. Fox? Yeah, thank you. Where uh, Councillor Nelson's confusion is coming from is the subtotal is adding the two together and it should not be. Should not be there. I will, I will ensure that's corrected. Thank you, Ms. Fox. So just to clear, so the total project cost is 139,650. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Wah. That's the clarification I required as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wah. Uh, the only question I have, and uh, it's, it, it seems small, I, uh, I, I like some of these changes. Uh, I do feel the committee room or our council office needs an upgrade for the TV. Like we only have two places to have meetings. The committee room is booked a lot and the TV is not accessible for us to connect for any presentations. We have maybe 15, 20 um, meetings a year. It's not often, but it's especially with the virtual world. 
I would like to see the uh, council committee uh, room uh, upgrades budget to include some funds for that, unless administration has anything uh, already set up for anything for the council room, uh, Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, knowing that request, that might be something in our current operating budget. If we see uh, that we have some room in our equipment budget that we could address replacing a TV upgrade uh, is is not very expensive and ensuring that you have the ability in there we'll look at um, and I will make sure that if we cannot address it in current operations that there's an inclusion of that in here if you're just looking for the the TV equipment to be upgraded for access to presentations yeah that that's the only thing when people come in they'll have a uh, they want to connect to show a PowerPoint presentation. They just cannot do that. So any TV, even the TV in the room up front, we can swap if they really want this plasma that we have. Thank you very much for that. Councilor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, when we're done this and before moving on, I do have one question for protective services. And I apologize that we're going backwards. Um, but I'd like to get that question asked when I can. Hey, go, go ahead, Councilor Race. Right Okay, um, Fire Chief, this seems to be a topic I want to talk to you about every year. The $35,000 that we have set aside for our FDM, that FDM plays such a big role in our fire master plan. Hey, we had, I think, 25 recommendations come out of that master plan, and the FDM, if my memory serves me correct, would help us with about 12 of those plans. So what can we do to in help you out here? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through to council. Um, you are correct. Um, the fire master plan, um, the recommendations that were in there, a lot of them are administrative functions um, for efficiencies around records management, um, billing, um, training, et cetera. So that was um, those 12 items that I spoke to in years previous. Um, the challenges, um, uh, working with some of our partners um, to get the software here. Um, and so we have access to viewing ours only and not theirs. Um, recently, we just received one module and we found out a few extra details about um, they weren't running the program to their fullest uh, as we were told. Um, so now we're backtracking quite a bit um, so that they get caught up to use it to the same ability that we we would like to use it to. Um, so that's some of the challenges again. Um, you're right. Uh, it's almost a year. Uh, we still haven't seen anything really from from them. So we're just continuing to work. Um, they have promised deadlines and, and stuff, but um, it seems to be this year with COVID and manpower and stuff, uh, we've been behind again. So other than that, I, I don't know what else to do. Okay, good, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Race. Council, anything further? <clears throat> Seeing none, Ms. Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, I'll just look to administration. Was there anything further on capital budgets that anybody would like to touch on before we move on? Uh, Mayor Michaels and, and through to all of council, uh, it was administration's intention to circle back to the items on the parking lot list at the end here. Um, we are waiting for one of our team members. Um, we won't lose those things. We'll be able to come back um, to those and provide the updates on uh, a couple of the items that we were unable to speak to. Um, so at this time, flipping back to the slide presentation, um, uh, we were looking to to work through uh, everything and then come to uh, the end of the council's or um, administration's information sharing and turn things over to council to uh, discuss, debate, and provide us direction. Um, so we'd be moving at this point into the operating budget overview. 
unless there's any um, objection from council. Uh, thank you, CEO Olson. Council, any questions? Okay. okay. Um, apologies, Council. Our team member has joined us. Uh, so Ms. Arsenault is on uh, the Zoom call. Um, the questions uh, that we had related to that section of the capital budget included the greenhouse training building and the amounts allocated for 2022 and 2023, uh, the pool lockers um, and their replacement, the Hinton Center furniture and whether it's reached its life cycle or could be pushed out an additional year, uh, the scout hall amounts for 2021 and 2022, just a, a little more detail on uh, the removal of the asbestos and the decommissioning of the building and, and what, in what order. Um, so at this time, um, I will turn things over to, uh, to Eva on Zoom. Eva, are you there? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Ooh, yes, we can. You can? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, yes, I just joined. Um, where would you like to start? Eva, if you could take us to the Greenhouse Training Building uh, capital budget line and provide some explanation for the costs that are in, um, uh, they're, they're not for 2021, but I believe 2022 and 2023. Correct. Uh, originally, we had um, this request for this year 2020 however with the renewal of the lease agreement with barrow safety we moved out the request to 2022 23 um, when the lease agreement is due to expire and so that would involve um, some renovations um, for the building in anticipation of some growth that um, some of our other programs were experiencing and renovating this building for um, possibly FCSS programs. But that's the reason we moved it out is because we removed, or we renewed the lease agreement with Barrow Safety. Until yep. 2023, that's uh, June, 2023. Council, any questions regarding that? Seeing none. Um, thank you, Eva. Moving along, uh, Council had questions about the pool locker replacement. Um, is there any um, uh, information you can share on the state of the lockers and, the, uh, and that item? Right. So this locker uh, item, the replacement, has been probably in the budget for about five years. It keeps getting moved out. Um, the, the lockers are... Um, a metal construction, so they are really rusted and some jagged pieces, which we continue to just um, um, do some maintenance to them. So they are really at the end of their life. Yes, we could push it out again, um, but they are a bit of a, a safety issue. Um, we're just recommending doing something in, in plastic, but. Yes, we could continue to maintain these. The reason why we just, um, with the discussion of the aquatic center, and now that has been pushed out to, I'm not sure what year. So we'll just, you know, we can continue to manage that. The, the other item with the, the hot tub drains and jets, that was just um, uh, to review those when we do our annual shutdown just to see what condition they were in. And this year during the shutdown, they uh, proved to be holding up quite well. So the majority of that money was uh, to go to the locker replacement, which definitely could you know, um, get pushed out one more year and we'll just continue to manage that item and, and bring it back in a future year. Thank you, Eva, for that. Uh, I'm going to open it up to council regarding that. Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you. Thank you that, for that, Eva. Um, that clarification on the pool lockers. Um, 
you know, when I think of pool with lockers and I think of schools that they've had them for how long and I didn't, you know, I guess I didn't take into consideration the potential for rust and, uh, you know, and jagged and, and the safety issues. I appreciate you bringing that up because uh, I don't want to see anybody, you know, with jagged edges and stuff get injured uh, using them and things like that. So um, I, I'm, unless there's an appetite from council, but I appreciate that clarification. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hawes and nothing else from council. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, the, the next item uh, council was seeking some clarification on is the Hinton Center furniture, the FF&E, uh, and whether that furniture had reached the end of life cycle or, or uh, whether this was an item that could be pushed out due to the, the limited uh, event uh, taking place at the Hinton Center due to COVID. Eva, is there any clarification that you can provide on that? Yes, so that is exactly as you stated, um, uh, Emily, with regards to some of the furniture is kind of at its end of life. So we were looking at replacing some items, but you're correct in, in stating with uh, the reduced bookings or almost nil bookings at the, the uh, Hinton Center. This, I'd like to see some, maybe not uh, the full 100%, but we do have um, Court of Queen's Bench is looking at booking, and I'm sure Council's aware that this is not just unique to Hinton, but across Alberta, that um, they've had to relocate some of uh, the jury trials to other locations, larger venues. And so we, you know, uh, part of that was perhaps a chair replacement. Some of the chairs are, are, you know, due for replacement. But yes, we could probably manage one more year with uh, without uh, the replacement of some furniture in this location. Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you again, Eva. One of the things that I just want to mention uh, due to the uh, obvious pandemic we're in, and we ran into this difficulty at the library, uh, we purchased uh, furniture that did you know, it was, it's able to be cleaned, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, it's in storage because it's not uh, able to c clean at the extent that uh, for the pandemic. So I'm just, uh, as a, you know, a precaution when, when replacing it, you know, this pandemic will hopefully end, but in the future we have another or some sort that that's taken into consideration when purchasing it, that uh, it's, it's all able to be still be used and cleaned efficiently, no matter what the circumstances are. So, uh, but I do appreciate the, the, you know, if it is, uh, possible, you know, to push some of these things forward a little bit just to, um, you know, uh, to alleviate some of the 2020 or 2021 budget. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hawes. Seeing no one else. Oh, Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor Michael, through to Council. So just to point out that through an extensive review of the capital budget, the director did decide to bring these items forward because we have to every year go through a process of pushing things further and further out. And at some time they, at some time they have to become a priority. So we can start um, moving forward on some of the deferred items and get those out of the way so we can start addressing a few of the other ones. With these two items in particular, if, if the situation of COVID changes, uh, these are, the, the Director of Infrastructure is a highly knowledgeable fella. He's not gonna move forward on supporting a move to increase or incur a cost to replace furniture just for the case of replacing it. Um, these are unpredictable times, uh, depend, it, it's hard to guess. Uh, we didn't wanna remove these projects in discussion with him, not knowing the state of what 2021 was going to bring. The, the risk here, is that if we don't move forward with the identified projects, the money stays in the reserve. Removing these projects and deferring them out another year does not help your operating budget. It helps keep the reserve balance up because we still need the contribution to go there in order to fund the project the next year. And if we defer these little items, it pushes other items out further depend because this plan is completely based on the funding that's coming from the operating budget by transfers to reserves to make that happen. So I just wanted to point out that um, 
although uh, I respect what Eva's brought forward as far as deferring, that's because the, they've come accustomed to having to push these things further and further out. And for these smaller items, it would be nice to see some of these uh, have money put towards them so that they can be addressed as needed. No, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fox, for that. And uh, I have no problem with it being there, but ultimately that's the will of council to see. Uh, I'm a big believer in amortization. And if we, if we use that as, you know, on one side of the example, if we can get an extra year or two years of certain things, those are the, the tough things to do, right? We have to kind of look at it, but at some point you're right. We have to make a decision, but that'll be uh, up to council to um, prioritize that. Council, anything further for the uh, Hinton Center? Seeing none. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, so the, the final item uh, Council was looking for some clarity on was the Scout Hall um, and the 45000 for 2021 and the uh, additional cost for 2022. Um, just a bit more detail on what uh, work is planned for each year. Uh, Eva, if you have some detail to share. So again, this is an item that goes back one year when I had requested the asbestos remediation, which was approved, but the demolition of the building was not. So um, we did not, um, I didn't feel it was prudent to spend the money removing the, um, the asbestos if I wasn't aware of what council's decision regarding the status that the hall was, whether, you know, in the long term, if we wanted to keep this, uh, this little hall or demolish it. So these two go hand in hand, the removal of the asbestos and then the, the demolishment of the building. Um, or if council still wishes to keep the hall, I would highly recommend that we remove that asbestos. It's, it's a high risk. Um, of having it in the building when you have user groups in there. So um, we've had some inquiries into this building, but I'm still, my, my position is recommending to remove it. We have, um, we have the Hinton Center to use as a hall, and I'm just recommending that we, we demolish this uh, building and restore it back to Parkland. So, um, we would have to, we're required by law to remove the asbestos before any demolition work is done um, to that building because of the uh, asbestos containing and other, um, there are other hazardous materials that are in there. Um, I, I've just labeled it asbestos, but there are some other hazardous materials that would have to be remediated safely before we can knock down that building and remove it and restore the lands. Thank you, Ms. Arsenal, for that. I have uh, Councillor Magoon. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, and this this is one line item where I'm, I'm very happy to see. I have no experience in terms of uh, remediation projects with removal of asbestos as a, a hazardous substance. Um, but I, I can only imagine that in working with the public, if I present a budget that says, you know, over the next two years, the cost to knock down the scout hall to the common person on the street. If I say it's, you know, budgeted at 95,000 bucks, I I don't have a lot of information to justify that. Uh, so, I, I mean, this is as much to council than anything else. I think this is one of those opportunities where I think maybe when we hit the RFD side of today, this is one where I think I'll wanna see a request for decision just so that when the public do come and say, well, how does it cost 50,000 to remove asbestos? and why is it going to cost 45 to knock the thing down? I'll have the information at hand to, to justify that potentially. And, and Eva, if, Eva, if you need to comment or would like to, you know, please feel free. Uh, but that's just an area of concern I had in going through the budget. Thank you, Councillor Magoon. Councillor Nelson. Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth with the RFD part. Uh, I think anytime there's a project, and to me it has less to do with the capital costs and more to do with um, its the public idea around it. Um, I've certainly heard lots of people say, why would you take that down? It's a perfectly good building. And, you know, last year we approved the the capital amount um, for this project. Um, but I, I think we, we've we really started to learn the importance of having a brief report come to council as a request for decision and, and 
and the ability that gives us to communicate with the public and engage and and also be able to look back on and say we had this discussion this is what we talked about this is the area and these were the options that we had and um i, I would love to see that be a, an rfd sort of item as well thank you thank you councillor nelson councillor haas yeah I, I echo uh what uh, the because council because i i guess my question was and I, I to uh, agree with the RFD, but you know uh, I think I heard Mr. Vanna briefly say you know like potentially this could be a eighty five thousand dollar asbestos bill and the knocking of it down is is smaller than uh, you know is a, is a small percentage. Um, so I guess that's where I'm at is I'd like to know you know what is the cost of the asbestos because one of the things that came to mind especially with this particular item is is the deconstruction of it and and I would I you know try to be, think of different options and one of the things that came to mind is the, and uh, is potentially instead of say um, deconstructing it in the in the you know with equipment and stuff is could this be a potential controlled type of burn and training opportunity for our fire department and even surrounding one um, that might uh, reduce some of the costs right so but i mean at the end of the day if it's you know again eighty five thousand for asbestos and 10 for the knock i don't know that but i'd uh, to agree on this one is to understand a little bit more because i too uh ninety five thousand to knock down that building seems uh, excessive but uh, i'm not familiar with it so thank you Thank you, Councillor Hawes, um, and I think that's a very good point, and I saw the fire chief nodding his head. Um, who, know, who knows what the opportunities are? The, the only thing I want to add, I, I think if we're going to potentially knock this uh, building down, look at the asbestos, we can tie it into what is going to replace it. Like, like what is, is it just going to be an open field? Are we going to put a gazebo? What does the community want? So let's tie in maybe the removal and what will be there after. And, and RFD to combine both to say, this is the uh, status now, and this is how it's going to be finished. Is going to, I think, really bode well with the community to be involved. Um, you know, not just with the the removal of it. So, uh, good conversation, council. Anything further for that item? Seeing a none. See Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, yeah okay sorry there was a, a request uh, texted over um I'm, I'm just going to turn things over to ms fox just to wrap up uh closing remarks on capital and then we'll move forward into operating so if i may are we uh the services of miss arsenal are done oh absolutely uh thank you uh, eva for <laughs> for joining us um and for answering council's questions um if council uh is okay to move on um or if uh, there's any additional questions i have one Councillor nelson yeah, sorry, going back to uh, page, uh, I guess, 105 or 106, uh, might have to be 105. Oh, no, we're good. It's on 106 as well. Sorry, it started making notes on uh, 105. So 106, um, the street signs upgrades. I don't know if this is a answerable question right now, but certainly something I would like to, to understand is, from what I gather, we approved this project for 100,000, and then we approved last year another 100, and, like during the year, another 140,000, and now it's another 40,000. I'm just kind of curious about the scope of that project and uh, whether maybe it should come back to, uh, whether it's a report or, or something, just to understand that, you know, we, we started a project and then every year we keep contributing unbudgeted previously unbudgeted funds toward it. So I'm just a little bit concerned and potentially how that also reflects in the tendering process if we're doing it in bits and pieces instead of one full project. So thank you. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor Michaels, through to council. So just to be clear, this the original approval for the street sign upgrades was $100. In order to pro, um, support a better practice, uh, that was happening previously, we requested when this project came forward for 2020, they needed another additional $40,000. So rather than just put it as a carry forward project, um, which is not transparent, and put a hundred a project that was approved at 100,000 now at 140, we created two separate line items that had it at 100,000 and 40,000. So the remaining amount that was being carried forward for the street signs is the $40,000 that was 
that was the additional request for funds. Councillor Nelson? Yeah, I guess where my confusion lies is in the approved budget last year, we had one line item for $100,000 and then another line item for $140,000. So the last year's budget was clear it was two forty. dollars Now I'm more confused. Ms. Fox, any comments with that? And I guess if, if we don't have have the answers, I'm, I'm if it goes on a parking lot, that's that's fine with me. I just kind of want to know uh, all of the different amounts that we've approved and the total project costs. So thank you. Ms. Fox? I will, I think I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Walosh and uh, the amount that was requested to be carried forward was 40,000. That's the extent of my knowledge. I'll pass it over. Mr. Walosh? Yes, that, that's uh, that's correct. What we did, we were anticipating contracting out the whole streetscape, all the signs being done by a contractor, and we were able to do it in house, so we didn't contract it out. So the savings, we haven't. I don't even believe we used one hundred thousand dollars in the total project. What I asked for was to carry forty thousand dollars forward, because we still have to do all the remaining signs throughout town not the name change of the signs but it's to fix the signs up so we need to get some other parts or we have to get a welder or whatever we have to get to do it or a hydrovac uh, there is some extra work that has to be done so all the wooden signs have been replaced with the green signs to a standard all those signs have been put in place i think it's six six and all the yield signs all the stop signs these are the ones we want to now focus on so to answer your question, it's a carry forward of 40,000 from the original. So at the end of the day, this project may be 120 to 140 combined, not 250. Thank you, Mr. Walashen, Councilor Nelson. Yeah, I, I think it's something that I'll still add to my RFD. And I guess maybe some of the confusion lies. Last year, our, our detailed capital was in Cameron, it's two separate line items. So it's like, I don't even know what I'm uh, able to, to talk about, but it was it was clearly 240 that was approved in last year's budget. So um, I'll, I'll put it up when we get to our RFDs or RF reports or something like that so that it's uh, captured and I can fully understand it. So thank you. Ms. Fox. Just to be clear, um, when we're making statements about in-camera capital, we never did have a meeting that went in-camera to discuss capital. So I, I think sometimes we get questioned by the public uh, on this here as administration and I want to make sure that it's very clear in the statements that are being made there so it doesn't seem that we're going in a closed door room to discuss the detailed capital project, which doesn't happen. The only thing that was requested and supported by a majority of the council last year was to take out the detailed numbers from each line item. And then that rolled up number was the one that was presented to council. Um, but that was a motion that was made by council. So I just want to be clear that we're saying the right things. Councillor Nelson. Uh, so this year we have not gone in camera for detailed capital, but the numbers that I'm talking about now are from last year's detailed capital, which was in camera, which is where it's uh, a little bit tricky um, for me to understand. But again, I would, I'd rather deal with this as a request for a report rather than us all on the fly kind of talking about the history behind it and the different numbers. I, I just, I don't think we're going to do good work um, on the fly here. So I'll happily make a, a direction there. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, anything further? Seeing none, CAO Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. So I think if we're okay to move into the capital uh, wrap up, uh, Ms. Fox had a couple of closing remarks. Oh. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor Michaels, through to council. So we've went through all the parking lot items. I think we addressed all the outline questions. There is a request, and I'm not 100% on the clarity of this, but I just want to ask for clarification. There is a request on some of the items where I think council is okay with the item coming forward, but would request a report on that item to be brought to council before it is spent. If this is correct, what I'm thinking here is, if I can get a list of those items, 
that council as a whole supports that they would like a report on before they're approved, I can gather those items here. And what we plan to do at the very end in our wrap up and decision making is provide you with a list of motions that we understand that council wants, plus if there's any other ones you wanna bring forward. So we'll go back at the end of the operating budget presentation, ask if there's any direction around capital, ask if there's direction around operating, but this would give us a, an opportunity to know what those might be ahead of time to help bring those motions forward so they're not forgotten. Thank you for that, Ms. Fox. I have Council Magoon. Yeah, and I think um, this is certainly, this doesn't come just for me. This was a conversation that evolved uh, with several other councillors. Um, is any particular line items in the budget that rely on grant funding or anticipated grant funding um, that end up, uh, you know, for whatever reason, uh, the grant funding may not be available or the grant isn't successful. Um, seeing those come back uh, as one generalized category to council um, would, would be important for me. I don't know what the process from administration is, if their intention would be to do that anyway, anyway or not, uh, or if because it was already budgeted for within the 2021 budget successfully, if the funds would just, you know, automatically be you sort of diverted from associated reserves or accounts, if that makes sense. Uh, if, if I understand, if there's no uh, direction, I think, pertaining to whatever item, um, I think no report would come back or no RFD or no explanation. Uh, I don't know if CEO Olson wants to add to that. That's I'm trying to understand the question exactly. Um, I'll defer to Ms. Fox. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Ms. Olson, through to council. In the full report that we bring back, Councillor Magoon, this might address uh, what you need. There is a row within this Excel document that highlights how the project's being funded, whether it's from grant or reserve, and that typically, that larger detailed report is the one that we bring to Council uh, on a regular basis. What I would expect is if, let's say Switzer Drive, a large project that depends on capital funding, grant funding, we don't attain those grants, we would have to come back to council for approval to request that now it be funded in a different way or from reserve. So from my perspective, that is how capital items should be coming back if they switch from the funding that we've brought forward originally. Mm -hmm. I do understand that the layout of here does make that hard to see. So when we bring that final report back to council, if I unhide that column, that might be helpful. And, and for clarification, that report will be coming back um, at a regular meeting with the budget? I think there's two different things we might be talking about. So if council gives us direction that with uh, amendments, we can bring back a capital budget and an operating budget for 2021 for approval, which we're targeting in the beginning of December, that's when I would include the, the updated capital with some of those amounts being, uh, the subtotals being corrected and the format showing where the grant funding is or what projects are being grant funded. So at that time, based on that direction, I'm not sure if you're talking about as we bring financials forward for you to review. No. Okay. No, no thank you for that clarification. Councilor Magoon? Yeah, actually, both of those uh, reflected different parts of that question. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor Magoon. Council, anything further? Seeing none. See Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, if I'm able to uh, request a short break. Yeah, uh, we'll just take to... a five minute recess. Thank you. Um, okay. Apologies, Mayor Michaels, we're just we'll uh, getting the streaming. Hello, everyone. I'd like to reconvene this meeting at 1121. And with that, I'll hand it over to CAO Olson. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, at this point, we're moving into the operating budget overview portion of our slide deck. Ms. Fox is going to take us through the overview, and then we'll get into each department specifically. Uh, for a brief uh, highlight reel and then uh, invite Council's questions after that. Thank you, Ms. Olson. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. 
CAO Olson and through to Council. On page 111, I believe the in your agenda is where the operating budget starts. Specifically, however, we're going to go to page 138. As stated earlier yesterday in the opening to the operating budget presentation, we're looking at a combined total of fixed increases and additional increases of 14.9%. You will see on your slide deck presentation that we had to adjust the percentages in our uh, third draft of the, the slide deck presentation. We missed that change. So 14.9% increase required to the operating budget due to many factors, as mentioned, inflationary uh, increases, uh, loss of reserve revenue used to offset ta taxation. Administration was able to achieve a 10.9% decrease to offset the operating budget increases. Just under half of that is coming from the realignment or restructure plan, which reduced $500,000, almost $500,000 of wages from the budget and over half of that being permanent wage reductions. Also described by community services was a focus placed on reducing some services temporarily uh, and permanently to help achieve that total. Infrastructure services also reduced uh, a larger area in regards to skim patching, totaling about $104,000. But I, I don't want to get obviously into each department's uh, increases and decreases as uh, they will highlight those and I don't want to steal their thunder. But just to give you guys an idea of some of the things that were done to achieve the overall 4% tax rate increase. However, I'd rather focus on at this point the $518,000 operating budget increase and focus more on the dollar amount in the operating budget increase. The outcome is the tax rate, but obviously that is due to fluctuate due to inflation and deflation as well. The draft offer, operating budget is shown uh, within the budget package, uh, which reflects the revenues and expenditures over the three year plan. Oh, sorry. I skipped right over the starting point. I feel like I've stole some of CAO Olson's thunder here. Um, as my notes jumped right to here and that's why I started at page 138. So I'm gonna go right to here because it is just a summary of the first two slides uh, shown in a different way. I do believe that this slide created some confusion and, and with some of the different things we try uh, to bring information forward in different ways. We win some and we lose some. So I think uh, with this method here, it was recommended during our external review to try and show meaning behind the changes that are happening and breaking it down in a few different ways. So I wouldn't overly fixate on the categories. Uh, the overall idea of this slide is to show you the increases and decreases that occurred within the departments to get to the $518,000 increase overall. So when Ms. Olson opened yesterday, she really focused on those two slides showing you that some of the fixed increases are things that were uh, outside our control or direct control and other things were within our control. I. I do want to ask here at this point if everybody is relatively in a good place of understanding of what this slide represents. I think the other point of confusion is what we found when we copied it out of one document into the PowerPoint. Some of the rows got really narrow and you couldn't read the description of what it was that made that a little bit confusing as well. So I've tried to expand on that here just for clarity purposes, but it shows the, 
the major things that increased, a lot of the things that we decreased to get to the overall 518. Perfect. Thank you, Ms. Fox. I have Councilor Magoon. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Just as a point of clarification for those who might be watching and also a reminder for myself, uh, could I get a highlight of reserve revenue changes and what that that essentially summarizes? Ms. Fox? Absolutely. Thank you. Through to Council. In 2019, due to an increased assessment value, the overall amount of taxation collected was in excess of what was budgeted. So we ended up with a surplus of $493,000 approximately. It was a decision of council at that time to place that surplus money into a reserve fund and use that reserve fund to support operational costs in 2020. In doing so, that meant that the taxes that we needed would be less. However, there was only a one-time amount of a reserve available. So in 2021, that reserve is zero and there's no longer any more money to bring forward to offset taxation. So operational costs staying the same, the total amount of taxation was immediately impacted and we needed more money to operate. Council we're good. Thank you, uh, Councillor Waugh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just hoping for a, a brief overview of the other revenue losses anticipated. Ms. Fox? Absolutely, just to clarify, in the column called other, is that what you're looking yeah, for the or the bottom line of $47,000? No, the $126,265. Of re anticipated revenue losses. Yeah. So I will summarize just briefly, that's in the Community Services Department. Uh, Ms. Ho Howarth will be speaking to this within her presentation uh, and give you some more detail on that, but it's directly related to the lost revenue from um, COVID-19 affecting our facilities. Thank you. Thank you, Council Wild. Council, anything further? If not, Ms. Fox. All right, so within your agenda package, you will find the draft operating budget which is shown in the budget package. It reflects the revenues and expenditures over the three-year plan, showing the net balance of zero. It's a little bit, I, I apologize. I thought I had the page numbers uh, marked out for you in advance, so I just wanted to see. Does anybody have that? 134. Okay, thank you, Councillor Nelson. Yeah, so if you're able to turn to that page, it might be helpful because it is tiny on this screen, but I do have it here for you. So it's important, and I know we'll get to the meat and potatoes of the increases and decreases, but just to let the public that read this document uh, and council know what the statements are saying or what they're for. So this one here, I just wanted to point out, really breaks down our costs by category not by department. So it gives you an idea to see what our total salaries and wages are, what our construction costs are, how the, how the overall revenues break down. Over the next couple pages, these statements are broken down by municipal operating uh, utility services. And the difference between the two are that utility services are a fee for service um, there are free, free fee for service area and municipal operating is supported by taxation. The consolidated draft operating budget shown on page 133 of the agenda package is a combination of both the general operating budget supported by taxation and the utility service budget supported by user fees and charges. So following this document is the municipal operating plan on page 134 and the utility services plan on page 135. 
it's helpful for us to provide this in many different ways uh, because many different uh, people and profession have different understandings of financials. It's a bit of an art to try and match what we're saying uh, to the different readers levels of understanding. So we provide it in a few different ways. So I just want to make sure that I've given council, uh, the public and my staff at times enough information uh, within these statements to be useful and understandable. Oops. The one area to note uh, that has been added value in these statements here is we've shown on the bottom the amount of surplus that's being generated out of the utility services budget right now that's actually being kept in general operations to support an offset taxation. And what administration has done this year is rather than just bring this forward, um, we've kind of brought forward a solution for it. However, with the timing, actually putting a tax strategy in place to deal with this on a long-term basis is something that we want to bring forward over 2021. The new kind of uh, impeding priority there was the cost increases that were coming in uh, in the wastewater service and water service under expenditures. And we wanted to deal with that item there first and not over uh, complicate the 2021 budget uh, to move this forward. Whoops. On page 143 of your agenda. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm throwing my pages out here too soon. When I tried to share the screen, some of my screen is covered by the Zoom, so I don't get to see it in, in the, the neatest way that you do. So it's confusing a little bit. I apologize. This document here is important, and this is something that I will be coming back to and the one that I refer to the most. And this is the statement that breaks down all the departments, the revenues minus expenditures. So it's showing the total amount that we need from taxation to support this service area. Further into the budget, you will see each of these sections broken down with financial statements showing their revenues and expenditures in more detail. And that's what each of the department's uh, directors will take you through in detail to their own. The important part of this piece here is that this is a piece where we would like council's input. So when it comes to uh, the chief administrator's office, when the CAO presents, what she'll be bringing to you is the reasons that her budget has changed from one year to the next. And as you can see on this statement, that department has gone down $308,000. So when she speaks to you, she's going to go through why those changes occurred. The overall changes added together total the $518,000 that we're talking about that has increased in the operating budget. So that's important and that's why at the end I will come back to this slide and we'll specifically ask not for council to go line by line and make decisions but overall if they support that department and the changes that have been made in that department. The important tie-in with this is the departmental presentations that were made to you yesterday. This really allowed each director to tell you the challenges that they were having some of the priorities they focused on to really give you uh, an upfront idea of what's impacting their department so that when they bring the financials forward, you've already been kind of given a heads up on some of the changes that, that have been implemented. Um, I'm pleased to say that this year bringing this forward, there are a lot of areas that we were able to target and bring costs down. One of the strategies that we've implemented uh, is to try and bring that reserve contribution up. So that's typically where the larger increases are seen within the budget. So at this time, uh, I'm going to jump into going through the budget document. And I think this is going to be important. The slide is, is 
bringing you through the presentation piece, but it's probably going to be more beneficial for you to go into the budget package, the agenda package, and follow through each of the departmental documents. Ms. Olson um, has referred to pages in here as far as that budget, but what I'll try to do as she's talking is make sure that I, I refer to the agenda page for you as well, because each document has page numbers as well as the agenda, so that can make it a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Ms. Fox, for uh, the overview. Um, so Council and Public Relations page, uh, it's 28 in the document or page 139 of 158, um, if you're following along. Um, and Council and Public Relations, uh, just a note that on page 139, Council budget uh, and the Public Relations bu budget, Public Relations is really the civic agencies, which is on page 141. So when we get to that area, we can flip to page 141 as well and, and work through uh, the, the detail that's provided on that page. So for Council's budget for 2021, uh, it's largely the same overall with an exception of um, $100,000 approximately that was brought forward to support emerging priority action items in support of Council's strategic vision. So without having that action, uh, that corporate plan, completed with the list of actions and, and prior to budget to bring forward the amounts that are required to support those, those important actions. Uh, administration uh, included this money in order to support items that we haven't identified yet or we haven't identified budgets for yet in order to ensure that those areas can move forward in advance um, in support of Council's vision. Uh, this is funded from reserves, uh, so this is not an increase in taxation required to provide this funding for, for Council's use, um, so just want to, to touch on that. Um, so that's kind of the overview of the Council area. Is there any questions there before we move into civic agencies and the, the public relations portion? I just want to pause in case there are. Thank you, Ms. Olson. I have uh, Councillor Magoon. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Actually, this is more a question for our overall um, draft operating budget presentation side of things. Um, I'm looking at the line item that says franchise fee, and if this is best addressed in a departmental presentation, that's fine. Great. I'm more than patient. But in budget 2020, it was uh, budgeted for you know, 1.68 million, and then what, moving what for. Clarification, what page are you on? Oh, I apologize. Uh, page 134. Thank you. Yeah, no, I apologize for that. Uh, and then, I don't know, seven or eight lines from the top, you see franchise fee. And I'll just wait for council to get there before I carry on. In budget 2020, it was budgeted for 1.68 million. And then moving forward from budget 2021 to 2023, it's budgeted for 1.73 million. And if I misinterpret the following, I apologize. But due to the budgeting increase, is the expectation there that administration will be bringing forward a request to have council increase f franchise fees? Or is this pre-calculated? I just, I wanted to make sure I knew where this was coming from. Ms. Fox? Thank you, Mayor Michaels, through to council. The franchise fees are, um, you have already been brought to council and, and approved to remain the same. The percentage doesn't change, but however, due to the way that um, Fortis calculates the franchise fees, which is based on growth and use in the grid and, and the power estimate, they give us an estimate at uh, this rate, this is what the revenues look like they're going to be. So we have used their estimate from the work they've provided. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Magoon. Councillor Nelson. Uh, so we're going to get back to the page we're on. Uh, 139. So my question is around, um, so in, in the council budget, it shows 2020 one a transfer from reserves of 114,000 is that that kind of unidentified priorities thing yes okay i have one other quick question mm -hmm. too where in this document is the election captured both the expenditures and uh transfers and all of that uh 
Thank you, Mayor Michael Street, Councillor Nelson. Uh, it's captured under legislative services, so it'll be coming forward under the corporate services umbrella under LEGE. Perfect, thank you. Upon reading this the first time, I thought maybe that uh, increase in contracted and general services and transfer from reserves is partly uh, from the election. So it's good to know that that number is kind of an unidentified number and could be something we have some say on as council to help with taxation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Ostashik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a request to Council and Administration and everybody that's here today, if we could lead the comments with what page we're referring to, because a lot of the time we're jumping around a lot. It's taking a long time to get to the place that uh, the speaker's referring to, and it's hard to keep track of the conversation when you're looking for a page. So if we could just make it clear where we're talking about before we start talking, that would be great. Thank you for that, Councillor okay. Stashik. Councillor McGoon. Yeah, it's still on page 139. Um, under contracted and general services for council, uh, specifically, what sorts of contracted services would we be looking for for council? Ms. Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. So this, uh, this groups the contracted and general services and includes your travel, memberships, registrations, insurance, training, um, as well as council contingency. Um, so those are the, the kinds of um, items that are slotted underneath this. Continuing, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, just so continuing clarification, um, comparative to 2020, 22 and 23, which are all hovering around the $70,000 mark, 2021 is slated for 184,000, which seems like a significant increase. Is that due to the assumption that this is an election year coming up and there's more training that's gonna have to go into? See you, Olson. Uh, thank you. So that includes that uh, 114,000 transfer to reserve. So that's why it's bumped up. It's a it's a one time, and it was to support uh, those some of the unidentified and identified actions that might not have budget amounts allocated okay. to them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Magoon and CEO Olson. Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, CAO, are you able to break out the council contingency amount from that um, 184? See you, Olson. Uh, I, so I'm sorry, I don't have a, a detailed amount of what slots underneath that. Uh, Ms. Fox, if you have that open. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor, through to Council. Actually, uh, over the last couple of years, the Council of Contingency has been captured under Public Relations Contracted Services, um, and it's the $20,000 that you'll see there. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Councillor Reese. Good. Council, anything further? Councillor Nelson. Yeah, staying on the same page, I think this is something that'll be good for us to kind of take away. I I don't love the look of having $115,000 uh, just transferred out of reserves with an expectation to use without it being associated to anything specific. I'd rather see it stay in reserve and council by motion can take pretty much any money out of a reserve to use it if there's something deemed necessary. but. I don't love the the pool of, um, of of money that's unattributed. I've heard those things politically used uh, with different words, and uh, uh, yeah, I don't like the look of it. So, uh, likely a motion I'll put forward when we get to that uh, portion of our uh, budget meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, anything further? And none. Oh, Miss Fox. Thank you, Mayor Michaels, through to Council. Just with that item there, I, I want to remind Council that in 2019, as a result of the organizational review, uh, administration did recommend putting forward a $200,000 allotment to address issues and items that were to stem out of that. And it was removed during the budget deliberation process. And then partway through the next year, decisions were made to address those organizational challenges that brought new positions into the town. And there was a huge amount of criticism from council and the public that those decisions were being made partway through the year. 
uh, and were not thought about before. So I just want to remind Council that if action items do come out that need budget monies funded to them, that this was administration's attempt to make sure that there was funds there available for you and you didn't have to amend a budget in the middle of the year, the same way that we attempted to do that. So I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of the solution that we were trying to bring forward to address that. But of course, at the end of the day, it is council's will, however they want this reflected. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Council, anything further? And none, see Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michael. So we can move into the public relations section um, and flip uh, to uh, page 141. So this is civic agencies, and as uh, Ms. Fox indicated as well, uh, the $20,000 um, contract in general services that's included in the public relations line on page 139 is for uh, council strat planning or, or contingency um, in those amounts. So page 141, uh, taking a look at what's included, um, I just want to point out that the 2020 numbers are based on what was budgeted. Um, so they are not actuals to the end of the year. I uh, just want to make sure that that's clear. So looking into 2021, um, a couple of things to point out. Um, the reductions from uh, the path um, are included. Um, what has not been included is any amount uh, that has been requested by any civic agency over what they received the previous year. So the chamber presented and requested um, uh, to continue with the additional funds that they were provided in 2020. That was a one-time decision by council. So uh, that hasn't been reflected there. Um, another item to note is that the Hinton Historical Society amount is incorrect. There was a motion provided by council in the 2020 budget process to reduce that amount, um, I believe to 55,000 for 2021. And was it 55 or 65? 65, sorry, my apologies, 65. Um, so that was, uh, was not captured and is an error. Um, otherwise, uh, the community grant program has been, uh, amounts have been reduced, uh, the ATE fine revenue that supports uh, that item has been um, declining. Um, so a reflection of, of that is included for 2021 and beyond. Um, I think I will leave it there. If council has any questions on these items, um, please feel welcome to, to ask now. Thank you, CEO Olson. Council, any questions? Council Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When Foon presented to us, they had indicated that they are asking for $8,000 a year, not $8,200. And in fact, they said they may not even utilize that eight. So why are we seeing 82? See you, Olson. Uh, thank you, Councillor Race. So a, a distinct number was not provided by the Foon Festival outside of that 82. Um, they did indicate that they might not use, similar to last year, might not use all of the money that has been allocated for them. Um, due to the uncertainty through COVID, they're not quite sure of what event they will be able to put on next year, um, but did request that the same amount moving into 2021. Yeah, I, I know that I did specifically uh, say to Morgan, how can you give us a number? And she did say eight, so, but that's good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Race. Uh, Council, anything further? Councilor Wah. I just wanted to clarify the Chamber of Commerce partnership. Uh, the 22 that has been the standard amount they've received from year to year. Does So that's not reflective of any top up to keep as they had proposed? Um, thank you through to Councilor Wah. That, that does, that's the, the amount that was originally, well, it's included in the um, operating agreement with the chamber, the, the service agreement, sorry, with the chamber, um, and was the standard amount prior to 2020. So no top up is included. Thank you, Councillor. Well, Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just have a question in regards to the airport. I know we've talked about the airport and I do see a $10,000 reduction. Is that $10,000 reduction as a result of conversations we've had with our partners at Yellowhead County? Uh, 
or is there still um, more conversation to be had potentially in regards to the airport? Administration. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. So the this number is based on the estimate that uh, was provided for 2021, um, does not include any additional capital projects or amounts. Um, additional conversation with the county was uh, to be undertaken over uh, 2020 to understand kind of a, a plan moving forward um, with COVID and some of the, the additional pressures that hasn't taken place yet and will be looked at into um, 2021 as well. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm good, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Councillor Ostashik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So last night there was a request that was sent to administration for some clarification on funding for the Hinton Historical Society. And um, from based on the comments at the beginning of the meeting, I was expecting that to be addressed when we got to civic agencies, but I haven't heard anything yet. So I'm just wondering if that could be addressed. I see you, Olson. Um, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, uh, Councillor Stashik, I did mention that at the beginning of the um, civic agencies piece that that reduction was missed in uh, what you're seeing before you on page 141. Uh, that a motion was provided to administration in the 2020 budget deliberations to reduce their amount by 10,000. Okay, my apologies, I missed That's that. That's quite Sorry. all right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stashik. Uh, Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor Michaels, through the council, and a good proof of why we need a microphone upgrade. I have been trying to put my hand up for some time to make sure that that was specifically talked to. So um, that there and also on here, Disc Golf uh, Association is not uh, addressed within here as well. Um, and I have noted that not only the $75,000 that was reflected in the Historical Society that Councillor Stashik brought to our attention based on a previous motion should have been 65, the subsequent years were dropped to 55. And I have made a note and corrected that in my uh, final version uh, for, for the next budget to come forward. Perfect, thank you, Ms. Fox. See you, Olson. Um, if there are no other questions from council, we can move on to uh, the CAO department. Um, I guess my only question, uh, mm -hmm. how long do you anticipate the CAO department uh, conversation to go on for? Uh, very quick. Okay, yeah. so we'll run through that and we'll go for lunch. Okay. Um, Ms. Fox? Thank you, Mayor Michaels. I'll be taking you through oh. the the. Oh, sorry, it's the CAO department, yeah. not the corporate <laughs> services. I'm like, it's me. Let's go. Um, the one thing I wanted to clarify, though, is that any items that we've listed as outstanding, so decision to be made for the disc golf, the chamber of commerce, those items will be brought forward at the end when we do the wrap up to make sure you get to make direction and decision on those matters. Perfect, thank you for that. Um, see you <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I'm okay if you wanna take it, but. <laughs> um, so flipping now to page 142 um, or page 31 of the document there, uh, the CAO department uh, budget has uh, reduced significantly with the transfer, the, the transition of strategic services out of this area and into corporate services. Um, as well, in 2019, economic development moved into development services and out of the CAO's office. So just a reminder uh, that that took place. Um, overall, um, the budget has reduced. Uh, most of those reductions are coming from human resources uh, department. <laughs> Ms. Hope is on the line to answer any specific questions that council might have. Um, I'll just hit a couple of highlights. Um, I talked about earlier the elimination of the project lead position, uh, some of those HR contracts for project support, and then the movement of the HR assistant position from HR to uh, strategic services to support the communications and grant assistant position in 2021. Um, so those are some of the changes. Um, the operational project that's included here uh, is for uh, legal labor relations matters. Um, 
more information can be shared um, on, on any of the legal matters that council wishes to have more information on. We didn't provide an in-camera agenda to pull those out specifically, but if there's a request from council to provide some more information, we may move in camera if council directs that uh, to provide uh, some greater detail. Um, the other area that we've seen a reduction in uh, is under contracted and general services of about $70,000, and that's due to the increased capacity uh, that I spoke to yesterday of hi the hiring of the HR advisor position to offset some of the things that we were contracting out. Uh, in the chief administrative officer area, there's not, not a lot of difference, um, and I will leave it at that. If council has questions, happy to answer them. Thank you, Ms. Olson. Council, any questions? Councillor Haas. Just a quick question uh, in regards to uh, legal service and stuff like that. When would be the appropriate time if we did uh, have a motion to go in camera and have that? Uh, would it be near the end or? Thank you. C.A. Olson. Um, it, any time uh, could be appropriate um, based on, you know, council's direction and, and need for additional information. Uh, it might be um, if we looked at that towards the end, if there's any other legal areas or, or line items that uh, that have uh, FOIP considerations, um, we could move in camera at that point, uh, citing those FOIP numbers, the reasoning why we would be uh, moving into closed uh, session. Thank you, CEO Olson. Council, Council McGoon. Uh, yes, Your Worship, just to that end, I. I do agree with the CAO that efficiency wise, it's it's easier to go in and lump all those things together. Uh, in this instance, though, my own personal feelings, and that doesn't reflect necessarily the will of council, uh, is that those are taken as one offs uh, at a time, under, simply because it's more transparent at that moment in time to the public as to why we're moving in camera for a specific item. A like case in point, if there was a question on a legal matter that we couldn't discuss in public we go we discuss only that matter come back to the you know the regular meeting and carry on and then that way to somebody who's perhaps watching the meeting they can say okay for that period of time they were only gone because they were discussing that particular issue i understand there's absolutely a question of efficiency but we've been requested by the public to really make sure that we're being transparent i think that's a, a more uh, transparent way of doing things thank you thank you council McGoon. Uh, I have no one in queue. Uh, administration, how long did we anticipate uh, to have lunch for? Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, lunch has been delivered. Um, I would anticipate a half an hour, if that's um, okay with uh, with Council and yourself. Um, if Unless there's objection, I think we'll reconvene. I'd like to reconvene at 1245. We'll have lunch and a break and then we'll start going. Is that okay? And if, that, if that's the will of Council, uh, I'll entertain a motion to do so, Councillor Nelson. Like the motion that we adjourn until 12.45. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, all those in favor? Nine, and with that, I'll go to CAO Olson. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, if Council is okay to move on from the CAO department, if there's no further questions. Council, any further questions? Seeing none. Um, then we will proceed into corporate services with Ms. Fox. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor Michaels, through to council. So in order to move things through fairly quickly, just as we've said in the departmental budget presentations, there's a slight increase to the corporate services budget over 2020. A majority of this is the continuation of the intern, uh, an increase in contracted services to address some intermunicipal contract work that we would like to t endeavor. And I think, oh, and I should, sorry, did not tell you it was on page 143 of the agenda package to refer to. And we do have, as CAO Wilson stated, strategic communications, legislative services within our, um, under the corporate services umbrella now and moved health and safety to protective services. So that's the difference you would see um, from the 2020 to the 2021 budget. 
And as asked earlier, elections does fall under legislative services and for approximately uh, just over $14,000 is budgeted to support the election process next year. I will leave it at that and leave it open for questions in this area. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Council, any questions? Councillor Nelson. I have, uh, this isn't really specific to this department, but a, a philosophical question. So all of our revenues in many cases are flat across the board, yet we expect our expenditures to go up, whether it's CPI or COLA or whatever it is. We're always increasing our expenditures, but should we not be budgeting our revenues to go up by the same and be increasing what we're charging and revenue based on that? Like, as even just on this page, it's, you know, 300 here, 25,000 there, 34,000. You know, if those every year go up by two or 3%, similar to everything else, you know, that could make a, a pretty significant difference in, in how we're doing our budgeting. So if there's a reason they can't, I'd love to know it. Um, and it's not necessarily something for this budget to sort out, but I think in the future, it's, it's something we should be aware of. And even with fees and charges, maybe having a standard uh, CPI increase or, you know, it tied to something. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Nelson. Ms. Fox? Thank you, Mayor Michaels. With the switch to a three-year plan, it has been a new process for a number of uh, the different department managers who manage this part um, of the budget within the financials. I do think you'll find within the community services envelope where a number of those fees and services are reviewed on a regular basis and come to council that the revenues do reflect an increase. Uh, however, some of the other areas where it is harder to determine or we don't have a set review of that fees and charges structure, the revenues tend to stay the same. It has been on the agenda for administration to uh, undergo an exercise to review all fees and charges. Um, you will see in the utility services department the, the revenues uh, do shift upwards. Um, but as I was saying, it, it has been kind of a goal of administration to target reviewing fees and charges by law, and we were to do that this year, but due to COVID, we couldn't do that. So it is definitely a point well taken, and I think probably one of the priority areas of focus that we could um, slate in for 2021. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Fox. Uh, Councillor Reese. Thank you, sir. Uh, where, where do I find that $14,000 dedicated to elections in this? Ms. Fox? Thank you, Mayor Michaels, through to Council. So okay. in the Corporate Services uh, Department page under Legislative Services, the elections amount, oh, you know, I just want to make sure I'm telling you the right thing here. So I don't say the wrong thing. I'm going to double check. And if it's okay, I'm going to put that on the parking lot and come back and make sure that is exactly where it is. Perfect. Thank you, uh, Ms. Fox. Council, anything further for Corporate Services Department? Seeing none, CEO Olson. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, I am going to jump uh, just slightly ahead to development services before protective services. Apologies if there's any confusion. That'll bring us to page 147 um, or 36 as on the slide. Um, and Mr. Vanna will take us through development services and then we'll move to protective services. Thank you. Mr. Vanna. Good afternoon, Your Worship, members of council. Uh, for development services, uh, I'd like to highlight um, a, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, as mentioned earlier, there was a, uh, a reorganization in the department that eliminated uh, now two positions, a director position and a development officer position. So that uh, reduced our operating costs or salaries wages from 803 down to 628. Uh, in addition, um, we also added a service uh, last year for safety codes. And so that has also translated into an increase in revenues. Uh, from uh, 205 to 232. Uh, in addition, we also reviewed our uh, fees and charges um, this year as well. So that uh, is reflective of that. Um, in terms of operational projects, uh, we did complete a number of our one-time operational projects from last year. And so that number uh, is decreased for, uh, for next year. And uh, the other thing I wanted to highlight in terms of revenues, um, we were, we've been quite successful in getting grants for economic development, uh, particularly in terms of the marketing as well as the care grant. 
and so that uh, that's translated there in the in the sixty seven thousand dollars for revenues in that area. So that uh, concludes my remarks, Your Worship. Thank you, Mr. Vanna. Uh, Council, Councilor Wall. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to ask about the hundred and seven thousand dollars in operational projects under economic economic development. Um, right. So there's a, one of them is the, uh, the CARES grant and, and um, that pr particular project dealing with uh, lone wolves and, uh, and our uh, internet, um, improving the internet towards businesses and, and working with them on that particular item. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Waugh. Councillor Nelson. Just in the very first, and the sale of goods and services, we seem to have a one-year decrease from the standard revenue number. I'm just wondering what's that, what that is attributed to. Uh, if I could just get clarification on that question, sorry. Sorry, uh, uh, sale of goods and services. In 2021, it's 10 grand, but every other year it's 20. I'm just curious if it's a specific, specifically tied to something. Right, so we, um, our department did a little a, a little thing did things a little differently um, this year for uh, for 2021. We we really looked at a, a zero based approach and sort of built our our budget from the ground up and and uh, this was really the first time that that's been done in a very long time. So we really did analyze all our all our particular costs. How much do we sell and what do we sell and really looked at that. And so when we looked at that, um, we we've never really achieved the twenty thousand. And so we're saying no, you know, at best we can do 10,000 in terms of sales because we don't have that much really to sell. So that, that's an example of that. Can I just follow up? I think, and that's where looking over multiple years, it jumps right back up to 20,000 in, in following years. So if it's not reasonable, like uh, it just reads a little bit strange. If it was 10 and then all the way down to 10, it would make a little bit more sense. Not a huge dollar amount, not something I'm too worried about. But if we know it's not realistic this year, it may as well not be realistic in future years unless we're uh, expecting to get there. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Magoon. Yeah, and if I could just get clarification on the development levies, is my understanding we move in 2020 from 50,000 and then moving forward to 10, is that because we're expecting with the updating of that particular policy to impact that line item? Right, so once once again, because we've, we've taken a critical look at this and uh, if, if you think about where offsite levies come from, offsite levies are generated uh, because of new development. Mm -hmm. And when we looked at historically what we've been doing, it's 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 sort of a hit and miss. You may get a spike in one year because you happen to have a development, mm -hmm. but looking on the horizon of, of what we can expect over the next year and, and going forward, uh, we don't really see that uh, that it's not really a revenue generation. It's a more of a cost recovery kind of a. Uh, a revenue that, as I would describe it. But, okay. uh, so what we've done is we've reduced it down to be more realistic on what we can expect. Sounds good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Magoon. Councilor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick question on operational projects in both areas. If someone were to say to me, talk to me about um, operational projects, that 162,000, I wouldn't know what to say to them. So is, is that going to be broken down in another area in the budget where we can actually see the, um, the uh, projects or would we just make a phone call? So they, they are in detail in, in the budget. And so an example of that would be reviewing our offsite levies. Another one would be uh, continuing our work on asset management um, as, as well as uh, one of the uh, other items that we received this year uh, it's an economic development is that we received from Trans Mountain Pipeline. There were uh, dollars, $50,000 that we received from that to do education. Um, and that was a grant received from them. Okay, thank you. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor, through to Council. Just to point you in the direction of that Councillor Race, page 154 and 155, if you want to jot those numbers down are the breakdown of all op operational projects um, and they're broken down by department for your reference. Thank you for that, Ms. Fox. Council, anything further? I'm seeing none, CAOs, and thank you, Mr. Vanna. 
Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, so at this point, we will move uh, back a couple of pages to one page 144, Protective Services Department. Um, and I will turn this over to uh, Chief Martins. Thank you, CEO Olson, and to Mayor and Council. So you'll see um, pretty much the same um, for a slight increase with wages and union and non-wages across all the departments I have, as well as insurance and fuel. Um, a big ticket item under oper operational projects as a one-time project is um, $40,000 for the fire underwriters um, survey. Um, so that's, uh, you'll see that in there. We have the biggest part of um, my budget is the debenture, the loan of the fire truck, and, and you'll see that um, increase in 2021 and then increase across the, the years there. Um, the other area um, you'll see an increase um, is under health and safety. This is to cover some joint health and safety training um, for the, the team, um, as well as um, psychological and some change management um, training across the organization over um, a couple of years here as we're looking at some train the trainer as well as some other courses so you see an increase there um, other than that um, ATE you'll see a, a revenue reduction there um, due to COVID uh, less people out on the road um, that has seen a decrease as well as shrinking zones we're still in a holding pattern we haven't seen too much from the province on next moves for that program and what we can expect um, the bylaw, everything stays the same there. And the RCMP, it's up by about $5,000. And again, that's just wages, non-union wages. So and that's about it. Questions? Thank you, Fire Chief. I had one question, and it, maybe it's just the way it's labeled, but I assume under Fire Rescue Services, the 435000 or I guess it's 400000 for 2021. Is that the government transfer? Is that alluding to the grants that would cover the radios? And I guess overall, my question is, where where would we see that funding for that 435 for the radios for 2021? Uh, where would we see it on that uh, on this document? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and actually through the council, I, I'll have to get back to you on that one um, and have a look in my notes here. Okay, perfect. If we can park that. Yep. Okay. Unless, thank you, Fire Chief. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. I guess I just have a quick question about fines. Um, and, and what brings to mind is there was, uh, when speaking to the ATE, um, that there there's a, some there's a number of outstanding fines that have not been paid, and it's up to the contractor to go out after those fines. Is that correct? Sorry. Uh yeah, Ross, can you repeat the question? Yeah, no problem. Uh, so fines, I, I'm going to start with the ATE. Yep. Um, so if I understood from previous conversations, um, to collect unpaid fines, it's up to the contractor to go after those, correct? Or is it our responsibility? Well, <laughs> so if it's a, for the ATE side of things, um, there's a lot of variables that come into play um this year it's been covid it's been people challenging tickets um a backlog in the court system um and we're seeing uh, debt pushed out uh years mm. um and from what we've been told is is that um the 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 province when they collect their portion if it's paid um that we get a percentage and our contractor gets a percentage and then um, it goes to a company to go after through debt collections, and then it goes even further to Revenue Canada, further to that. So it could take three, five years to see some of that money, um, and then eventually we just write it off at our level. So in other words, there's, if I may, like when that happens, you write it off, like we will never see those dollars is what I'm hearing, potentially. Correct. Okay. And what about like other fines, like when bylaw, you know, with whether it's animal or anything else, how do, what is our, what's the percentage of fines that are collected and, and are unpaid, you know, in comparison and what is the process to get the, those monies? Is it through taxation or is it, or through their, uh, you know, taxes or how does that work? 
Uh, thank you, um, and through to council. Um, so if we write a municipal tag, so in other words, it's a bylaw offense, um, that is 100% our money back to the municipality. Mm -hmm. If it's written on a provincial ticket, we get, we get a per percentage of that and the province gets a percentage of that. Um, so how the process here um, for us is when that ticket's written, um, after 30 days, you, it would be no different than any other way how we do our accounts. Here, so you would get a letter saying you still owe money on this, um, and then we actually get the tickets back, and we send to collections. And certain tickets can be tax rolled, and others can't, depending on what the ticket has been written for, whether it's a land use or it's just a bylaw parking ticket. So we have the ability to do the tax roll as well as just go after through collections. Okay. But we get one hundred percent of the municipal profit. Okay. All right, I'll follow up on the other. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Haas. And, and I'd like to please uh, uh, disregard my question. I was, I, I guess, my my actual question because I, I would assume if, if it's funded through grants, it's not going to show through the operating in that nature. But um, the two hundred thousand dollars that's being transferred into reserves, could you speak uh, a little bit about um, mm. about that? Sir, Miss Mayor, through AT. Uh, no, just through your, uh, that would be page 144, right? Just the, yep. just at the top, the transfer, to, uh, it's under, yeah, AT, yeah. I, and maybe Ms. Fox can speak to that a little more. That's the transfer of funds that we, every year, have been transferring into the AT reserve. For, and, and just for clarity, that comes from the, the collection of fines? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No? Okay. Oh, Ms. Fox? Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Just for clarification on that transfer in ATE, following the policy for ATE, that transfer is divided up between the ATE reserve, uh, part goes to trails and part goes to safety. Okay. And to follow up, just to make sure that there's clarity on the original question, and I know um, I think you were good on that one, but just to make sure everybody is okay, the government transfers for operating or the Yellowhead County, um, I think there's $350,000 um, from Yellowhead County that's paid as a revenue uh, cost sharing agreement with protective services and then another $50,000 is a provincial grant. Just wanted to make sure you guys had that information. Perfect, thank you, Ms. Fox. It, yes, and that's that 400,000. Right, Shambo. perfect, okay. thank you. Counts, uh, Councillor Race. Thank you, Your Worship. Is, uh, are we still dedicating $50,000 to the safety reserve? Ms. Fox? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Michaels, through to council. Uh, I can't speak to the exact amount. It's based on a percentage of the total revenue from the previous year. Uh, typically, it's been about $20,000 from there to the ATE reserve, if I can remember off memory, or to the safety reserve, sorry. Thank you, Council Race. Council, anything further for protective services? Seeing none, thank you, Fire Chief and CEO Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michael. So we'll move into our CMP, our operating plan, also uh, presented by Chief Martins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through to Council. Um, yeah. The RCMP. Um, Budget, it's slight increase, um, of, I think roughly $5,000, and that's our, again, our union wage and non-wages um, in there. Um, the contract uh, stays the same, and it's uh, it's renewed. It's like a 32-year agreement that's reviewed every five years, so thank you. Thank you, Fire Chief. Council, any questions regarding the RCMP operating plan? And seeing none, thank you, Fire Chief. See you, Olson. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, moving along to page 148, we will be looking at community services uh, presented by Ms. Howarth. Thank you. Uh, so I'll take you actually to, um, sorry, what page did you refer, 136? Oh, actually, can, if I can start you off actually on 136 and 137. I just wanted to refer to the um, document that Ms. Ms. Fox referred to earlier. 
Um, so the community services area is made up of, um, it's split up into a few different areas. And so it's the parks, rec and culture, um, which includes the library because of the way that our financing system is set up. The FCSS, Family Community Support Services and the transit. So it's those three lines together that make up community services. Um, so we, we manage uh, approximately $2 million in revenue each year. And that's uh, primarily from fees and admissions and grants. The, and we manage about 5.6 million in expenses. So the net deficit for the overall department is about $3.6 million. Um, the increase uh, at a high level from 2020 to 2021 is uh, overall going up um, half, uh, about half a percent uh, of the total um, 4% increase, uh, this particular area is going up a half a percent. And so now I'll take you to page 148 and 149, where the first two service branches are combined. And there's a lot of moving parts in this budget, so I just want to take a few minutes to, to, um, to show you um, where some of the items are that we talked about last night. Um, so you won't mm -hmm. see exactly, for example, the $60,000 for the um, Beaver Boardwalk maintenance. Where did that go? You won't see an exactly six, $60,000 deficit because they're in several different codes. So the when we did the exercise, um, in overall in the department, um, some things are permanent increases or decreases and other ones are temporary. And uh, this service branch, you'll see lots of the temporary ones that were affected by the COVID impact and what we did to offset that. So the primary area is in the parks, trails and playgrounds. And over those um, three of the, of the four areas in there, uh, wages, um, you'll see uh, is reduced there and that's uh, that includes and this is where the numbers go up and down so the wages go up because of the uh, union increases you'll see 36,000 of the 60,000 reduction of beaver boardwalk in there because we we're reducing our internal wages uh, and work done there that's where the flower basket program wages for that goes down and that's also where you're going to see us go from six seasonal workers down to five um, so that's the overall what's happening in the wages one. Again, the contract and general services, that's where you're going to see the other 24 of the 60,000 for Beaver Boardwalk being reduced, um, where we would contract out those services. Again, flower baskets in there. And then into materials, goods, supplies, and utilities, that's where uh, you'll see the flower baskets in there. Uh, you'll also, there's some uh, change with the way we've been operating our spray park to the tune of about 10,000. That's split into those three codes as well because uh, with the way we're doing uh, flow through right now. So the, those, the parks, trails and playgrounds overall, that's where you're gonna see of $100,000 reduction for 2021 only. And then you'll see all of that come back in for 2022 and, and 2023. Uh, so that's a temporary uh, expense reduction and that does there is a service level reduction because of that. And if you go into the recreation facilities and programs, this is uh, where uh, the lost revenue is seen from the rec center. So the sale of goods and services, while our fees and charges do go up and that is a council approved, we do that in three year increments. Um, we put them up as much as the user groups and the taxpayers can endure and what the sort of the market rate is. And we have a policy for that. So we do generate about 11,000 increase in our goods and services there, but we are projecting um, a revenue reduction due to COVID um, of about $123,000 there. And that includes, you know, fewer, fewer events for rentals, sorry, rentals for events, things like that. And, but then in there also is the increase uh, to the Yellowhead cost sharing agreement of about 17,000. So another example of some things are going up, some things are going down. So the way we explain that approximate 120,000 change there um, is over a few different, different places. Uh, so there's a few other minor ones throughout the parks, rec, culture and library budget, but not too much worth mentioning. Um, so that, those two um, service branches there, the uh, reminder, and I don't know if anybody has mentioned it 
at this point, but in year 2023, um, our collective agreement right now only goes from 2020 to 2022. So the column 2023, while it's looking pretty good, um, it, it may not ultimately look that way if there's any if there's anything more than a 0% for wages in 2023. And so that's um, worth noting in this particular budget because we're very, um, our, our staffing resources are, is sort of how we get our work done and it's a big part of our budget. Uh, so overall in the parks, rec, culture and library, there's an actual $12,000 reduction between 2020 and 2021, which uh, for the taxation, which is pretty much rounded up or down to zero. And then I'll move on to uh, page 150 into the final service branch for community services. And that's our FCSS and our transportation. Uh, same kind of thing here, especially with the restructure that we had, there's a lot of moving numbers. Um, so if you're just looking for some, the change in from one number to another, there's a little bit more of a story there. And at the highest level, one of the biggest ones was in 2020, when the FCSS budget was reduced by uh, $75,000 from 2019 to 2020, um, because we didn't know where that was gonna come from at first, we put it into the FCSS portion of this budget where we actually ended up finding the reduction um, that was council approved, ended up being in the transportation section of this, of this budget. So that's why you're, you'll see that, that change um, because the money is going back into the FCSS so that it can come out of transportation. So in the core FCSS uh, areas, uh, I will just speak quickly. Um, there's a temporary revenue reduction and that's where, you're, where, you're, where you will see the rest of the revenue loss that we've, we've talked about a bit. Revenues um, lower around the Discovery Camp program is projected. We do have some increased wages uh, due to the funding loss for ParentLink and early childhood development. That was a significant loss for this, this, uh, this budget. That was a provincial grant and um, some savings that we've also found in the youth outreach services. So overall, um, there's a, a, a permanent uh, expense increase and a service level increase of about 100,000 in that area. I'll speak quickly as well to the FCSS grant. That area of the budget typically always zeroes out uh, because there are programs that are fully funded by the province or a grant or something like that. Um, so they're still at zero, but we have lost a service and a service level there, even though it didn't cost the taxpayers anything. And that's where you're going to see in 2020, those big budget numbers of 290, or sorry, 392. Uh, that's our parent link program and our early childhood <coughs> development. And now you'll see that we have a, a income of about $79,000. So that's an 80% decrease in funding. Uh, it, again, it doesn't affect the bottom line. It's not taxpayer dollars but that is a permanent service level loss um, of about 80% in, not in numbers, but in uh, service level. And I will jump to transit just quickly as well. The accessible transportation, of course, you know, we've, we've uh, had moved that to an external, through an external agreement in 2020. We are still hoping to reestablish that agreement. And uh, we have some revenue loss because when of course now that we don't run the free we weren't planning to run the freedom express there is a portion of that revenue that came specifically for freedom express which is about eleven thousand, but the wages are reduced by 80 and, and some other those other transfers so we still expect um to transfer that um and we're working on re-establishing that agreement for a local service delivery uh, so overall in terms of the high community services uh departments again um we're looking at about uh, oh, sorry, the FCSS is actually increasing by about 33,000 a year uh, in that area. So again, combined overall, this whole division is moving uh, up by $21,000 above the 3.6 million from last year. And it's primarily for um, wages, cost of living, some COVID impacts as well. Um, and without there, we're trying, we tried really hard not to significantly impact any of those programs and services um that didn't that weren't affected by the whole community which is where we ended up with things like flower basket programs that didn't target seniors or youth or anybody like that it was while it's uh, we definitely breaks our heart to have to propose doing that um we recognize it on a 
big scale. Um, those are just the kinds of things that we may be able to do without for one year and then reinstate it the year after quite easily without impacting our physical infrastructure and our staffing resources. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howarth. Uh, Council, I have Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to go to page 148 and talk about art and culture. And because of COVID, you know, people working in the production industry, you know, lighting, sound, you know, people are losing their jobs left and right. Under materials, um, goods, supplies, and utilities, we're seeing 21,000. What is that dedicated to, that 21,000? It's going to be a minute here. I'll pull up a separate spreadsheet. Um, 21,000. Materials, goods, okay. So I don't have my detailed breakdown in front of me. I may call on uh, my manager. Oh, maybe maybe Miss Box has it. If not, I do have a manager on um, waiting in the queue here. He can certainly speak to that off the top of his head. Thanks. Ms. Fox. Thank you. I do have access to the financial system that just quickly brought it up, working in the background here. So, um, Ms. Howarth, if you're comfortable, I can just give a little bit of a breakdown on that. You betcha. All right. So the $21,000 is broken down into a number of different categories, which involves a very small portion for food and beverage of $100, uh, office supplies of $1,200, resource program materials of about fifteen thousand uh, dollars a bit for materials and supplies uh, other fabricated materials of two thousand dollars and other supplies and materials of uh, two thousand five hundred dollars so it does um, break down between a number of different components but i would rely back on uh, mr van Claven for further detail if you'd like further detail of that so um you know, I don't know if this is getting too personal, but is our, um, you know, person who works in that role, is that person today functioning in that role or working in another department? No, fully functioning in that role. Um, while there may be fewer special events going on in the community and in our facilities, they are still using um, support. This is where all of our um, AV equipment and everything is gets managed out of as well. An example of that was the Remembrance Day ceremony. That was where lots of that was supported and we chimed in for that. So we're because we're doing our business in a very different way and have had to, um, the way we're renting out equipment and accessing things, they're still very busy. And he's also a huge support in the rec center. And again, while we're not hosting hockey tournaments every weekend, that position is uh, the lead and the coordinator for all of our guides and our programs and our communication out of that, out of that center. So uh, right now, he's still uh, very busy. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Race. Councillor Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, apologies if I, I missed this. On the library services, it shows a transfer from reserves of 135000 But I feel like on Tuesday, it was 60000 for each of the three years. So I'm just wondering where the additional seventy five is from. You can speak to that. So yes, the 60000 uh, for three years. So up. The 135, uh, 60 of that is for the COVID. The other 75 is for the one-time projects that you'll see come out on the top of the next page, um, the operational projects, one-time operational projects. And that's where, um, again, that's them. Uh, it, it neutralizes it out so that the library board can access uh, their own money to do their own projects. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, anything further? Seeing none, thank you, Ms. Howarth. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. We'll move now into infrastructure services uh, led by Mr. Woloshin. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, under the infrastructure services budget on page 151, uh, there's just a slight increase in common services, uh, basically due to CPI and wage increases and a little cost in uh, insurance. The road transportation budget is a little bit more trickier. Uh, we did a little bit of a redistribution of wages from the garbage collection on maintenance of bins, putting the PW2 back into roads. And we also 
uh, primary, there is a $428,000 hit on the transfer to fees for reserves. So that's the biggest one in the roads transportation. Uh, there's a slight increase of about $30,000 for streetlights on an annual basis. And I think uh, we did some juggling to try to reduce, and one of the big ones we reduced was the skim patching of $105,000 to try to make this budget as feasible as possible. Uh, storm is relatively the same. Moving to facilities on page 152, uh, there is a little reduction of uh, lost revenue due to COVID for rentals at the Hinton Center. Um, just be cautious that the main rental for this building for the government services come expires in February of 2021. So that will be renegotiated. Um, there's a slight increase in uh, wages uh, for uh, cleaning for COVID. So we have our part-time workers working more. So that's about a 20 to $25,000 estimate. We're guessing for next year. Under vehicle services, uh, pretty consistent. And if you want to talk about debts, I'll have to pass you on to my good partner over there called finance director if you have any questions on that. Moving on to utility services, a couple big ones for you. We have made a 4% increase for utility rates across the board for residential, for water, sewer, and garbage. Um, we have projected a $315,000 one-time project in water for the clarifier outage coming in this September of 2021. We have also inherited a couple of new costs for the water treatment plant moving forward with West Fraser, which was a report sent to council last year or last week, I believe. And so to break it down, it was like $120,000 for electrical, $25,000 for rent, and I think $175,000 for waste treatment. Those are the big ones. Uh, to cover that, Carla can go and explain a little bit more, but I believe it's going to be transfer to reserves, a one-time transfer to reserves this year, and then the 4% increase in wages over year two and three will cover it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Woloshin. Uh Councillor Haas. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and my apologies, I, I probably should have answered or asked this yesterday in, in the presentations. It's just around running for me, but I'm curious. I want to just ask a little bit about the reduction in road skimming. And, and just to be clear, that's when the, the contractor comes out and they spray different areas of the road with the, the tar uh, mixed with the gravel. Um, it, what's the risk, I guess, because this is done every year, is there any risk to reducing that currently? Um, you know, to the our roads, of course, or is this because we are some surfaces being resurfaced, like Switzer Drive and things like that? Is that the, re the reason for the reduction? Or uh... we had to find some cuts. Mm -hmm. So uh, this one here we felt was the easiest one to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Switzer Drive gets redone. We don't have to spend fifty, sixty thousand, or eighty thousand on that road alone. Mm -hmm. uh, over the years, we were fortunate to increase our. Um, well, maybe not fortunate, but increasing the amount of money we put in for spray patching and skim patching. There are two different uh, things. One is that oh. they fill a crack sealant throughout town. Mm -hmm. That is still going to be in place because that <clears throat> maintains your roads. Whereas the skim patching, you won't see as much as in a neighborhood this year. That's going to be the big reduction. But again, we wouldn't be doing anything on Switzer Drive. So that's their easiest target to reduce this year. If I may, so sorry, so the skim patching, that's, you said, in the residential? Well, a lot or? of the lesser main arteries, roads, uh, the College Road, for example, we can go in there and we do little small little chunks and we did, okay. throughout the town, we did lots. We actually did an overlay on Greg Avenue from one end to the other as a project. It's quite similar to skim patching, except it was continuous all the way across. There's no real construction, it's just lay the pavement down, add about 20 mils to 30 mils and just fill it on and fills all the holes nice. And mm -hmm. if there's any base work in that, then it comes out of capital and then we have to dig out the ground. Like I said, on College Road last year, we had a couple, I uh, call them boils, where the uh, ground broke and, from the freeze thaw and it got water in it. 
So we had to dig those out. So those were under capital because it's bigger cost. But uh, we jump around doing a lot of repairs everywhere throughout town. Uh, so the skim patching next year will be won't be looked at anywhere on any of the main roads. It'd be more, I think, on Collins Road. We got a big chunk on uh, the end of Greg Avenue where the uh, Petro Canada went in. We got to finish that off. That was a really holy one. We hoped to get it this year, but didn't make it. And then we got uh, St. Regis going up there is bad. We got Brewster going up. We got lots of streets to do, but yeah, we cut out 105 and we're confident that it won't impact us. And then the year after it goes back to normal. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Councillor Race. Thank you, sir. So um, I want to go back to page 74 and it talks about the, um, <coughs> the um, utilities, the water, the wastewater and the waste services. I'm almost there. That's okay. I am there. So would you be able to break down, you know, water services, wastewater and waste services? So when we say to people, you know what, we could be looking at a increase of $17 a year and they go, well, where's that money going? You know, like for the past 10 years, we're seeing increases. So can you break that down where it goes? Okay, so primary this year, in the next three years, we've got an increase in the uh, water treatment plant expenses, uh, primary due to uh, there's a service agreement on the charges that the mill charges for our treated wa our processed water, not the treated water, the processed water. So in there, uh, we have to cover those costs because they charge us an X amount. And then inside that service agreement, they are also providing all the power for the water treatment plant and they install the meter, but they never came back and said, we are going to charge you the power that's not been charged. They didn't know what it was. So they didn't charge us in the first year. So now they come forward and give us the cost. I believe it's $120,000. So we have to pass that on as part of our operation expense for the power loan, uh, basically quote me on it, but 120,000 is about 4%. Uh, I'm guessing, I don't know for sure. The uh, wastewater, same thing. We have a $175,000 increase in wastewater for, that is the treatment of the sewage that goes back to the mill. They have never charged us before. They've now come forward. It was in the umbrella agreement, I believe, that they would identify to come up with an agreement what those service fees will be. And that is to, be negotiated on a future cost, but right now it'll be this year and it'll go up in the year after. And the last one is under garbage, uh, garbage collection or waste modernization. Uh, we have uh, increased uh, landfill costs. I believe it's going up $5 a tone in 2021. So just alone on that number, I think that you look at on 10,000, it's about $50,000 increase just on that one. We have a contract at the landfill that's increased uh, $100,000 a year, I believe, $125,000 increase. So that is divided, basically the town of Hinton is responsible for almost 50% of that. So we have to increase our fees to match that. I hope that answers your question. It did, yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Race, and my apologies. Uh, can I entertain a motion to extend? Councillor Nelson. I'd like to move that we extend. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Uh, Council, we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor? As passed unanimously. Again, my apologies. And with that, CEO Olson. Uh, thank you. Were there any further questions for Mr. Woloshin on I, this? I have no one in queue. Council, thank anything further? Nothing. Thank you. So uh, before opening it up uh, to the the final area uh, for direction and decision uh, from council, discussion from council. Um, I will just ask uh, Ms. Fox, uh, she's just going to summarize. Uh, we'll take a look at what's on the board as well, um, what we're bringing back to council um, uh, to, to clarify through the operating. Um, so I'll turn it over to her and then we will move into uh, council's uh, discussion and deliberation. Thank you, CAO Olson. Ms. Fox. 
Thank you, Chair, through to Council. So I just want to touch on a couple items that were in the parking lot to make sure that they're addressed. Uh, I actually added parking lot items to the operating budget um, for ease of not flipping back and forth. So uh, one of the items was in regards to the cost for the election and where you would see those within the budget package. And I want to thank Councillor Race because she actually has pointed out a schedule I have not included. So uh, every year uh, for the last three years, there has been no costs in that budget. So there wasn't required. So when I carried forward um, and moved legislative services into the strategic, sur sur sorry, the corporate services umbrella, I did not move those costs with it. And all that means is that right now there's $14,000 worth of expenses that are paid for out of the elections reserve fund. And when I bring forward the, the final budget document to you, you will see a separate section that states that. It's already in the financial statements. The revenue offsets the expense of $14,000 and it's in there, but I don't have it in a separate statement for you to see. So I apologize and thank you for pointing that out. Thank you, Ms. Fox. So I believe that the only other two items on the parking lot right now when I move into uh, direction and decisions from council, we'll start with capital, then we'll move into operating. So as long as you're comfortable moving away from anything on this list, or if you have any other items before we move into those final summaries and decision making uh, that you wanna discuss, now would be the time. Council, anything? Oh, Council Race. Sorry, uh, Mr. Mayor. When would I bring up the flower baskets? It just breaks my heart. Every time this dear lady mentions flower baskets, it breaks my heart. I would like to see that 23000 put back in our budget and funded totally from grants. If there is, you know, beautification grants out there to assist us in getting those flowers. So I guess I'm looking at you, CAO, to help me out on this um, so uh, very shortly i would say um there was one area that we did miss and uh through uh, miss fox's summary um and that is the most funding too that we need to touch on just uh to speak to the slides that uh that we didn't get to um so i suppose that would come forward then through um discussion and deliberations for okay. operating okay thank you Ms. Fox? If it helps, I can kind of explain the process that we'll go through. Um, and the most slides come at the very end. So uh, I think it's important for council to understand and be able to comment on each of the areas as far as capital is concerned by department. Uh, and then I will go through the operating plan by department and ask if there's any particular motions um, or changes council would like to see in that area and you can bring up your motion in that area um, and we will do it that way. Um, another alternative to that is to go into the conversation with the most funding. My fear is if we do that prior to council's direction into the service areas, it gets complicated and we're going to complicate the process by bringing in, uh, trying to find solutions. Uh, I'd rather see what changes council would like to make within each of the areas and see where we come out to at the end. I do have an ongoing calculator uh, running as well to show how the decisions you're making are affecting the $518,000 increase to the operating. So I can kind of give you a real time uh, understanding of the decisions that you're making. So at each point in the decision, if you'd like me to bring that up on screen or explain it to you on paper, uh, I'd like to see us just take the time to spend through each of those decisions so that we're making sure you get what you want. Uh, thanks for that, Ms. Fox. So uh, just to clarify, that will bring us to the directions and decisions at this moment? 
Yeah, I'd say the final uh, thing I'd like to say is on the screen right now and is just to remind you where we've ended up. Right. So the $518,000 equates to, um, oh, sorry, $518,492 equates to what right now we're proposing the operating budget increase be. The utilities user fee rate increase, as Mr. Reloshin just went through with you, um, are the 4% increases in water and wastewater. And then for waste services, 4% increase and 5% increase, uh, equating to the dollar amount shown on the right. And that's the, the most there. So this schedule here, which is one, page 137, and I, kind of give you a reminder uh, note when I went over this is this is what I would be coming back to mm -hmm. to kind of walk through with you for decision making um, but just pre to this I would like to hop back I have to stop sharing this screen and jump to the capital plan and just touch on that one so any requests for decision that you want to make um, we can bring them forward at that time okay so what I'd like to do, since we have two major sections left, we have a capital discussion for directions and an operational. I'll take a five minute break. We'll come back, we'll do capital, and then I'll look to do another five minute recess after to finish operations and sort of then conclude after that. So we'll reconvene in five minutes. Hello everyone, I'd like to reconvene at 153 and that brings us to our uh, section for directions and decisions and it seems that we're starting with Capital Council. Any, uh, any questions, thoughts to start off? Councillor Nelson. I'd like to make a motion that the Gerard Redmond Community Catholic School Park come to Council for decision. And if I could speak to it, if, if, if we're not able to, that's fine. Uh, I really wasn't concerned about the demolition part of it, but I want to make sure what's going back up uh, up there is what the community is looking for. And I think uh, ensuring there's the opportunity for public to see it before it is constructed would be beneficial uh, for council and the community. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Nelson. Council, we have a direction on the floor. If I can just go to uh, CEO Olson, if there's any comments on the staging part, because that was my concern, the fact that we've already started, what kind of information could we get from administration uh, pertaining to an RFD uh, or any uh, input from council on what will actually be put up? Um, I'm sorry, I just wasn't prepared to have that document up from yesterday. If you give me a minute to pull that up, um, I believe we, we only have the retaining wall and the the uh, fall protection floor to put in everything else is already done so it's the playground's done we just haven't finished the retaining wall and the fall protection product but let me double check that i do have that as the update on the 2020 projects i don't know carl if you have that more handy than i do right now and if i can just add i guess one part is just to uh, I'm sensing all the tenders are out already for that, and, and that would be a big thing for me. If the tenders are already out and selected, and we know, then perhaps I would support, I guess, getting a report to what it looks like. Uh, but clarity on that would kind of dictate. Uh, if I can invite um, Mr. Von Clavern to speak, he knows exactly what we've done for that project and what's been completed already. If he can just confirm what I said yesterday. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through the council. So the information, that's correct. Uh, so the replacement of the play structure, uh, which was the biggest uh, item, of course, in this uh, playground features were unsafe, um, has been uh, demolished, taken out. New play structure is being uh, has been installed. The flooring underneath uh, still has to be done. So that's a rubber pour in place flooring has to wait till the spring uh, as well as the concrete work that has to be done on the retaining wall and the swale to uh, make sure that the water uh, retention of that uh, area is intact. So basically the whole uh, playground, if you take the whole park in consideration, there's not a lot of, uh, let's say, big uh, shocking things that are different. It's the huge play feature that's been uh, 
was up for replacement. The half, almost you could say half of the other side of the playground stays intact as is and would be part of a uh, ongoing project later on that's slated in the capital projects uh, further down the line. Uh, thank you for that, Mr. Van Claveren. Uh, ju but just to clarify, so all the tenders and everything has already been submitted and approved and accepted? That's uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, and back to council. Yes, that's correct. It's already in place, and we are just finalizing this project. Okay, thank you for that clarity, uh, Mr. Van Claveren. Uh, I, uh, Councillor Nelson. <clears throat> Um, for projects like this, and I know we don't have a policy about it, but do we, is this something that we would get a, a kind of final report to, you know, summing up what it costs, what it looks like? Uh, I know that's something we haven't really done with very many projects, um, and I think it would be a great thing to get in the habit of, of doing, but um, would it be appropriate to change it from a request for decision for a report? Wilson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels, to Councillor Nelson. Um, if if Council is looking for information on kind of the, the finalization of the project and um, an overview, I guess, of how things went, uh, an information report could be um, pulled together. Just looking at uh, what kind of information would be required within that report and, and the, the purpose, I guess, uh, if this is something that we're going to do into the future as well. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, looking through previous budgets and, um, you know, we, we aren't doing our quarterly reporting the same as we were before. So a lot of projects, I've seen many come in under budget and it'd be great to have a little summary. Hey, we finished this project, whether it's exciting like a playground or exciting like skim patching, having a quick summary at the completion of a project that says, yeah, we came in on budget, on time, under budget late you know whatever it is i, I think it would be really great um and and it may be an opportunity to help council celebrate the work that the community is doing in a lot of cases but right now something just gets finished and kind of forgotten about and we hope it was was all good so i i, I don't know maybe i think for this one i might just withdraw it if all the tenders are are done i don't really know what that reporting looks like but i think a conversation to have for later is is how we want um the final project reporting once a, a, a project or initiative is complete. Um, thank you. So if, yeah, if nobody has any objection, I'll withdraw that one. Council, any objections? Seeing none, motion will be withdrawn. Thank you, Council Nelson, for that. Uh, Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor, through to Council. Just to clarify on that, so I want to make sure that we deliver on this appropriately in the future. Um, this is a snippet from one of the capital plan um, after August that we brought to council in our financial statement update. On those, it does place each project on there with the amounts that are budgeted, the actual dollars that get spent, and a status update uh, to let council know where the projects sit, if they're completed, if they're postponed, if you're waiting for them. And this is something that's always um, accompanied the financial statements that are brought to council. Uh, I just wanna make sure that if this, if you're looking for something more than this in the future, that uh, that is direction that we would need from council. Uh, it just, we have a lot of projects, so bringing individual reports might be cumbersome. Okay, thank you, Ms. Fox. Of uh, Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And maybe it's and and I agree with Councillor Nelson. I think we need to celebrate our successes. And and I think even if it's uh, not necessarily, and I'm not putting words in Councillor Nelson's, but suggesting that um, you know in our CEO updates, if a project has been completed. Um, even having that uh, brought to uh, regular or standing to celebrate it, um, I think is goes a long ways with the community. It goes a long ways with us as council, because uh, sometimes we get bogged down with all the things that are going on, but we forget to celebrate those things. And I think this is a great opportunity, and I thank him for bringing that up. Um, I do, though, uh, uh, also, if I may, with the motion, I know it's with, withdrawn, but. Um, this would have, I, I guess, and in, in hindsight again, but when projects are like this come up, um, you know, I know it might look like what it looked like before, but it might have been an opportunity to kind of look at 
Um, what else could we add to this potentially? Um, you know, uh, we've talked a lot about and heard a lot about, say, for example, outside exercise uh, places, and we've seen some, you know, uh, you know, with Maxwell Lake and, and and things of that nature, and bring those in. But this could have been an opportunity, maybe, to look at what other um, equipment or other things might the community want in a in this uh, things or in this park, for example. That's not just for the kids, but it also is for the community at large. So I guess just it's just a philosophical moving forward as if we can maybe somehow incorporate some of the input uh you know that uh maybe we as council have brought back from say a a u m a uh trade shows and things like that or community members have some ideas it might be uh something to think about in the future as well and that could be that conversation with requests for decisions on them so thank you thank you councillor Hollis. councillor McGoon. uh thank you your worship um uh, i'd just like to put forward a direction if that's possible please like to direct administration to bring the beaver boardwalk upgrades to a future standing committee meeting for discussion prior to beginning work. Mr. Mayor, if I could speak to this, please. Uh, primarily, uh, in my opinion, this this would be a council-led discussion. Uh, I know we have the Bebo doing uh, good work right now with this particular topic, but just as an individual councillor, I think there's a, a real natural opportunity here to transition away from the council-led discussions uh, that have been happening uh, into getting more of our community involved, which is really something that we had a lot of demand for in the previous years. And I think hoping that we sort of the regulatory issues and we've got this funding coming again, this for me as a counselor individually, this is a real natural opportunity to make that transition um, and make people in our community feel like they have a say in where this funding is going. I think in a lot of ways, it's down that same avenue as what Councillor Nelson was trying to achieve just recently with the Gerard Redmond discussion, you know, giving people in our community ownership over projects and uh, you know, sort of giving them a voice. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGoon. Council, we have a motion on the floor. And I have Councillor Nelson. Just for your clarification, Councillor McGoon, uh, is it the $300,000 on page 104 of 158? Sir, I, to be fair, I think, yes, that is, that is absolutely the line item that it references. But I think there's a lot of work around related issues that are going on regulatory but yes, in the budget that would reference page 104 under park and trail upgrades before that sort of goes through that we would have those discussions. And I believe that was funded through the MSP grant. Uh, at least that was the information that we were given so far. So, yeah, Could I follow up actually maybe another clarification? As far as the timeline goes, I, I have no idea when uh, the, the idea of working on this is, but to me, if this direction also encompasses potentially wrapping up the Bureau Boardwalk Committee and, and turning it over to a different organization or or, or some different way of looking at it. Um, I think just a timeline on, on when this standing committee meeting would happen, even if it comes back at a really high level in order to make sure that the committee knows, kind of has the marching orders to, to know what council's looking for. Um, you know, as long as I get that clarification, I would certainly speak in favor of this, thank you. Point of clarification then, Mr. Mayor, that would certainly be my intention is that it's sooner rather than later. And if any particular councillors had any um, uh, particular dates that are, you know, coming up in the recent future, I'd be happy to accept that as a friendly amendment. Thank you, Councillor Nelsons and Magoon. Uh, Councillor Ostashik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure I'd support this motion at this time. I think this maybe a little premature considering the work that the Bebo committee is doing and the fact that there could be a recommendation to council coming in the not too distant future. Uh, this is maybe duplicating collection of input and, and the potential future for how the Beaver boardwalk is going to be managed. I'm not, well, actually I am sure I won't support this at this time. I think it's duplicating, duplicating some of the things that are already kind of in the works and, 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 uh, 
soon to be coming forward, so I won't be supporting this motion in particular, though I do understand and support the uh, the premise of it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostashik. Councillor Magoon. Um, I guess just to follow up on that, looking for information, at what point, and please any member of the Bebo, uh, feel free to fill me in, at what point would we be looking then to transition into including members of our community? Council, any, Councillor Ostashik. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this point, it's in preliminary discussion. There is no timeline, and there isn't even there isn't even the the full decision that that's going to be the recommendation that's brought from the Bebo Committee to Council. But there is going to be recommendations coming in the not too distant future, and I think it's premature to move ahead with independent consultation before a recommendation from the Bebo Committee comes to Council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostashik. Uh, I'll speak to this uh, in hearing. I think I think there's two approaches to this. Uh, I'll be in support of this. It, I do believe it is uh, potentially a duplication, but to me, there's no harm in uh, putting forward a direction publicly to say that no work will begin. The intent is, and, and I agree with Councillor Stashik. I think like uh, this will be coming to council, but this just assures it under unless unless the committee pivots or, or anything i like the idea that this this says that this three hundred thousand dollar will not be spent at all uh, prior to uh to that ceo olson uh thank you mayor michaels so just some some clarification uh for administration's sake um this work is funded by a grant and the money has to be expended by the end of the year so um, if this is coming to council for is for discussion or for decision uh, impacts the kind of report that we'd be bringing forward, but also um, what we're able to do and when as far as uh, spending that $300,000. Um, the, the information, uh, some of the information on the plans to utilize that $300,000 uh, were discussed at the Bebo committee meeting and, and have been prepared. Um, and again, looking forward through uh, a final report from the Bebo committee, some of that information likely make up part of that report. But I just was seeking some clarification on what type of report and whether, um, I, yeah, I guess I'd leave it at that, what type of report is required. Thank you, CEO Olson. Before I go to Councillor Magoon, uh, you had mentioned that it has to be done by the end of year 2021. I wanted to clarify, correct? Like the funds have to be that's right. Okay, okay. thank you yeah. very much. Councillor Magoon? Yeah, that clarifies it. Thank okay. you. Okay, Councillor Nelson. Yeah, I think actually after hearing everybody speak, I support this even more. Um, there's nothing saying that um, this uh, this coming back to standing couldn't be in conjunction with the report back from the committee. Um, I, I share some concerns too in that the committee operates in a different way as council does. Uh, and we've definitely had some missteps along the way with um, Beaver Boardwalk. And to me, the quicker we can uh, have those ideas out into the public and get some sunshine on them, the better, and hopefully get community buy-in before we start the work. Um, the lack of community buy-in has has led to a lot of the approvals and legislate, like it, it, that's been pretty much the entire cause of the, the pain and suffering that we've experienced with the um, boardwalk and having $300,000 to do some work is is awesome. And it's a really good way to, to you know, move, make some good progress in the boardwalk without a huge amount of taxpayer expense. And to me, we, we really need public buy-in uh, and they need to believe in it. And to me, council is the way we accomplish that, not through a committee that, although we meet publicly it's not nearly as publicly accessible as um as what a council meeting or a standing committee meeting would be thank you thank you councillor nelson councillor magoon thank you your worship yeah again i i don't want to duplicate or sort of negate the work that the bebo committee's been doing up until this point just to speak to i think what some of the concerns might be i just i'd like to have the discussion as the mayor had indicated uh prior to moving forward on that so at the very least you know myself as a councillor and our public who maybe don't bring themselves up to date with what the Bebo committee is talking about, have a have a more public perception of what's going on and how that's going to transparently be achieved. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Magoon. Council, we have a direction on the floor. Any further debate? Uh, CEO Olson. 
Uh, apologies, apologies. I, I, I'm just not sure that my question was answered. Is this an information report or is council looking to make decisions on how that grant money is spend it, spent, spend it, spent? Uh, thank you. Um, I'll defer to Council Magoon. I think uh, CEO Olson, just to speak to your question, I, for myself, it's a, it's a question of process and transparency. Um, I know, and forgive me if I'm indirectly answering the question or not, I know that from the public's perspective, and I can only speak for myself as a counselor, if we move forward on work in that area without engaging in public, some form of public engagement, um, there's going to be a lot of upset stakeholders. And I know we've got members of council who are doing good work on the BBO committee, but I'm not as up to date as they are on it. And I don't think there's members of our community who are aware of what's going on uh, as well as they should. And again, that's no slight on anyone or the committee work that's been going on. I just think that's a critical key that we need to make sure is taken care of before we move ahead with anything. And so I'm just looking to make sure that we have a public discussion before we move forward. And, and if that's all it is, is a public discussion, great, I'm happy with that as long as I feel like there's some public engagement, that's, that's it. And so I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah. See you, Olson. So an in information report in order to create some dialogue with council and the community on the work that's planned for 2021. Mr. Mayor, if, if I may, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any updates on, you know, so what the high level plans would be, I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, CEO Olson, Councillor Magoon, Councillor Nelson. I, I just had a procedural question uh, in regards to it. So. This means a report has to come back, but ultimately council isn't going to approve anything. So as, as if council gets information, we would then, it would then be up to us to reverse something if we didn't like it versus approve it if we did like it. I'm just, I'm just curious with the information item versus a request for decision, um, why we would choose an information item over a request for decision. Um, and, and that was really the basis of my question. What is the intent of the report? Is it to share information or is it for council to make decisions on the, the work plan that's provided? That work plan was the basis of the application for funding and the money has to be spent, all 300,000 of it, by the end of 2021. So just a reminder. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, so if I could, I actually think it makes more sense for it to be a, a decision of council. And the reason for that is if it comes to council or standing and we don't like it, then we're adding more time and more steps. Um, whereas if it comes for decision, I would suggest that uh, an application that's gone in and we've received $300,000 of funding. Um, and as a BBO committee member, I have a, a little bit better idea what it encompasses. I, I have a feeling that it's going to be a pretty resounding support from council. And then administration gets that vote and that support and, and we say yes, so that we don't end up going down the same path of other things in that area where it's like, well, it was just part of a budget. And, you know, I, I think it's important that administration has a full council buy-in for uh, what can be a transformative project for that area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Um, I'm, I'm of the mindset in hearing this, and I may be wrong. I'd prefer it to be an information report for the reason that there's going to be a transition period potentially so in order to plan out the entire three thousand dollars are we going to make that simply with council or are we going to time it with uh, other decisions from the beaver boardwalk committee that's the only part where i struggle a bit do we start within the first step just having that information report we see kind of this is where I'm struggling a little bit, but I'll, I'll defer to Councillor Magoon again and see his thoughts. Yeah, Your Worship, I think, honestly, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I mean, we're looking at a bigger concept. For myself, I'm actually confident at this point to even withdraw it. So, I mean, my concerns have been thrown out there. I'm going to give my fellow councillors a little bit of time to think about what their positions are. And maybe in talking with you, we can, you know, if need make if need be, make it part of a future uh you know, as part of our uh, agenda setting. Uh, it does remain a concern for me though, in terms of the, uh, the public engagement process. But again, it's just myself as an individual counselor, I'm not part of the BBO committee. I'm not plugged into that. I, and I just would like it to be a little bit more public at this point. So uh, if, if, if it's not opposed by anybody on council, the direction that's on the floor, 
I'd like to withdraw. Council, any objections? I have Councillor Nelson. I, I actually will object. Um, and, and the reason is when the committee was started, the committee had no money, maybe 60 grand if it was, um, if, if all went according to plan. We, we now, as a town, have $300,000, and the, the scope of the committee has totally changed. It, mm -hmm. it was to determine the sustainability, the governance, um, some initial things on how you spend $300,000 on a couple little sections to keep open. Now that we're talking about $300,000, that is completely beyond the original scope of that committee. And for me, as a committee member, I would love to see what council as a whole thought about the direction that we're going. That, like, I, I just think it's, the evolution of the committee has has changed a lot. We still haven't necessarily accomplished some of the original things and we've extended it. Uh, I, I don't know until when, I can't remember if we did it indefinitely or, um, so again, we, we delayed, we extended it because of the lack of permits, but in that time, we've also got extra money. And to me, it's this, we're at a point now where it should be council dis decisions, not committee decisions, especially with the impact of $300,000 and the impact on one of the biggest treasures for the community. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Nelson. Um, we do have an objection, so this will now come to vote for council um, to direct administration to bring the Beaver Boardwalk upgrades to a future standing committee meeting to, for discussion prior to bringing a uh, beginning work. We're going to vote on removing this uh, with a withdrawal. Council, Councillor Magoon. Um, sorry, I'm just point of clarification before I speak on what I was looking to. Uh, we are voting on the motion to withdraw right now. Correct. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Council, if there's no further debate, there is a motion to withdraw. All those in favor, opposed, that was defeated. Um, opposed. Opposed. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the motion stands on the floor. Councillor Magoon. Again, Mr. Mayor, I, I made the original motion and I'm, I'm happy to vote on it. However, again, I am amenable at this point if we'd rather make it a uh, request for decision, I'm supportive of that. Again, if this is an opportunity to get it out in front of the public, I think that would be good. I agree with a lot of the points Councillor Nelson brought up and the form it takes, I'm you know, certainly flexible with. Thank you, Councillor Magoon. Council, we have a motion on the floor. At this time, this would come back as an information report uh, at a standing committee meeting. Anything further? Seeing none, I'll call to question the direct administration to bring the Beaver Boardwalk upgrades to a future standing committee meeting for discussion prior to beginning work. All those in favor? Opposed? That was carried 5-2. Okay, Council. Councillor Nelson. I'd like to make a motion that the Maxwell Lake Bridge rehabilitation come to Council for a request for decision. I, I don't think I need to speak too much. I, I think we need to make sure what we're spending um, what is what is now three hundred and twenty thousand dollars, which in last year's budget was just under forty thousand dollars. I think it's really important we uh, give this the attention it deserves. And just for reference, the bridge is in generally outside of the scope of the committee. Um, so just want to make sure that uh, we don't start on work with this without uh, making a decision on. It. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any debate? Councillor Waugh. I have just a question for administration. Are the work permits for for this project uh, already into the AUP? Uh, thank you, Mayor Michael Studio, Councillor Wah. Uh, I, I don't believe they've been submitted. Um, the, it is the intention to, to work on the AEP um, components uh, through a similar process as we took for the Beaver Boardwalk. Uh, we've been assured by AEP that it'll be a speedy process. With that answer in mind, I'll be 
speaking in favor of this, just so council can get, eye, get an eye on it and get an idea of what might be planned. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wah. Council, uh, Councillor Stashik. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Yeah, I'll be speaking in favor of this too. I think it's important that we get some information on what's being proposed for the rehabilitation at uh, Maxwell Lake Bridge. So we can be assured and the community can be assured that it's meeting the needs of the, the town of Hinton and the access concerns that have been addressed before, but also meeting the, uh, the needs and wants of the citizens too. This is a big, uh, you know, big part of uh, people's uh, recreational lives and they're pretty invested emotionally in that. And I want to make sure that uh, everybody's uh, got a good idea of what's uh, being proposed to put in there before decisions made on it. Thank you. I'm supporting. Thank you, Councillor Stashik. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any further debate? Seeing none, I'll call to question that the Maxwell Lake Bridge rehabilitation comes to Council for a decision. All those in favor? That it's passed unanimously. Councillor Hawes. Uh, I'd like to also make a motion uh, that the Scout Hall decommissioning come to Council for a decision. And if I may, uh, it's not that I'm in, uh, uh, you know, I just need more information. I'm not uh, against this, uh, but I think we need to have some uh, understanding of the cost to it, the reasons for the cost, and maybe potentially other options, uh, you know, to to uh, minimize some of those costs as well. So I'd like to see uh, that come to council and understand it better. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Councillor Haas uh, has put a motion on the floor, Council. Any debate or questions? Councillor Stashik. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. It's not a question or a matter for debate. It's more just a clarification or request of council. Just again, when they're making motions for changes or decisions on these, if they could refer to where it's at, it's a big document and it's, 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 you're not, we're not changing dollar values, but still it's, it's important to be able to look at it and be able to see what the dollar values are um, that we're that we're making a decision on, and if there's any potential outside factors that that weigh into it, other than uh, you know just uh, ca calling it for decision rather than changing the dollar amount. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stasha. Councillor Haas. Yeah, if I may, I, I apologize, and I guess we've kind of gone a little bit away where we were going to go through each uh, topic, and I, it's my apology. So on page 107 of 158 of our pa package under infrastructure services, um, there is a uh, line item, Scout Hall decommissioning, uh, total estimated cost of $95,000, $50,000 in 2021, and $45,000 in 2022. Uh, so I'm just requesting that we have a better understanding of that project and and a decision made by council before moving forward with it. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stashik. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Councillor Stashik. Thank you again, Mayor Michaels. I did have a question for administration and this came up earlier. Um, I believe there was a reference made that the decommissioning of the scout hall was a direction of council already. And I'm not sure if there's anybody in administration that can speak to that. Administration. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. I, I cannot, um, looking at Mr. Wolosh and I'm not sure that he can either. I, I don't recall if this came before as a, a decision for council um, or whether it was just included as part of the 2020 budget discussion. We can confirm uh, though um, and, and um, come back to that after. I mean, uh, that, that's okay. I just, I, it, it was referred as, as the, it was a direction of council and I wasn't sure if it was an actual direction of council or if it was directed as part of uh, last year's budget approval or, or how that was directed, but it, it, it's okay. It doesn't really matter that much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stashik. Councillor Haas. Yeah, I was just going to comment from my understanding real quick, but I thought uh, Eva mentioned that it was pushed forward, but never, it was on the budget, but it didn't go forward on the budget. So that was my understanding, but uh, if it's not uh, necessarily that important, that, uh, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any further debate? Seeing none, I'll call to question that the scout hall decommissioning come to council for a decision all those in favor 
It's passed unanimously. Councilor Magoon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion on uh, referencing page 107 of 158, same page we were just on, uh, several lines above. I'd like to make the motion that the greenhouse training building If I could just see the wording of the previous one, uh, Wendy, please. Uh, yeah, come to council for a decision, please. Thank you. Sia Olson. Uh, just some clarification, the greenhouse training building uh, capital amounts, or um, if we could just have a little bit more. Sure, absolutely, uh, capital amounts. For works. 2022 and 2023. For 2022 and 2023, absolutely. Thank you for that clarification and Councilor Magoon. Uh, yeah, Your Worship, I think the same as everybody else. I think it warrants further discussion, especially uh, when we're looking to make sure that we are funding a five-year capital budget, having an understanding for uh, not just this year coming up, but uh, how that impacts our budgeting for the upcoming years as well is very important. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Magoon. I have myself, I strongly support this. And we just had an example with the uh, Scout Hall, the fact that if we approve this, things can start going in motion in other directions and in next year could, you know, uh, come up. The fact that we had the scout hall in 2020 and now it looks uh, forward to a decommissioning. These are the slippery slopes of having a budget and not having these uh, items in front of council to discuss. Perhaps there's a will to keep it there and perhaps there's not, but uh, I'll strongly be in uh, favor of this. Thank you, Councillor Magoon. Councillor Haas. Thank you. And I too am in support of this. And I want to just also clarify that, I mean, that, that's it. It's transparency to our community members too to understand what these projects mean. Um, you know, that they're just not line items, but having some understanding for them. So that when public does come to us and ask that question, we're informed on them. So I think that's the biggest. So I, I want to, you know, uh, say that to administration, this is not because we, I, I personally, I uh, don't want to see the project move forward. I just need to know more information of why the project is to move forward uh, is all that I ask and that we as a council uh, decide on that, whether or not. So I, I will strongly support this as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Because this item doesn't begin until 2022, I believe I'd be more comfortable with the date for when this comes to council. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's an appetite for Council Magoon to put even at before the end of the third quarter of 2021. Uh, but since uh, it doesn't have to come back to us for a decision in 2021, uh, I'd be comfortable with the date. Councilor Magoon? Uh, yeah, Your Worship, I, I absolutely understand your thinking on this, but, and I think it was you really that pointed this out to me to be completely transparent. Because we are looking to fund this five-year capital budget, whether or not it stays on there is probably a question we probably want to answer sooner rather than later. Um, because again, then it, it impacts things like transfers to and from reserves, you know, ongoing capital planning. Again, I just, if we could, if we could deal with this, I think ideally um, as part of the budget process, um, you know, by the time we're looking to pass other parts of the budget with our other requests for decisions, um, giving it that same sort of level of importance, I, I would appreciate that because it may impact how I approach the budget as a whole. Uh, thank you, Councillor Magoon. So no date is... Okay, uh, I'll be speaking against this if there's no date, or um, if I can relinquish my chair duties to the chair next to me. If you and if you want to vote in, uh, please just indicate physically because we can't change seats due to, to COVID. I'd like to make an amendment. Bef before the third quarter of 2021. And if I can speak to it, Mr. Chair, please. I, I think seeing this uh, uh, seeing this request for decision and understanding it, uh, and dealing with it so it's not potentially or on the 2022 budget is important for us. I wouldn't want it to be part of the same process for the year later. Uh, I think there's an opportunity to uh, either go totally into this item or not. So for me to support this, I'd, I'd want to deal with it um, uh, much before the 2022 budget. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else that wishes to speak? 
Seeing none then, we will call this to question. Uh, the amendment uh, that uh, the cap, the greenhouse training building capital amounts for 2022 and 2023 come to council for a decision before the third quarter of 2020. Oh, just the amendment. No, yeah. sorry, just the amendment. Just the amendment before the third quarter of 2021. So again, my apologies, my clarification. We are voting only on the amendment before the third quarter of 2021. All those in favor, please indicate. All those opposed. Uh, and that is carried six to one with myself opposed. And I will relinquish the chair back to the mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. We have a motion on the floor that's been amended. Council, any further debate? And I'll give Miss Anderson a moment to combine the two. Are you, are you comfortable with that, uh, Councilor Magoon? Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Okay, Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any further debate? And seeing none, I'll call to question that the greenhouse training building capital amounts of for 2022 and 2023 come to Council for decision before the third quarter of 2021. Council, all those in favor? That's passed unanimously. Council? Councilor Nelson? I would like to make a motion that the replace 400 commercial bins over two years project come to council as a request for decision on page 107 as well, sorry. Thanks. If I could speak to it, um, we've spent a lot of time uh, talking about uh, waste collection and recycling this year. Um, yeah, if everybody's found it, it's on the, just above where it says infrastructure services and capital projects. Um, we've talked a lot about waste. Uh, we had a, uh, on our action tracker, we had an item that was lingering there since 2017. And in the wrapping up of uh, waste to a full cost recovery volume based fee structure, we actually eliminated that. So it's, we now have a, a $300,000 capital budget item and we've still never had a service level conversation about commercial waste. Um, we know that we're going to go to full cost recovery on commercial waste, but we don't actually know what commercial waste looks like. And I think it's really important that the business community isn't caught off guard. It might be locking bins. It might be more bins, bigger bins. Uh, it could go to contracted or privatized. There's, there's a lot of questions uh, and we've answered a lot of those questions all year long around residential and recycling, but not around uh, commercial. And I just wanna see uh, that come forward and what that program looks like to our, uh, our commercial customers. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any questions or debate? <laughs> Seeing none, I'll call to question that the replaced 400 commercial bins over two years project come to council for a request for decision. Council, all those in favor? That's passed unanimously. Council. Oh, Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, while you guys are just reviewing the rest of the capital, I just want to clarify, one, I appreciate the process that we're going through because I think on a more regular basis, if reports uh, are requested and coming forward, it'll make the capital planning um, brought forward to Council each year a little easier because you'll understand the projects and the information. So it's a process that I think we all appreciate, even though it does involve a little bit of extra work. The reports that are being requested, from my understanding, are not going to hold up the budget process. So the current numbers in the budget will be kept how they are. Uh, those projects that have I've been identified specifically by motion of council will not move forward without that report and further direction from council. So I just want to make sure that we're all in alignment and clearly understanding that. Um, as I think it's a good process to make sure that we're not delaying capital beyond uh, December for approval in order to uh, support a good capital process. Um, 
I also want to give council the opportunity if there's no other um, direction here, uh, the final opportunity before we move off this uh, to bring forward any direction or questions on the capital. Perfect. Thank you for that, Ms. Fox. I have Councillor Nelson. Yeah, I just want to put a little bit of a disclaimer out there. Um, I, I know this week for all of us has been probably the most challenging week in our term or <laughs> thereabouts. Uh, and we got the documentation uh, Wednesday morning for the capital budget. It was the first time we've seen it. So I just want to make sure that um, if we bring things forward a week from now or two weeks from now, it's, it's not out of uh, looking to delay or anything other than just having a really limited amount of time um, in order to uh, have a look at these things. I haven't, you know, budget comes and I sit down with multiple citizens and groups uh, and discuss budget. I haven't had that opportunity yet. You know, we, we've all talked about what the public communication has been like this week. So I just want to make sure there's an expectation that council's done uh, with capital budget at, at this time. There may be a lot of other things that come to light when we've got some more, more time to look through it. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to um, talk about community services right now. And I do have a a, um, a motion to make that does affect an increase in capital to $23,000. I do not have a page though to reference. Miss Miss Fox? Um, yeah. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. If I can just clarify, once we're done, as stated, going through the capital, we will go through the operating budget where you will have an opportunity to make your motions. We haven't hit the operating budget yet. So the flower baskets are operating. They're operating, not capital. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Council Race. Council, um, the only other one I have potential appetite. I'm on the fence because there's a lot of moving parts. Is on page 107 regarding the recreation center and area mechanical replacement, boiler equipment, area mechanical lobby, roof. Um, is there appetite uh, for that one? Um, there, there are a few areas within it that I, I'd like to see. Uh, the only other thing tied to that where it could be some value, like we could get a request for decision and then we can send back administration to find matching grants and stuff. That's the, ideally the place I'd want to go at some point with these RFDs because sometimes it'll say it'll be fully funded in this, but we can find grant opportunities. Um, but I just want to share my thoughts as I'm still on the fence regarding that one. Um, but I'll go to Councillor Nelson. Yeah, for this one, I'm actually comfortable. We, we've we all known for a decade that our operational costs of the rec center are going to continue to increase. Um, I, I personally feel like in, until we're at a place where we're ready to make some sort of decision and define a future for a, a different rec center, a new rec center, a renovated rec center, administration has the duty and responsibility to keep our existing rec center going and operational and and it wouldn't matter what came back to me for a, a boiler and arena mechanical and a lobby roof because none of those things fall within the scope of any understanding whatsoever so um you know i look forward in future years if we can make a decision to have a a, a firm target on a new rec center that's to me when we can send administration back and say hey you know we're building a new rec center it's going to be ready for 2025 can this survive until then with minimal maintenance? But until that time, I think we've just got to do the maintenance we've got to do. So thank you. Thank I, I do appreciate the spirit of it and I, yeah. I get it, but um, that's where I am. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, anything further on the capital side of things? I'll give Council a moment. So. And. Actually, this is a good time. If we're unsure, I'll take a five minute recess. I wanted to take one before uh, operations. If there's nothing else for capital and I'll give an opportunity when we come back if there's something we overlooked for capital to spend a few moments. So we'll reconvene in five minutes. Well, you were hard to find. Hello everyone. I'd like to reconvene this meeting at 2.51 and with that, uh, is administration, is there anything from your end? Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. If, uh, I guess just putting it back to council to see if there's any more direction that they would like to provide or any questions they have sure. on the capital plan that we can add. Um, and just to let us know when we're ready to move into operating. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Waugh. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. I'd like to make a motion. 
Page 107. It is. It's about five or six lines down. Yeah, I'd like to move that council. Oh, sorry. How were the previous ones worded, Wendy? I'd, I'd, I'd like to keep it consistent. Okay, uh, I'd like to move that the pool locker replacement come back to council with a request for decision. And if I could, uh, I understand we pushed this for a year already and I, I hesitate to push it again without knowing more about it. And I guess my, my concern is, uh, and I guess the distinction I want to make is the hot tub drain and jets. Please keep working on them as much as you need to. Uh, but the pool locker replacement, I, I, it, it's one of those uh, it's one of those items where if we can hold off just another year till we get a more firm idea about uh, the replacement of the aquatic center, or uh, if this request for decision within the report, if we could get an understanding of what the transferability of the infrastructure may be, uh, getting new pool lockers for potentially three or four years just seems potentially a little wasteful for me uh, if we if we can't transfer that into a new facility. So uh, that's why I'm hoping we can get a little bit more information. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wall. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any debate, questions? Seeing none, I'll call to question that the pool locker replacement come back to council with a request for decision. Council, all those in favor? That is unanimous. Councillor Nelson. Uh, page 104, towards the bottom. And to me, this is more of a customer service thing than it is a maintenance thing, but is uh, pickleball, sorry, this is regarding pickleball, uh, tennis court resurfacing to include pickleball. <laughs> Is tennis and pickleball something that is appropriate to do during uh, COVID times? Yes, it was over the summer. It wasn't one of those. Perfect. Then I'm in full support of keeping it here. I, you know, it has to be maintained and replaced anyways. But I know it's like the old days of rollerblading on on fresh asphalt. I wouldn't want to have a year of great new pickleball courts and nobody be able to use them. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council. Anything further for capital before we would move on? Councillor Stashik. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. I'm sorry, I just have a clarifying question and I apologize if this was covered earlier, but on the item that Councillor Nelson's talking about, it says two over two fifths tennis court resurfacing. Can somebody just speak to that? Administration. You know, I, I could partially answer it, but just to save time, I'm gonna bump that directly to uh, Mr. Von Clavern. Uh, thank you, and uh, through the council. So basically, the amount of uh, courts with the thirty thousand dollars, it was a item that was already pushed forward uh, last year, or not uh, made the list last year. So it's basically uh, we are banking on uh, making two fifths of our courts. So we have seven of those. Uh, it's three or four courts that we can uh, utilize with this amount, and you see it coming back later on to finish off uh, down the three years, four years down the road with the other courts as well. I follow up. So, sorry, the $30,000 in 2020 is to do two of them. And then there's another 30,000 in, sorry, 2021, my apologies. Then there's another 30,000 in 2025. That's to do additional ones. Is that correct? Well, the correct number would be four in this year and three down the road. Okay, I got you. I wasn't that good at converting fractions, but I got you now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Councillor Stashik and uh, Mr. Van Claveren. Council, anything further? In seeing none, uh, thank you, uh, Council and Administration, for getting through the capital part. I think uh, it was a great exercise thus far. And that'll bring us to our last part for this evening or this afternoon, uh, our operations. Uh, CEO Olson, anything prior before we start that? Um, 
Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, if it uh, works for council, if we could go through section or area by area, it might just make sure that we don't miss it, that council has provided opportunity to uh, provide as much direction per area and we don't uh, miss anybody. Just a suggestion. Okay, thank you for that, CEO Olson. Okay, council, we will move into our operational section for today. See you, Olson. Apologies, Mayor Michaels. Uh, we would like to touch on the most funding. I think it will give council some context in these next decisions that they're making through the operating budget. This is just to uh, go over what we've received. This money has been received and some opportunities uh, for council. Uh, it, it's a it's a quick discussion, but I think it'll really provide some context and support to the, the upcoming operational uh, pieces. Okay, thank you, CEO Olson. I, have, I do have a question, Councillor Nelson. I'm sorry if I've completely missed something in this process. What is most? Um, thank you, Mayor Michaels, through to mm -hmm. Councillor Nelson. Um, I provided some information already to Council uh, through weekly emails. Most funding is uh, municipal operating sustainability. I don't know the S and the T, but it's a provincial funding. Uh, that uh, administration uh, submitted a memorandum of agreement at the end of September for. The dollar amounts were not known at that time. Um, and since then, uh, in the last couple of weeks, we have received confirmation that uh, the town of Hinton received just over a million dollars in most funding. So that has not been attributed to anything in the um, Intention of that funding is to support communities through their COVID response. Um, so I'll turn it over to um, Ms. Fox, if, if that's okay, if that answers your question. She can go through with a little bit of uh, additional detail as to what this is. Thank you for that clarification, C. Olson. Uh, and is, there, uh, is this alluded to in the package? I'm trying to find the, the page. So it is alluded to in the slide deck on page 93. There 93? are two Perfect. slides. Uh, we didn't include a lot in the package itself because mm. this is really some flexible funding for, for council. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Fox? Thank you, Mayor Michael Suda Council. This was uh, also information that was just recently received. Um, it's the municipal operating Oh, I just had it in my mind, the headache, it's got me here. Um, okay, Municipal Operating Support Transfer. And it was a commitment that the government said they hoped to make, but we never ever knew if it was going to be coming and we didn't know how it would be calculated um, when it did come. The total amount we were provided was $1,005,641. Specifically, to be used to offset the COVID impacts from 2020. What we're trying to show here, uh, and in recommendations under the Alberta um, guidelines, states that they will not be probably requesting backup, but we should have backup for the losses that we've incurred that we're using this money for. So in that, we do have all of our losses because we moved into a cost reduction strategy and uh, tracking and coding process for our emergency operation and COVID, we have been tracking the funds and the losses and we can back those up. So if council makes a motion to receive that money into grant funding for 2020, it will offset the loss revenue that we lost over that time and it will put the town in a position where we have surplus dollars in our operating budget, which then I would request council make a following motion to place $800,000 of the million dollars. Um, that's the estimated based on these. So what I'd, I'd prefer to do is once we bring the final report forward with further information, we'll have more updated financials for, for year end so that council can make uh, I'm just trying to give you estimates based on the information we know. <clears throat> so of the million dollars, if we bring that into our other um, revenue section, we have estimated losses such as 118,000 that we know currently in fire and bylaw services from COVID, Parks and Rec uh, approximately $200,000, FCSS $231,000, 
penalty losses at about $100,000. We also have $290,000 worth of losses for barriers, masking, equipment, janitorial, all those other costs that we've had to incur, uh, software costs, Zoom, um, things for working from home, those sorts of things have been tracked that we would put this money towards to cover. Um, that can all be backed up under that program. So at the end of that, uh, there, there's also right now some an anticipated losses in the utility services area because of businesses that closed, uh, weren't using the, the services, waste services affected. And uh, we anticipate that there'll be revenue losses there that were not, when we did our cost reduction strategy, the 200,000 that you see at the top of this list and the $150,000 were not costs that we offset with reductions. And because this money um, has come in to cover those costs, those would be permanent losses um, that would need to be covered. So that wouldn't create a surplus in the town of Hinton Financials. So there, there's gonna be approximately $700,000 left to be placed into a reserve of council's choosing, if that's what they would like to do. Which kind of brings me to the next slide where we said of that money, that would give you guys an opportunity, uh, you as council, sorry, an opportunity to put different programs in place if you'd like. Uh, there's tax penalty forgiveness programs other communities have done. There is the emergency operations reserve because we don't know what the effects of a second or third wave of a pandemic is going to mean. And I'm sure there's probably losses that we have not anticipated uh, for 2021 yet. <clears throat> the chamber support um, for for business in the civic agencies, that $30,800 that's not included in the budget, uh, if council would like to cover that, um, we thought that might be an area where these funds could be used. Uh, in response to uh, Councillor Race bringing up uh, the flower baskets, we thought that if, um, <clears throat> Specifically in the beginning, there was a question asked about the lost revenue. I think it was by Councillor Waugh. Um, and we referred to the lost revenue coming from community services based on the impact still happening of COVID-19 in 2021. <coughs> if we actually didn't reduce those revenues and we brought them back up based on supporting money from this reserve, some of those areas of services that were cut to make sure we could meet budget could be included back into the budget. So if we wanted the 29,000 to go back into the operating budget for flowers, this could be a place where we could access reserve funds to cover those costs for next year. Knowing that ongoing in the budget after 2021, they have recovered uh, some of those, those areas. So this is where the most funding uh, adds a little bit of a complex layer into here and we wanted to make you guys aware that it is there, um, that we will need to make a motion at some point uh, with further information to council where that money goes for 2020. And if we have excess revenue in the town budget at the end of 2020, that money could be placed in a reserve and utilized for some of these things. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Um, I have Councilor Nelson. <coughs> Yeah, for me, this was one page of 158 that I didn't understand, didn't spend a lot of time on. The slide in our package versus slide up here is also $200,000 different. I think overall, this is, this is I think, great. Um, I think an opportunity to bolster our reserves, which is great. Um, I would just personally love to see this come forward as some sort of brief report so that I can understand it a little bit better. Because um, right now, most of that went very quickly over my head. So um, I'm not sure what form that needs to take, whether it's a future budget meeting or a standing committee meeting, just just something that has a brief report to, to better understand uh, what this is all about. But I love the, you know, at first glance, I, I love every single little bit of it. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Uh, I share a lot of the same sentiments. Uh, what would be a timeline for us to get uh, a report of that nature in order to tie it into the 2021 budget? See Olson. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, at, at this time, the, the report would consist largely of the information that are on the, that's on the slides with a little bit of narrative around it to uh, kind of capture some of um, uh, Ms. Fox's comments. Um, in order to bring a report forward, uh, I mean, we would, in order to support the budget process, would look to bring it as soon as possible. Uh, there is a possibility we could bring it on December 8th to the standing committee meeting. Um, if, uh, and I'm looking at Ms. Fox and she's nodding, so that, uh, that could be a timeline to consider. Thank you, CEO Olson. Councillor Nelson. Did you need a direction or motion or just can come then? I'm happy either way. It doesn't make any difference to me, but I just want to make sure it's captured if you do want a motion for it. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michael Stewart to uh, Councillor Nelson. I, I think it's fair to, to uh, provide a motion to administration. Um, it's not something that we would likely forget about, but um, just to make sure that we uh, have landed on the date. Perfect. I would like to move that administration provide a brief report on administration provide a brief report on most funding at the December 8th standing committee meeting. I don't think I really need to speak to it. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick question. Can any of that um, 700,000 that's remaining, can any of that be utilized to, um, to pay for some of the items that make up that 500,000, which equals our 4% possible tax increase? Um, I will defer to Ms. Fox. Ms. Fox. Due to the the premature bringing forward of this information um, to try and make sure council understands that it's there, probably at the point right now that we make decisions around operational costs, uh, and I was going to comment on this next, the motions that we make to include, if we want to, for example, include flower baskets back into the operational budget, we'll ask you to leave it open-ended to the funding, which will allow us to bring back a report with the most funding that could give options for that. Uh, and it's the only way I can think to move forward without trying to dedicate funds there. So we'll look at bringing a report forward with the most uh, money that addresses some of the issues council brings forward in the budget, but to not take away from the budget process today we'll ask that you still bring up those items for inclusion uh, during the operational part of the, ho hopefully that made sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, council, we have a motion on the floor. Any further debate? Seeing none, I'll call to question that administration provide a brief report on most funding at the December 8, 2020 standing committee meeting. All those in favor, it's passed unanimously. Council, anything further regarding most? Moi. It sounds like a big motion. Speak back before most funding. Yeah. Seeing nothing else on most, uh, we will move on to our operational uh, section. Council, anyone would like to start off? Um, Ms. Fox. I think just to make it a smooth process so it kind of follows a flow, if I'm able to just lead or facilitate this section, mm -hmm. it would be helpful if council's amenable. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So if you refer to page 137 of your agenda package, and it is the information that you see shared on your screen now, it shows the amount of taxation required up top that refers to the $518,000 increase we're looking to. The mayor and council budget is the first item uh, under general operating budget. We have proposed a slight increase of $4,800 there. I would like to just ask council at this time in this section, if there's anything in the mayor and council's financials that you guys wanted to address or bring forward. And if there isn't, we'll move to the next item. Councillor Nelson. 
I get... Could I request that you go through it in, in their actual sections, not just the big uh, header part? So like instead of being on 137, we would be on 139? Yeah, uh, Council, any objection to that? That's where I feel a bit more comfortable going through the high level sort of area. I don't want us to skip over. That would be my preference. If there's objection, please speak up, but I'd rather start with what we traditionally do. Seeing none, if we can if we can treat this sort of the same way as we treated the capital, if we can start up at the top and then pick out sections based on the appetite of council, then we can lead that way. And, and we'll try to respect, obviously, the request from the CAO for certain areas, but do not feel that you cannot bring up anything that we've overlooked because we're gonna move through this and if our experience in capital is indicative, in, in, indicates anything that we're, we, we may overlook something. So, so we'll start at page one, sorry, 139. Council. Councillor Nelson. I'd like to make a motion that the $114,838 Uh, in transfers from reserves, along with associated expenditures, be removed from the operating plan. If I can speak to it, um, it, it doesn't make me overly comfortable having a generic a uh, number that isn't tied to anything specific. I understand that there may be some some plans coming forward that we may support. It may happen quick enough for us to act on them in 20, uh, 2021, it may not. Um, I would rather this money stay in reserves um, and, and not necessarily have it offset taxation at all, but just stay in reserves. And if council um, has a, a project or an issue they're really passionate moving forward, we're always able to um, extract money from reserves. And if we don't utilize that whole 114,000, then our reserves are in a better position at the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. I'll go to CEO Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Just a point of clarification um, uh, that was uh, maybe missed uh, when we went through this section, but then brought up later on in the legislative section. The 14,838 is actually the transfer from reserves for the election piece. And it was brought into this piece uh, in error, it is actually for uh, the legislative services for the election. So it would be 100,000 in transfers from reserves would be the, the correct amount. Uh, and then that other piece will be corrected in the, the next version of the budget that you see. So just for clarification, if we left the motions that stood, we wouldn't have to go through an election? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very amenable to $100,000, thank you. So if we can change that to 100,000, Wendy? <laughs> And thanks for that clarification. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Count, uh, Councillor Stashik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm speaking in favor of the proposed motion. However, I would request an amendment, whether it's friendly or not. If the intent is that the $100,000 is to stay in reserves rather than be used to offset uh, taxation, I would like the motion to reflect that. Councillor uh, Nelson. Sorry, I've forgotten how to use buttons. Um, I'm, I'm amenable with, to that as, as I think I, I like the intent of it in order to move forward some initiatives um, so that it, um, I, I'm not sure how it needs to read. Um, I guess I could put, and that the $100,000 be maintained in reserves. Thank you, Councillor Nelson and Nostashik. Council, we have a new uh, motion. Uh, Councillor Race. Thank you, sir. So 114,000, or sorry, 14,000 is dedicated to election. Isn't 20,000 out of that 100 contingency funds for um, Council? Uh, Mayor Michael Struchik, Councillor Race. Uh, 
the, the contingency funds are under public relations contracted in general services, not in the 100,000. Oh, okay, good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Race. Councillor Wah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a question for admin. Uh, could you go over once again what the intent was of having the $100,000 in reserves showing here? Uh, thank you, Mayor Michael Street to Councillor Wah. Um, the intention there was, um, it, it kind of speaks to the, the process that we were looking to implement um, and, and kind of ran out of time where council strategic vision is uh, um, communicated. We have our strategic plan and then there's a corporate plan that takes uh, that intention and turns it into plans that administration would be following through with over the next year. Uh, so we had hoped to bring something forward prior to budget it's, as I mentioned uh, last night, it's it's pretty well a year long process, but we were hoping to start moving in that direction in order to support council in their final year um, of the term um, so that key actions would be funded and we wouldn't, um, we would have some flexibility to move forward with, uh, with different items. Some of the items that uh, we heard from council that were priorities for 2021, such as Beaver Boardwalk, uh, the development of the Bhutan lands, they're, they're in the budget already, um, but for, for items that uh, maybe we're emerging through further discussion on that corporate plan with council, we, we're just intending to have some flexibility for council to move quickly in that direction, um, rather than you know wait for uh, additional information or reports or things like that to come forward. So it was just intended to support those actions and ensure that council had uh, responsiveness to opportunities. Okay. If I could one follow up. Uh, by making, by approving this motion, would that fundamentally change administration's ability to move forward with plans? Or would the only difference be that you would have to then bring it to council for approval? Uh, that's correct. We would bring uh, budget amendments or a report forward for a decision of council um, on those items. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wah. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any further debate? Seeing none, I'll call to question that the $100,000 in transfers from reserves along with associated expenditures be removed from the council operating plan and the and that $100,000 be maintained in reserves. Council, all those in favor, that's passed unanimously. Council, anything else for page 139. Councillor Waugh. Just one question. I, sorry I failed to, to do so the first time through this, but uh, under contracted and general services for 2020, that was the budgeted amount. I was just curious what the actual amount is for this year. Ms. Fox. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mayor Michael, Suda Council. I just want to clarify, or we're talking about under the council budget, uh, the budget of $68,000 under contracted in general for 2020? Yes. One sec. So it's broken down under a number of different categories uh, that include travel and memberships and a number of those different items. Right now, under the contracted general, there is roughly $13,000 that was spent to a budget of what was mentioned. 68,000, I think. All right, and but we've budgeted for 2021, 2022. 2023 based on the premise that regular activity could likely resume? That's correct. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Wah, Ms. Fox. Council, anything further? 
for that page. Seeing none, that'll bring us to their other revenue and expenses, page 140, <coughs> anything council? And seeing none, we will move on to civic agencies. Page 141, Councilor Magoon. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to move that the line item in the 2021 2022 and 2023 budgets for the Hinton Disc Golf Association reflect an additional $8,000 per year clarification purposes. If I may speak to that, Your Worship. Uh, this this really comes off the tail end of our discussion around the Hinton Disc Golf Course uh, and, or part of me, association and the support moving forward. I know council had some different ideas in terms of the chicken and the egg uh, before committing to uh, a partnership agreement. Uh, in my mind, what this does is this puts the, the money forward that allows us to enter into an agreement, uh, not just this year, but in subsequent years for making sure that this uh, this can happen within our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Magoon. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Councillor Stashin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just ask for some clarification potentially from Councillor Magoon on where the $8,000 would be funded from. Councillor Magoon. Yeah, uh, just, I think, <sighs> For right now, just to speak plainly, that it would reflect option A that was presented in uh, our last standing committee, page 147 of 189, and that is additional $8,000 of taxation uh, because I feel like we're going to be doing a bit of a – the exercise we're going through right now is, I think, going to result in some reductions. Uh, and so, again, the $8,000 for myself is not that big a deal when it comes up, up against – some of the potential items that we may be taking off of the budget. So thank you. Councillor Stashik. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you for that, Councillor Magoon. Uh, again, as in with the last motion, though, if you would accept a friendly amendment to have that included as part of the motion, I would appreciate it. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to accept that as part of the amendment. Okay, thank you. Uh, additional $8,000 per year. Uh, Councillor Ostashik. I, I think just the addition of the words to be funded through taxation should probably be good, as if that's okay with administration. Councillor Magoon, are you okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Councillor Magoon and Ostashik. I have Councillor Nelson. I have a procedural question. If there's an outstanding motion that has been um, postponed, uh, if I recall, and I think the intent was that we make the decision at budget, but I think that motion is outstanding until uh, after budget. So I, my only question is, does that need to be rescinded prior to um, or brought off the table or how, like, I just want to make sure procedurally. Okay. I, I think this is the right time to be making the decision. I just want to make sure that we're not violating some sort of legislation by making a decision while there's an existing motion on the floor. Thank you, Councilor Nelson administration. Um, I, uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. I, um, I don't recall what the motion, how it was worded exactly. I would need to take a look at it if that's, uh, all right in order to determine, um, what the next step is. Yeah. If I, it was a motion to postpone, the 
operating right. agreement. The, the, if I can inter interject, Sorry. I know we don't put it in every motion, but this is simply to change a draft budget. This is not approve a budget or anything. It's to change the actual draft budget to mm -hmm. come back to another mm -hmm. meeting. I know yep. we don't allude to that, but that's really the philosophy. This doesn't pass anything or whatever. Right. We're just amending this document <clears throat> for then a further approval. So for me, I don't want to mm -hmm. kind of jump in, but that was always my understanding that we can make stuff like this uh, and then officially pass it at the at the final meeting. Ms. Howarth? I have the motion in front of me, if you'd like oh. to be reminded of that. Um, that committee recommend council bring forward the disc golf course operating agreement between the Hinton Golf Association, I should see disc golf association, and the town of Hinton at the December 1st, 2020 regular meeting, council meeting for decision. Thank you for that. Council, with, with that said, we have a motion on the floor. Any further uh, discussion on uh, the wording or any other questions or debate? CEO Olson. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, just a point of clarification in the motion. Um, it's, it is an, it, perhaps an additional $8,000 through the civic agency's budget, but not an additional $8,000 to the Hinton Disc Golf Association. Mm. Um, you could say an addition mm -hmm. of, sorry, if it's just uh, wordsmithing, but for clarification's sake. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Magoon, are you okay with that? Absolutely, Your Worship. Thank you for that, CEO Olson. Okay, Council, we have a motion on the floor. Councillor Nelson. Ultimately, I'm going to be voting in favor of this simply because I think it's very, very good bang for our buck. Um, I, I was disappointed with the process and that we weren't made aware that there would be a financial ask as part of the operational agreement when we uh, directed administration to proceed with drafting an operational agreement. So, um, yeah, I want to make sure I don't get in, in my own way with overthinking uh, the process of something. Ultimately, I think, I think the right decision is to ensure the long term sustainability uh, and that, that of that eight thousand dollars, five thousand of it goes into a reserve for future maintenance and enhancements. So uh, overall, I agree with it. The, the process hopefully in the future will be uh, a little bit better. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. I have Councillor Stashin. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. Yeah, much in the same mind as Councillor Nelson. It was a bit of a surprise to have a financial ask come with the, uh, with the agreement. And that's why earlier I was a little bit um, adamant that I wanted the word, the, the phrasing to be funded through taxation as part of the motion. Because I feel it's important that this is, if this is something that's important enough to council that to support with tax dollars, that it's done, um, you know, through through the input of the community and not at the expense of another of our organizations mm -hmm. or uh, or uh, corporate bodies. So uh, I will ultimately be supporting this, and I just wanted to make sure that that's how the funding was defined. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stashe. Council, we have a motion on the floor. I see no one in queue. I will call to question that the line item in the 2021 22 23 budgets for the Hinton Disc Golf Association reflect an addition of $8,000 per year to be funded through taxation. Council, all those in favor? That's passed unanimously. Council, we are still on civic agencies. Councillor Nelson. I had a question for administration and likely followed with a, uh, a motion. With the reduction in the budget um, back to the original agreed upon agreement with the Chamber of Commerce, understanding the Chamber this year filled in a very important role with maintaining their tenancy in one of our buildings uh, and providing a lot of tourism, uh, attractment, support and all of those things. If we do not support the Chamber to $53,000, how, how would we as a town kind of uptake all of those tourism needs and is there risk of um, greater cost for the municipality of doing it than it would be to um, support the chamber. Administration. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. At, at this time, there's no project planned or research done on uh, picking up the tourism information center um, hours, I guess, through the, the winter is what really that um, additional uh, funding supports, or sorry, through the summer months. The, uh, the current amount supports the chamber in keeping the uh, tourism information center open through the winter um, and then as well uh, some event um, uh, <coughs> contributions uh, for, for their program. All right. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that the uh, 
civic agencies operating plan. be amended to reflect $53,000 for the Chamber of Commerce for 2021. And if I could speak to it, uh, very intentionally, uh, I'm not including future years. And that's, I believe that as we move forward with things like a DMF or DMO, uh, there's a lot of conversations of where that could go. and. Uh, I, I don't expect um, the increase to be a permanent one. I think there's going to be great opportunities to transition uh, how we provide some of these services, and, and it really excites me. Um, I, I look at what the Chamber did this year. The Explore Hinton work has been awesome. Uh, I, I've been so impressed with the quality of it. Uh, I don't ever want to be in a place that uh, we don't have tourism support at our Visitor Information Center. Um, that is where people have come to expect to find those resources that support our business support our community. Um, and I wouldn't want to be on the lookout for uh, a new tenant for that building or a new tourism provider. I think the bank for, for our box, same as I talked about this golf is, is huge. And I think it's a, a wise investment. And this is a motion I would make regardless of the fact that potentially can be covered through most funding and not, uh, not through traditional means, especially as a one year thing, it could be a, a great fit. So I think this is great investment regardless. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any debate or questions? Councillor Waugh. I, I wanted to ask administration, would this motion preclude us from funding that amount through most? <clears throat> See, also or that difference? Uh, thank you, um, Mayor Michaels. Um, uh, it, is okay to just take a minute. Uh, the motion includes the um, entire amount. The 22, just over 22,000 is funded currently um, outside of that most amount. So I, um, I, I guess I'm not sure. I, I suppose it doesn't preclude it, um, but it, just to be specific and to make it an easier process when it does come back, maybe uh, changing it to uh, from reflecting the 53,000 to reflecting the the increased amount would be a little bit cleaner for us to, to then find funding and bring that back uh, in the next version of the uh, budget. Okay. Yeah, I guess with that said, I'd wonder if uh, Councillor Nelson would be open to an amendment just to create some flexibility about how we fund this. Councillor Nelson? Sorry, I'd be very amenable to that. So reflect an increase of $30,800. The potential amendment to future agreements to have round numbers for ease of math. <laughs> to reflect, yeah. So amended to reflect an increase of $30,800. It's already in there. Just where it says reflect 53,000, just be reflect an increase of. $30,800. Excellent. If that makes sense to administration and council, I'm happy with that. Thank you. Yeah. And if I could, yeah, I, I was going to support it either way, but I was just wanted to make it as easy as possible for administration to find some different funding streams for it. So thank you very much, Councillor Nelson. Uh, thank you, Councillor mm -hmm. Wah. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any further debate or questions? And seeing none, I'll call to question that the civic agency's plan be amended to reflect an increase of $30,800 for the Chamber of Commerce for 20 21. Council, all those in favor? That's passed unanimously. 
council. Anything further for civic agencies? I have Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to talk about the uh, Hinton Historical Society. It's not listed under partnership, not listed under shared services. It's listed under other groups. It's, it's the most money that we give. And I know this year it's um, coming in at $65,000. There's no oversight on this. We, we, we give the money and then we see them next year. It, would it be a motion of um, council to to go back to where we appoint a council member to that um, the um, historic or the museum? Is that what it would take? Administration. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Uh, just some clarification. So the the concern is um, regular updating from the Hinton, Hinton Historical Society and the opportunity for a council member to sit on the board and bring regular updates. Just to clear, is that what you're asking? Yeah, that and also any support that um, because we do have a councilor sitting on that um, the museum any support that the town could bring to that organization to assist them like like they do other groups. So if, if, if I may, I guess this would be a conversation potentially um, to bring up to a standing committee meeting. I think where it becomes complicated is that uh, we own the land, but we don't own the building. And that's why it's not a shared service. If, if we owned a museum building, it perhaps it would, you know, potentially fall under shared services. It's in the others group because we don't own the building. So that's, uh, I, I think if there's an appetite to change the uh, composition of the board and, and, and uh, add a council member, I think we uh, make that direction through a discussion item or a notice of motion to, to add that. That would be my thought. I don't know if that helps. Oh, it does help. It does. I, I know there is a concern in the community, a small concern mm -hmm. that there is no oversight. There is no councillor sitting with um, the museum, but I, I will bring it up at standing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Race. Uh, Council, anything further for civic agencies? Councillor Stashik. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. I just, sorry, I just want to rewind a little bit to Councillor Race's concern and that if her intent is to have this come forward at a standing committee, um, I'd actually like to see that made as a motion right now rather than, rather than delay, I'm not sure. Not sure what the purpose of delaying it would be. A motion right now would be good if that's uh, the intent. Thank you, Councillor Stashik. Council is Councillor Race. Or? Oh my goodness! Um, well, I would certainly uh, want to help with that motion. I would. Would sure. it be um, moved to have the move to have the um, Hinton Historical Society? Um, what brought back to our next standing committee meeting? Uh, CEO Olson. Uh, sorry, Mayor Michaels, this isn't related to the direction that's on the floor, but uh, uh, when it's possible, administration does have some clarification to the civic agency policy and the process for next year that might be helpful. Okay, okay so what I would like to do is um, discuss with council on um, would it be advantageous for us as council to have someone or to go back to where we we have somebody designated to the um, the museum. I love the museum. People, I love Maddie, and museum is very important to our community. However, we're giving them $65,000, and I don't hear from them for a whole year. So I think there has to be some oversight, has to be some, you know, um, watchdog here. I truly do not know how to craft this motion, so any help from you guys? Uh, thank you, Councillor Race. Uh, I have Councillor Magoo. I think just speaking to the motion, if if it's the councillor's desire to have the discussion at a standing committee, I'm supportive of that. I, I don't want to get into the details of it right now. I think that's best saved for the mm -hmm. that actual meeting. But if that's what you want, I'm happy to support it. Good, good. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councilor Race and Councilor Magoon. Councilor Haas. I guess just as it's worded, I guess is, I'd like it clarified what we're speaking to potentially in the historical society. Like if we're moving to have the historical society brought back, but the configuration of the board or adding potentially, uh, I don't know, like it's, I guess I, I'm, it's pretty wide open as to the motion itself. So I don't know if that's just me or anybody else has those thoughts or at all, but. Uh, Thank you, Councillor Haas. I have Councillor Stashik. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. I, I had myself in queue earlier and then took myself out when it looked like the motion was okay. And then I jumped back in with the questions. So the concern I have is council really has no say in the board structure of the Hinton Historical Society. It's an external group that has their own board. So if I was going to make a suggestion on what this discussion entails, it would be to uh, move to have the Hinton Historical Society funding structure be brought back to a standing committee. Because if the intent is that there's a councillor who needs to sit on the board to uh, have some oversight, then that would have to be a condition of the funding. And that's probably the only way we could achieve that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, and Councillor Stashik, is that a friendly amendment you're offering? Okay. Uh, Councillor Race, are you okay with that friendly amendment? Certainly. Thank you, Councillor Race. Uh, the only other question is timing. And this is goes back to my original point. Do we want this to have any impact on our 2021 budget decision? Uh, or this is uh, going to come back at the end of the first quarter, second quarter of 2021 uh, administration. Any thoughts on timing for this? Um, if it's okay um, to, to take this opportunity to, to touch on that policy, there is a reporting piece to that policy where the Hinton Historical Society, uh, th through the, I guess, the, the procedure related to that, uh, would be required to come back for reporting prior to budget in uh, 2021 for 2022. Um, just looking for permission, um, uh, Ms. Way is on uh, the Zoom and can provide just a little bit of clarity to that process. It may be that uh, it's, it's not quite related to the funding structure, but it is related to funding in future years and the expectation that they um, that they do come back. Um, it's a new process and it's a little bit unfamiliar. Um, would that be all right with uh, yourself, Mayor Michaels and Council to provide that clarity at this point? Yeah, sure. yeah I'd sure. be good okay. with that. Um, Ms. Way, are you there? Can you just uh, walk us through what all uh, civic agencies will be required to do in 2021? Good afternoon, Council. Just a reminder that any of our civic agencies who currently have operating or service agreements with us, um, a report detailing the highlights of each of those um, agreements will be brought to you, I believe it's before June um, of 2021. At that point, Council can provide direction to any changes that they'd like to see to those in preparation for the upcoming budget. For those groups such as Foon and the Historical Society that do not have current um, operating or funding agreements with us, they'll be put through the full civic agency process to determine uh, whether there is an administrative recommendation that they move forward as um, a civic agency and to enter into those agreements. Um, and as you would recognize through um, similar to the golf course process, um, at that time, we will be able to vet the, the best course of action as far as oversight, whether that's simple reporting from the group themselves or if we wish to place a counselor on their board. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Way. See you, Olson, any further comments? Uh, that's everything, thanks. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, Councillor Nelson. Uh, I, I won't be speaking in favor of this. I think ultimately we need to make a decision on a, a dollar amount that we see fair, which is for this year, $65,000, which we can amend at any time. Um, I, I feel like in some ways we sit on too many committees already and feel like we need to um, govern groups that we don't have a whole lot of business governing, even when they come and do presentations to us. It seems like we have a lot of suggestions on how they could do their business. Um, I, I just, I would like to see us support groups that do a great job of supporting themselves. I, I couldn't imagine, um, having one of us sitting on Himba and making it a better group. I honestly can't see any of us sitting on the museum and making it a, a better group. We've got, we have groups that do exceptional, exceptional work. Um, and, and as a counselor, I, I don't 
think we need to be there. Um, but there's also nothing precluding any of us as as citizens representing ourselves and obviously having some knowledge of the community of sitting on those boards. And I know most of them are regularly looking for for volunteers to sit on their boards. So that's always open to us as well. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Stashi. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, I very much appreciate the, the thought behind Councillor Race's motion that she's put forth. The um, this, this is by far the uh, largest uh, appropriation amount that goes to a, an external agency and even including some of the internal ones, it's still higher than all of them. So definitely some type of some type of oversight or additional reporting or something would be in order and i was prepared to support this motion until the clarification from ms way came and with the clarification that there's going to be some changes to how civic agencies agreements with the town of hinton are moving forward uh, i'm inclined to not support this motion at this time um, i think i'd just prefer to see the funding go ahead this year and then uh, things can be sorted out uh, through the new civic agencies uh, uh, operating or uh, partnership agreements with the town of Hinton. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Astasha. Councillor Race. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do have to say that I, I realize we don't have anyone sitting on the HIMBA committee. We don't. We give them $15,000. The museum is totally different. And when I say I would like to have oversight, I would like to have somebody sit on their committee Having, to me, having the town as part of their committee opens up doors for them. It does. It kind of gives them resources here. And, and that's what I would like to see. Uh, thank you, Councillor Race. Councillor McGoon. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I, I wasn't going to get into it, but it's become, I guess, part of the debate at this point. Um, I'm willing to support the motion moving forward only insofar as, you know, I'd be willing to discuss the how often uh, the agency comes back to report to council. I've been part of that society as a member of council. And to be fair, as far as it impacts the, the governance of the town, I, it's a great society. They focus on what their job is, which is providing a historical service. But as far as a councillor goes, I don't feel like the town is getting the best bang for the buck by having me sit in that meeting talking about uh, historical items. And I mean, that's, that's one of my interests. Um, you know, if if we wanna have them report with more regularity, that's why I would support this motion. I'm great with that. That being said, I also wouldn't wanna see us go down the path of offering uh, more service in kind by having staff members associated with that. Because again, that's additional costs that we're incurring. Again, we can discuss that at a standing committee, but I, I would be very hesitant to support it. They are our largest contribution at this point. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Magoon. Um, I will not be supporting this. I would support this after the conversation of the civic agencies as Councillor Stashik alluded to before. Uh, I think let's iron out what that looks like and then have a conversation uh, regarding um, our role. I personally have my own opinion. The fact that we don't own the building changes a lot. Ash, we we have a we're vested interest we don't own. So my train of thought is a lot like Councillor Nelson in the sense that I don't want to get too involved if we don't have any physical um, liabilities or, or or huge monetary liabilities. That's where I want to step back and let organizations do what they what they do. Um, Council, any further debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call to question to move to have the Hinton Historical Society funding structure be brought back to a standing committee. Council, all those in favor? Opposed? That was defeated. Council, we are on the civic agencies page 141. Anything further for this item? Uh, Ms. Fox. Thank you, through Mayor, through the Council. Just want to remind everybody that I know the sheet, the financial statement for this reflects uh, the wrong numbers for the Hinton Historical Society, and we have noted that and changed it. Okay, thank you for that. Council, if, I, if nothing else, we'll move to page 142, uh, Governance CEO Department. <coughs> I'll 
give one more moment. And seeing none, we'll move on to page 143, Governance Corporate Services Department. Council, anything regarding this? Seeing none, we will move to page 144, Protective Services Department. Council, anything regarding this page? Councilor Nelson. I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to move that the third comma currently vacant CPO position just comma currently vacant <laughs> CPO position be removed from the 2021 budget um, we we had talked about this coming back uh, in the budget and I I looked at uh, the last few months as an opportunity to talk to citizens, um, see if there was a, a noticeable decrease of service levels to our citizens. And, and I just, I haven't seen it. Um, and so as it's tough, cause I do, I do understand, especially going into COVID, which could, could require a little bit more enforcement than things in the past. Um, just with the current uh, state of finances, our current tax increase, some of the initiatives we want to move forward with in the future. Um, if, if I don't see a significant level increase in the level of service, uh, I'm just I'm inclined to to not add it at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any debate, Councillor Haas? Mm, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I won't be supporting this. Uh, I've been an advocate for the third position um, and uh, administration brought back a budget that included the third position and still maintain that. I just think um, for myself, it's not just necessarily I mean, the service level, um, but it's also to maintain the service level of two uh, officers. Uh, I think just really honestly create a lot of logistics issues that will start to uh, dip into the service levels. Um, administration has talked about it before. I'm also concerned about HR issues in regards to burnout. I'm also uh, worried about if we lose um, an officer potentially because they can't, you know, I mean, it's just a lot of work with two people, uh, not having a third person to offset some of that, that it's going to be hard in the future to recruit potentially even one of the two or whatever in the future. Um, and I think it's just a benefit, especially too with what we've uh, just started in regards to um, some of the new bylaw that we just passed a day or two ago is going to put more tasks on the shoulders of these officers uh, and not knowing how long that's going to last over the next you know, months. Um, I really feel strongly that uh, it's, it's a position needed for our community uh, for various reasons. And I'll go back to again, um, you know, I think we also have some pretty strict bylaws and I think if we go back to only two um, I think we need to really consider some of those bylaws and how strict they are because we don't have this the man or the person power to maintain those so I, I'm not going to support this I believe that uh, administration was tasked with this and brought it back to us and can and it's obviously doable so thank you thank you Councillor Haas Councillor Stashik thank you Mayor Michaels I'll be speaking in favor of the motion um, several months ago when we were brought with a decision to fill the vacant position, it was determined at that time not to fill it. I looked at that as a bit of a pilot project to see what, what would happen moving forward with two officers. In that interim, I haven't heard a big influx of complaints from citizens to me regarding inability to respond to calls or, or anything like that. Um, so, I, so I'm going to support this moving forward now with the understanding that if this is a, an ongoing concern moving forward, that too is just not enough to be able to provide the, the service that the town requires. This can always be revisited in 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stashik. Councillor Race. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I too looked at this as a pilot project when we talked about it months and months ago. I would like to hear from our fire chief as to, um, you know, not not your thoughts on this, but you're getting the calls, you're hearing from people. So, if you could speak to it, sir. Fire Chief Martins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through to council. Uh, absolutely, we've heard um, about this. Um, Coverage on the weekend, coverage in the evening um, from our local businesses that um, around the enforcement of certain bylaws. We've heard um, lots around our animal control um, bylaw um, not being enforced now on the weekends and evenings where it needs to be. Um, we've also reached out to a couple other communities again to see the numbers on um, where they stand for services as well. And um, we're already behind for a population of 10,000. Um, currently, what happened through summer and right now with holidays, sick time, we've actually been running with one community peace officer. So um, it, it's, it's challenging for the health and safety of the two individuals right now. Um, again, it comes back to working, um, you know, 26 weekends a year um, and training. Um, you tack COVID onto that. Um, we've had some challenges with that. Any new bylaws that have come forward add more stress to the department. Um, so there's been a lot of challenges over the last six months um, on top of the other recommendations that I brought forward. So, thank okay, you. thank you. I um, I will not be supporting this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Race. Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, and Councillor Ray's beat me to the question because I, I realize that Council may not have heard, but uh, that doesn't mean our residents and citizens. Um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, Mr. Martins, uh, Chief Martins, but um, uh, if you could clarify, I guess, roundabout, uh, if, if maybe you already have, but when you say lots, is there a, like how many complaints potentially uh, that we've looked at since making the decision to not have the third officer and not being on uh, a, available on weekends um, and evenings and things like that. Absolutely. Um, um, so what we're seeing in the evenings um, after eight o'clock, we're, we're about two to three per night. And on the weekend, we're about 10 per day. The problem with that is that all of that stacks up to a m Monday. So um, Officers are coming in then and spending all Monday and Tuesday trying to clear the files from the evenings and the weekends. Um, so again, then it just continually backs everything up and puts more stress on the department. Um, a few things I'd also like to point out is with that position, because of the revenue they bring in, and I know it, it, ver it fluctuates, um, the savings, um, I have to look at the numbers, but the savings of the whole position with uh, um, benefits included was is roughly about seventy thousand um, dollars so so there's that to kind of consider and currently I'd, I'd, I'd like council to also maybe take into consideration we do have another position um, vacant um, in protective services and maybe they'd be interested in looking at something um, in regards to just a reduction of wages in my um, department overall um, and then coming back with uh, what we bring forward, um, something like we did in the community services. Um, and then that way, um, it might show a little difference of um, where that money is better put. Um, I'll leave that with you. Thank you. Thank you. And if I may follow up yep. too, roughly, just out of curiosity, revenue wise, uh, with having two officers, versus three, I mean, what is the potential of loss of revenue uh, to the department without having that third? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through council. So I think in the budget I set for the three peace officers about $85,000, so roughly about thirty to 35000 an officer right now. Thank you. So again, I, I <coughs> just hearing that, um, you know, I, I just won't support this. I, I realize that you know, again, um, I think it's a valuable resource to our community, not only for uh, our, our bylaws 
our municipality, but also to the RCMP members as well, um, by having those duties on the shoulders of some of the, C the or CPOs take some of the duties away from our uh, RCMP members potentially that they can focus on other matters that our CPO doesn't. We've uh, heard from our uh, staff sergeant that uh, you know crimes. Uh, of certain natures are higher, which gives them more ability to deal with those in some ways. Um, we don't have a traffic department necessarily with our RCMP, which uh, are they're somewhat dedicated. But having the CPOs are more, you know, more time is available to them. Um, and I also want to point out that uh, even during our town hall, interestingly, um, there was questions in regards to um, our bylaws and, and coming up to sidewalks and everything. There is a great interest in our community uh, for enforcement. There was questions about nuisances uh, and things of that nature. And uh, so, again, I'm, I'm just not going to support this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Councillor Stashik. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. I have a couple of questions. I can start with one. If there's other people in queue, I can get back in line. If that's, um, I just wanted to ask uh, Chief Martins if he had anything off the top of his head regarding a breakdown regarding fines issued in the community. How much of that is issued by our, uh, our uh, peace officers and how much is photo radar? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through to council. So in, in, I don't have the 2020 numbers, um, but 2019 stats, um, we, with the two office, the two peace officers and kind of tailing in um, when the third came in, um, I think in September, um, 2,400 um, contacts is what, what we would um, call them. So um, through that, that's an either an investigation or a com complaint, same as the RCMP. Um, seventeen hundred of those were seventeen hundred and ninety nine were were bylaw complaints um, that they dealt with, and um, six hundred and seven were citations. Um, whether that be a municipal or provincial, I don't have that breakout. Um, and then they did about three hundred and twelve animal registration and 372, 332 animal control calls were specifically to um, our animal control bylaw. Um, as far as ATE, um, that's completely separate. Um, there's about 4,197 calls um, or tickets issued um, through ATE. So if we, if we do look at comparables and I, I put it in your dashboard, um, the RCMP investigations are a little more complex, but with 19 members, there's 50, 300 investigations a year they do. So a little bit of context, um, 975 violations written by our RCMP. So um, not a lot of bylaw stuff is done through the RCMP. Um, it's basically all on us kind of a thing. And lots of the stuff during the day and in the evening just gets transferred right to our department to deal with. Can I follow up? I, I appreciate the breakdown of the, of the, of the, uh, the numbers, but the question was more to actual fine revenue and a breakdown, even for the 2021 budget or actuals for 2020, how much of the fines were issued, like dollar value of the fines issued by the peace officers as compared to what photo radar generated? Thank you, Mr. Aaron, through to council. So in 2019, uh, the fine revenue was 80, 84,000 and change. Um, that was brought in. Um, in 2018, we went through a transition of hiring the second CPO, bringing uh, that second CPO on board uh, was right around 40,000. Um, in 2017, uh, we were 118,000. Um, and this year, again, with COVID and, and um, the transition uh, of the piece, the third piece of stopping in, um, in June, I don't have the exact numbers of, of this year, but I think we were roughly um, 40,000 uh, last month, I think, sitting at. So still outstanding fines to come in, though. Okay, good. I'm good for now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ostashik. I have myself. At the moment, right now, I will be in support of this. There are a lot of moving parts to this right now. S uh, service levels is one. Uh, the, the trial... Uh, getting the feedback from the community. I like hearing that there's another opportunity within protective services to 
like get monies, but I don't want to convolute this budget by trying to piecemeal all of these moving parts, the funds, for, the potential funds from another position to offset this. For me, if we had somebody in the community right now, I would keep them, but we don't. For me, if we want to really set this right, we uh, move forward with not hiring this person and we get a report to, to put together everything from protective services. That means the other position that the fire chief was speaking about, get a service level review uh, and really establish um, uh, all the math that we're trying to do sort of on the run. This is That's sort of my issue with, with all of this. So, but obviously I'll follow the will of council, but I believe this is going to be at least two or three hours of council, you know, conversation in the coming weeks, if we want that, albeit, but for those reasons, and the fact that we don't have a third one right now, I support this and, and, and I hope we, we move forward in getting this right in 2021 for the year 2022, if that's the appetite of council. So I will be speaking in favor of this. Uh, council? Any any further debate with the motion on the floor? Seeing none, I'll call to question to move that the third currently vacant CPO position be removed from the 2021 budget. Council, all those in favor? Opposed? And that was carried. Council? Anything further for protective services? Seeing, I'll give one more moment and I will open it up to council. We are at 408 and we are on page 145. Uh, sorry, my apologies. We would be at pay, we would be at RCMP page 146. Is there an appetite to continue a few more moments or are we good ending today at that point? Councilor Race? Thank you, sir. I was wondering you're, there we go. Oh, sorry. You okay, you're on. And I would certainly like to make my motion and get it done with today okay. while you're all in a good mood. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Race, the floor is yours. Thank you, sir. So I'd like to make a motion that $23,000 be allotted to the hanging basket program and maintenance thereof and to be funded by grant monies. Grant monies. And an example would be beautification grants. So I just quickly want to speak to this. I know last year we had some issues with the uh, cemetery, hey? And when I saw those those um, issues come, you know, on Facebook, I wanted to say to them, you guys, I, w I was there last week and the graveyard looked beautiful. You just missed it by a week. So, so anyway, there was a lot of concern. So they've taken the money from the, the flower program, put it to the... Um, cemetery which is fine i've yet to hear anybody say we did not like the flowers that we saw in hinton so we're taking away something that was good and giving it to a needy cause but i want to remind everybody once you take something away from an area it's sometimes very very hard to put it back so Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Race. Council, we have a motion on the floor. CEO Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Just a, a point of clarification, it's $29,000 um, oh, for it? the hanging baskets, not 23. Um, and just an, an additional point of clarification, it does come back in 2022. It's just uh, to offset our COVID losses, we needed to look at um, uh, offsetting that with something. Um, so it is coming back uh, in 2022. Okay. So um, may I just make that mm -hmm. change to 29,000? Yeah. Perfect. Are you, you're good with that, Councillor Race? Thank you, sir. Perfect. Uh, Councillor Nelson. Thank you for uh, making this motion. With one uh, word change, I would be in support of it, which would be exclusively funded. Mm -hmm. If that wording's in there, I'll be in support. If you would be amenable to that friendly amendment. Councillor Race, are you amenable to that? Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Councillor Nelson. Uh, Ms. Howarth? Uh, just for a, a bit of context for Council, um, we order these flowers in January. So um, depending on when the budget gets approved and whatnot, this, this, uh, if it's an interim budget, we carry on if uh, there, there'll be some consequence to that, and sorry, not a consequence, but an impact to that. Um, and so we will do our best to, we have already flushed that out. We'll do some deeper digging, but um, there isn't anything that jumps out at us right now for grants. Uh, we can dig deeper and quicker, uh, but it'll be a pretty quick turnaround time to make that happen. Thank you, Ms. Howard. And just for clarification, I, I assume we're all under that understanding that because it's exclusively funded by grants, if the grants are not met, then the project will go to 2022 anyway. So just for clarity, thank you. Uh, Councillor Ostashik. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels. I think my question's already been answered and it was some clarification around the, the phrase exclusively funded by grant monies. And I just want a clarification that we're talking new grant monies, not existing grant monies that are gonna be repurposed, correct? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostashik. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any further debate? Seeing none, I'll call the question that 29,000 be allotted to the hanging basket program and maintenance thereof and to the exclusive and to be exclusively funded by new grant monies. I have Councillor Nelson. So I just, because it's in 2020 and in 2022, I'm wondering if we should include uh, the 2021 budget in here, just, um, just so it's captured correctly, more so in future years for us, sorry. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Race, are you okay with that? So are you saying the uh, 29,000 be allotted to the uh, 2021 operating budget? Yeah, just so it's 2021 that's captured. Right. Councillor Race, would you be okay with that? And Councillor Nelson, was that your intent? I, I see no opposition. Okay. Uh, Council, anything further before I call this to question? Seeing none, I'll move that 29,000 be allotted to the hanging basket program and maintenance thereof and to be exclusively funded by new grant monies in the 2021 budget. Council, all those in favor? That's passed unanimously. Councillor Race. I sincerely want to thank you for your support on that, truly. Thank you, Councillor Race. No motion to rescind that? No, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> My I took an opportunity, sorry. Council, anything further? Uh, we are at what page? So again, we're at page 146, if I'm correct, RCMP. Uh, unless there is input from council, I'll continue. Okay, page 146, uh, RCMP. Oh, I have Councillor Nelson. Are we on, on RCMP or we're moving to, off RCMP? The floor is yours for... Yeah, uh, I, I think it's worth some discussion uh, in regards to uh, adding a position, although it doesn't add any budget, it also would have the option to lose some budget. Um, for me, it's a, it's a little bit awkward in that I'm married to somebody who was one of the positions that moved, so I don't want to make motions around it. Uh, there's no pecuniary interest, but it's just a little bit awkward. So if uh, I just kind of like to see where council uh, stands on that one. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Any uh, questions, Councillor Haas? Um, yeah, I guess, I, I mean, maybe Mr. Chief Martins can make it, but uh, some comments on it. But I mean, I, I would prefer maybe having some uh, input from Staff Sergeant Murphy too, in regards to uh, if, you know, that position or whatever, and how it is to his department and the benefits and everything. So, um, but I, I mean, I guess, that's my thoughts on it, so. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Council, is there an appetite for anything or any other questions at the moment? Councillor McGoon. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to that. I'm just wondering sort of what the feel is from the rest of council before we just sort of start making potential motions to have our staff sergeant uh, speak to us or our CAO speak to us. 
<laughs> and on that note, see you all soon. Uh, thank you, Mayor Michaels and Councillor Magoon. Um, so, uh, st um, Staff Sergeant Murphy has been spoken to prior to budget, and I believe um, Chief Martins can speak to the conversations around this position as well. Fire Chief Martins. Thank you, Mr. Ann, through to Council. Um, yes, yeah, so we have spoken about the position. Um, the federal funding was achieved, so there's the, 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 the two federal positions um, that we have. There's no reduction in um, personnel, per se, just a different type of funding. Um, you know, when speaking to him about the position um, and the potential of losing a position, he did indicate that he would rather see us keep the CPO position than lose that. Um, just because the CPO helps him more and he's actually not losing anybody out of the detachment. So um, I will convey that message to you guys. Um, other than that, they did put forward a few positions um, about two or three years ago um, for some funding, but we've recently pulled those positions, so. Thank you, Fire Chief. Council. Councillor Ostashik. Thank you, Mayor Michaels. I, I apologize, but is this position referenced anywhere in the document? Because I'm a little in the dark mm -hmm. about what we're talking about. Thank you for that, Councillor Ostashik. Uh, administration. Thank you, uh, Mayor Michael. So uh, in the um, slide deck uh, under Protective Services RCMP, uh, the, the position is, I guess, spoke to at a high level uh, that uh, an additional page number. Oh, uh, Michael, sorry, uh, my apologies, uh, 88 of 158. 88. Um, uh, it is spoken to at a high level that the additional federal administration position was funded. Um, and this was, um, I, I mean, I don't really have anything more to add than uh, what Chief Martins um, had uh, spoken to, but this was a, a process that was underway for a little while to uh, have a second federally funded RCMP position. Um, so uh, the employee that was in the municipal uh, position has moved uh, into that federally funded position, leaving a vacancy um, in the admin area of the RCMP detachment. So at current, the position is vacant, uh, because of, but nobody has lost their, their position, just moved to a different funded position. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostashik and CA Olson. Councillor Haas. So if, just for clarification, I was under the understanding there, it's maybe open, but it was being recruited for, was it not? So uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through the council. So, it kind of all happened at once. Um, when we received word of the federal position funding coming through, um, and it actually was guaranteed, um, within about three weeks, we had uh, another person resign. So we, we dropped from four to two. And we currently did interviewing and we've filled the third. So we still have the fourth municipal position vacant. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Councillor Waugh. Yes, I how long have we secured the federal funding for this position i uh, think you can mayor and through the council it we secured the second position so it until we make changes to the agreement um the, the you know the position stands yeah. Okay. yeah and the reason i ask is because i was worried it'd be a one-year one-year funding arrangement and then we end up getting the bill in 2000 22 if you wanted to maintain the position. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wasi Olson. Was there anything? No. Nope. Council, anything further for this at the moment? Seeing none, we will move on to the, my apologies, I just have to scroll down. We are at uh, development. That'll bring us to development services on page 147. Council, anything? With that, we'll go to community services. 
page 148, anything with community services. And moving on to one page 149, the second part of community services. Seeing none, we'll move on to FCSS, page 150, council. Seeing none, we'll move on to infrastructure services on page 151, council. And seeing no one, Facility and Vehicle Services Department, page 152. Seeing none, Utility Services Department, page 153. And that'll bring us to operational projects, page 154. In the continuation of operational projects 155. And oh, I have Councillor Race. Can we talk about that um, FUS or FUS study again? I, it's come up in previous budgets. Administration? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through to Council. Uh, so, yeah, the FUS study, um, Fire Underwriters Survey, um, or Fire Underwriters Study. Um, this is where we, our community gets our insurance ratings from, um, and they review our equipment, our full-time staff, um, they, our waters, our hydrants. Um, they go through all the infrastructures, um, what we would call underneath the ground, um, a size of lines, um, and we come back, uh, we get a grading based on that. And that helps residential, commercial, and industrial for their insurance ratings, um, possibly could lower, um, depending on where we grade in that scale. Um, so this study will also help us to determine, um, you know, future equipment um, needs um, for equipment or, or also um, equipment that we no longer possibly could need. So um, that's why it's there. Okay, good, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Race. Council, anything further for the operational sections? And if not, I would um, entertain a motion to adjourn and take a five minute recess and go into our second uh, meeting for this evening, which will be um, the other spe uh, special meeting of council for rapid housing. Uh, Ms. Fox. Just for clarification purposes, uh, Mayor Michaels, we would adjourn. Would we come back to this meeting to finish it off? Um, uh, any clarification on this meeting, meaning another day? Like, yeah, no just to make sure that we wrap up where we oh. left off, what we're bringing back to you, <clears throat> make sure we yeah. understand what our next deliverable and timeline is. Uh, with that, I guess I'll go to CA Olson. Just for the sake of time, it's 4.30. I know people are getting tired. Um, how long would this exercise take? I'm trying to balance both meetings and- I could probably wrap it up in five minutes. Okay, Is council, any objection to that? So what we'll do, we'll have a wrap up uh, for about five minutes. We'll adjourn for five and come back to our rapid housing. Thank you very much, administration. All right, thank you very much. So just to summarize everything uh, that we've done to this point, uh, we've given you the departmental <coughs> presentations to describe the services, where they're going, their priorities and accomplishments. Uh, we've looked at all the capital and we have brought the capital forward in detail to council. 
Um, and we've had all those discussions here with you today. We've committed through motion a number of reports that will come back to council. The changes uh, from the operational side of the budget, uh, and that's the piece that I just wanna flip to in this screen. Where is it here? So right now in the operational budget, uh, we have made a correction uh, and reduced the historical society error that was brought forward, bringing the amount allocated from 75 to 65,000. There has been a motion to support an $8,000 amount to the disc golf society through the civic agencies throughout the three year plan. The Chamber of Commerce uh, motion to receive the additional funding of the 30,800 and a motion to support the reduction of one bylaw ser services officer, which is going to equate to approximately a net difference of $40,000. The overall addition to the budget right now as it stands uh, for operating is an additional $507,000 uh, in increased operational costs. So if we move forward, what would happen is we will bring a budget document that pieces all these pieces together uh, in a nice, much uh, easier to follow document that we than we went through today with all the required changes and requests for changes um, that would bring back uh, a $507,000 operating increase. Uh, the only thing that changed in the overall capital budget that we're bringing forward uh, and it might be easier if I just show you that report. So the overall capital plan for 2021 um, is a combination of carry forward projects and new projects, $11.8 million in total, uh, almost half of that funded by grant funding for 2021. The carry forward projects taken out of there is approximately uh, $9 million worth of new capital and we'll make that adjustment for that duplicate item of the $50,000 vehicle uh, that was duplicated on the sheet. So that will affect that number, but overall the numbers as presented um, have hardly shifted or changed. The main uh, idea with the capital is that there are a number of identified projects that before they can move forward, have to have a report back to council. So we would put together a report for council, which also uh, prior to that will involve the most grant report uh, and bring some options forward uh, to dealing with that as well uh, and target this for a budget approval in December. I believe right now we have targeted either the 1st or the 17th. Uh, sorry, I'm going to just pass that back over to CEO Olson. That's my piece. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, to pr provide that clarification, uh, there is uh, opportunity and need for a special budget meeting uh, to be determined by the uh, Agenda Prep Committee um, in order to manage a borrowing bylaw uh, that is urgent um, for the uh, fire truck. Um, and as well, at that point, could bring uh, a revised budget uh, for approval. Um, another option, uh, if council wishes to have a look uh, and provide, uh, actually, that won't work. Uh, no, so it will be December 15th. Uh, if there's an appetite to have a special meeting prior to that to continue discussions, um, <coughs> the, the will of council uh, will do our best to, to make that work. Thank you, CEO Olson. Councillor Nelson. Yeah, if I could just ask that if we do it via special meeting, um, two things. Number one is that we advertise it a little bit more. Um, I Even throughout the day today, I got messages from people who are generally people who are sitting in this room and had no idea we were doing budget today. Um, it wasn't announced until I think Wednesday or Thursday. And the other part, and I, I know it wasn't, I'm not being critical at all, but um, for me, I, I the four days as we would have for generally a regular council meeting or any other sort of meeting, I would really appreciate having the documentation with at least uh, four days to review it. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that we actually did really well today and I don't feel like we missed a whole bunch or misinterpreted a whole bunch, but um, I think we may have lost some opportunities um, that, that if we had a little more time to ask some more questions offline, it could have uh, affected some of the decisions. So uh, thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Elson. Councillor Race. Thank you, sir. Quick question. Did you say previously that the $30,000 going to the Chamber of Commerce could come out of the most? So I, I guess if I may, the most uh, report will be coming to council. They had tentatively put it in there, but we've, uh, we made a previous motion. Uh, administration will have all that breakdown of their recommendations, what we can also do, uh, and, it, and it didn't account for parts of those monies too. So um, I, I don't know if that answers your question or administration, is that fairly accurate? Thank you, Mayor Michaels, through to council. It, it may turn out that the report we bring back for most um, benefits us even more in the operating budget. Uh, so those are some of the things that we'll consider and bring forward for council consideration at that time. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Race and uh, Ms. Fox. And with that, are we good to conclude? Councillor Nelson. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor?